This is the full narrated story of Diablo 4, made possible by your generous support on Patreon. Run! Three thy way opens. Blood shows. This doesn't make any sense. Blood. Blood. Blood is the key. B blood is the key. Ah, what? I need two of you. No. Go. I'll hold them. Go. So. It says the, the blood of the willing goes. Ugh. You gotta be kidding me! Ah, it worked! We have to help him! He's dead already. Cheer up. Gold splits better three ways instead of four. Must be hidden here somewhere. Read this. But by three they come, by three thy way opens, by the blood of them. Willing. Hail, hail the cre the creator. Ha! Oh, hail the daughter of. Oh no, 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 no! What about the coin? What's it say? This is forbidden. This is a summoning. I cannot speak. This Don't way. lie to me. We came here for treasure. What is this place? I, I, I don't know. <sighs> Maybe, maybe it's a temple, or, or a tomb, or...
Blessed I cried. My eternal life protects me. My divine wisdom guides me. Though my path is brought to darkness, guide my soul to thy sacred place. There is no light here. You came to the darkness for knowledge. Yes. And all the knowledge you seek is here. Surrender. Speak the words. Call her home. By three, they come. By three, thy way opens. By the blood of the willing, we call thee home. Sanctuary was never meant for humankind. It was forged as a refuge from the war between the high heavens and the burning hells. Instead, it became a new battleground in this eternal conflict. A secretive group called the Haradrim has kept mortals safe. But now this once powerful order is a husk of what it was and Sanctuary's ancient creators have returned to claim the hearts of humankind. This is the story of their downfall.
This is the disturbing full story of Diablo 4, as told by the wandering necromancer named Dark Lord. I should find better shelter before I freeze. Wondering if our visions were in fact real, or merely hallucinations brought on by the deathly cold, we collect ourselves after our nightmare. Before braving the blizzard outside the relative safety of the cave, we then pause briefly to consider our mission's objective. As an acolyte necromancer serving the priests of Rathma, we were sent by our order to investigate rumors of a supposed demonic presence congregating near the fractured peaks, guided only by a cryptic message that blood is the key. Our expertise in reading events through blood magic has led us along the path of destruction. As we exit the cave heading east, we see ravaged half-frozen corpses of does, throats ripped out and entrails removed. Following the blood trail, we locate a warg as it greedily feasts on a third carcass, blissfully unaware of our presence. Sending it back to the earth whence it came, it calls its kin who are just in time to join it. Pushing eastward through the thick snow, our strength wavers, and as luck would have it, the entire pack of wolves descend upon us, the scent of blood driving them into a frenzy. Curiously, we see the town's western gate lies open, a foreboding sign for any stragglers therein. Seeing the town appear empty, we mutter, Another abandoned town. Only to hear... Demons. Everywhere. Fangs in the dark. Gah! He bit me! Careful! He's a wild one. Bursting inside the shack, we see a man huddled in a corner, raving like a lunatic. The duo of villagers spin to regard us, and we question the man to our right. What's going on here? What's it to you? Oswen, hush! I'm sorry, Wanderer. You've come at a difficult time. This madman just stumbled into town and started causing trouble. Demons! Spilling from the ruins! Kill us all! Kill us all! Ruins? What is he talking about? Come, I'll explain. Why did we follow her? Why do things happen as they do in dreams? There is evil staring in the ruins to the north. That poor monk back there must have gone inside. Even a holy man like him was driven mad by whatever he saw. Entering the dimly lit tavern, we breathe easy, seeing a gaggle of townsfolk safe, albeit decidedly undernourished. Speaking to the woman, Varney, once more, we inquire, what is this place? Uh, nothing special about our little town, but it's home. What about the monk? We'll do what we can for him. Might have to keep him in the shed for now, though. He tried to bite off Osman's fingers. You must sense it isn't safe here. Could you protect us from whatever is out there? We have nowhere else to turn. Evil is gathering strength in those ruins. I will bring it to heal. Truly? Oh, thank you. Before we investigate the ruins, we decide to speak to the locals in a bid to understand their plight. Starting with the man by the fire, Devmir. <laughs> Fire's looking good. But I should watch it a little longer. To make sure it doesn't go out. We're then motioned by the bartender who serves questionable food. <laughs> no doubt due to rationing. And he playfully remarks. If Devmir's taking up all the space by the fire, just give him a shove. <laughs> Deciding warmth would be appreciated. We nudge our way closer to the fire, and Devmir indulges. A warm hearth. There are still things to be grateful for in this world. Vani, seeing us introduce ourselves to our neighbors, shares. I'm sorry, it's a bit cramped. It's still better than a cave. Alenta went a bit deaf last winter. You might need to speak up around her. We turn to see an elderly woman, chair-bound, and ask. You warm enough? What's that? Y you say something? 
It's cold. Oh, you poor thing. Traveling in this awful weather. Vani then assuages. Don't let Oswin bother you. He's a good man, really. Gleaning all we can from this tattered rabble, which is, admittedly, not much. We bolster ourselves as we exit the town through the northern gate into the unforgiving Icehell Tiger. Drawing our sickle and shield, we see corpses littering the road, deceased guards and none too fresh. All their pitiful defenses seem to have been quashed, leaving the town fully exposed. However, some of the sentries rise once more, and we destroy the re-risen skeletons, sensing dark magic at play nearby. We lift the gloves and a short sword of the fallen enemies, reconstructing our own skeletal soldiers from their bones. With our new companions, we trudge forth. We rush the entrance of the ice howl ruins, dispatching the four skeletons guarding the dilapidated stone building's front entrance. Ensuring the danger ahead, we dutifully swing open the rusty tower's gate and cautiously step inside. Inside the ruins' abandoned halls, ostensibly the fort seems deserted, save the torches that eerily invite us deeper. In the first room to the east, we see a guard's armor piled on mass. It's in the next room where we inhale the familiar copper smell of blood finding a pile of corpses lumped by the northwestern wall. Equipping the strider's leggings we find rummaging in a nearby chest, we proceed through the empty halls. The only sound is our footsteps and that of our skeleton allies by our side. As we search the blood-spattered narrow corridors, only to open a door and be met with a quartet of skeletons that lie in ambush. To the northeast, we haphazardly enter a room filled with flammable barrels. We slash the nearest barrel and demonic fallen pour into the room, demons. Once clear, healing from a nearby well, we descend the stairs to the right and find the very architecture warps into a demonic mass of bone and innards, as if the corridors were touched by hell itself. Searching deeper for the source of this blight, we resolve to uproot it, lest the chilly hamlet of Nevesk be swallowed whole. We then find ourselves deeper in the catacombs below the ruins, and witness villagers' bodies impaled on pikes in a macabre display. We follow the blood trail in front of us to its source, and are surprised to find what appears to be a ritualistic chamber of calling. Unfamiliar sigils are etched in blood upon the ground, and at its center, a decapitated body slumped over. We divine from his robes, he was once a priest. Then, a giant horned demon leaps down from the roof, nearly crushing us in one fell swoop. Save for our minions, which distract it momentarily while it swings its great mace. Enraged at our trespassing, the demon, none too bright, bashes his weapon with great abandon. Our underlings remain unfazed at the incoming danger as we swing our spectral scythe and fling shards of bone at the demon from a safe distance. The Baron desperate, tries to dive down on us a final time, however impotently swinging his club before succumbing to his wounds and his great bulk dissipates into ash before our eyes. We then scoop up the items left on its remains, including a great two-handed scythe, a welcome addition to our arsenal. With the summoning quelled, we climb the rope attached to the scaffold that leads up and out of the ruins and back into the frigid frost just north of the town. Making a beeline back to the exposed tavern, we see the welcome face of Vani, clearly shocked to see us as she exclaims. You've returned. We then inform her people. The old ruins are clear. Your town should be safe now. Truly. Ha! Huh. By the light, you are heaven sent. Oh, I'm so sorry. We, we haven't any coin to offer, 
But we have hot stew, good company, and... Stay for a pint. Wash out the taste of the stew. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be honored if you'd join us. To our savior! <laughs> <laughs> Obliging. Our host's hospitality before we return to the necropolis in Kedjistan with our grim findings. But as we hold our mug, we have a queer feeling wash over us and look down to see the mug that appears floating in front of our head. dream. We swear we can almost hear the whisper of the patron saint of our order, Rathma, and his prophecy as a violent warning echoes within our skull. I saw my corpse, and from my mouth crawled hatred. A father burned his children on a pyre, and a mother molded a new age from the ashes. I saw the weak made strong, a pack of lambs feasting on wolves. Tears of blood rained on a desert jewel, and the way to hell was torn asunder. Then came a spear of light, piercing hatred's heart, and he who was bound in chains was set free. Rathma's prophecy. blood, my mother's body. So uh, shall you witness her glory before you die. <laughs> Get up! Get up! We have to fight our way out! There! Take them! Uh, may the light preserve us. Awakening in a bloody shack we hear. Lost souls! All of you! We're then set upon by a trio of bloodthirsty villagers we recognize as our scythe swaths through the flesh and sinew. Adding to the gore-soaked floor, even with our expertise in blood magic, we're mortified at the grisly scene. Equipping a stridus tunic of a nearby corpse to somewhat free us of our winter wear. Weary from the drug, we stagger out through the barn's double doors, and are immediately flanked by Stannis, armed with a small dagger and ill intent. It's then we spy Vani, our one-time ally, and we end her life with bone shards flung into her flesh as she proclaims. You are blessed like us now. <sighs> that was all of them. Light willing. Turning to our liberator, we now recognize the man and exclaim, You're the madman from the shed. Madman? 
Those heretics drugged me after I returned from the ruins. Just like you, I came to my wits and escaped. Tried to get inside the chapel, but it was locked and... <laughs> What manner of evil is this? Petals? Of blood? They... They must have fed them to me. A blasphemous ritual. How did they learn this? Perhaps the answer lies in the chapel. They kept it locked up for a reason. The key might be on that woman who was leading them. Searching the deranged bitch's corpse, we roll her over to indeed see the chapel key on her person. The monk, Yosef, then leads us from the barn, opening the gate down south towards the promised chapel. We check the inn to see the fire still eerily ablaze and the town now truly deserted. It's to the south along the road we follow the fires guiding us, and it seems the burning light gives Yosef an idea of his own. Only fire can cleanse the darkness in this place. Have a look inside, but hurry. I will prepare the torch. We then recognize from the symbology on the shrine nearby, we are out front of a Church of Light's place of worship. The monk then kneels to pray, no doubt for guidance, and we query, what were you doing in Nevesk? Looking for the town priest. He stopped sending tithes, and I came to find out why. As I neared the village, I sensed darkness around the ruins. I went to investigate, found the priest's body. Demons. Foolishly, I took shelter in Nevesk and ate their food. You know the rest. We use the key we found and swing open the chapel's doors to see it empty, save a strange, foreign substance floating to the floor in question aloud. Blood petals? Like the ones I was fed? Is this real? Concentrating, we touch the petal source, using our abilities of psychometry through blood magic to read the events that have transpired before and are unwittingly catapulted into a vision of the past. Shameful. Our father has granted you a path to salvation. <laughs> and yet, you stray from it at every opportunity. You drink and gamble. You covet and steal. Shameful. Is their birth right? <laughs> My children. The lords of hell are coming to devour our world. Salvation lies not in the light, but in you. The faith has taught you to deny your heart's desire and turned you into a prisoner within yourself. Break the chains and discover who you were meant to be. Break the chains 
and be beautiful in sin. It's me. I brought your child into this world. Thank the light. We come to on our back outside the burning church with Eosurf leaning over us. How did I get out here? You collapsed inside. I thought the darkness had swallowed you. I dragged you here and put this cursed place to the torch. What happened to you in there? I saw a vision. A, a horned demon. She said the lords of hell are coming. She wanted to help the people survive. Help them? She called them her children. And they welcomed her like... a mother. Mother? No. It cannot be. I must report to the cathedral. Listen, there is a hermit to the northeast. A man of questionable loyalty. But he knows of the Forbidden. He might be useful to us. Bring him to the cathedral in Kiovashad, and you will be in the light's favor. Yosef bids us to head for this hermit for answers on the benevolent demon, shoving in our hands a necklace from his order which reads, a too tight choker worn by those faithful to the cathedral of light. Slight discomfort keeps one girded against impurity. Before leaving, we ask the monk, who is this mother? Do not call her that. It is a demon, Lilith. The Gospel says that she will walk among the people, posing as the mother of sanctuary. If she is here, uh, it is humankind's own sin that has brought her. How will a hermit help against a demon? He surrounds himself with dark knowledge. Tread carefully, and pray he has not fallen to Lilith as well. With that grim assessment, we're now putting our fate in the hands of a recluse of dubious allegiance in search of answers, or succumb to this new infection Lilith's followers have thrust upon us. We bid the monk farewell, leaving him and heading east into the unforgiving tempest that almost unnaturally refuses to abate, dutifully clearing out Nevesk's graveyard of the undead, lest they amble towards the church in retribution of the warmth of life entering their tomb. It's not long before we find ourselves on the other side of the small mountain range at the eastern pass and see the road has been blocked by the unrelenting snow. Roads blocked. Should clear up when the storm has passed. We looked down upon a slain villager who made the mistake of trying to wait out this intemperate weather. Vowing to not make the same mistake as we had once before, we seek out shelter and, as luck would have it, spy what appears to be a house in the distance. Next to the house we see a lit beacon that illuminates a gnarled tree and an odd assortment of bottles, some of them still reek of strong spirits. This may be where the hermit is shacked up. Entering the frozen abode atop its porch steps, we tepidly ask. Is anyone here? 
Looking around the house, we see a kettle atop a roaring fire. Ugh, whatever is brewing smells awful. Near the door atop a crude table, we note a healer's tools, and they look freshly used. To our right, a shelf of apothecary ingredients. Herbs, mushrooms, organs. Not for cooking, we hope. As we step back next to the bookshelf against the north wall, we hear a slight breeze behind it, and pulling a thick tome. What are you hiding back here? The shelf slides to reveal a hidden room inside the bedroom. We see a suit of armor, not worn for a good while. To our right, a bed. By the bed's foot, we see a pile of scattered books, one of which is a specimen's note which reads, Short fangs, young, freshly turned, an easy kill, further south than the others. They're spreading. Seems this hermit is doing a spot of research into the darkness that has swept the land, much as we are. We then begin to utilize our blood magics and research the skull ourselves, but pause, sensing an approaching presence. You're going to trespass into my home. Rifle through my things. Then at least have the decency to join me for supper. I'm bloody hungry. That's quite the story. I wish it wasn't true. But it is. Why did I have that vision? Thank those friendly villagers. They gave you the blood of Lilith. The blood of a demon. Not just any demon. The daughter of hatred. The mother of sanctuary. She was banished ages ago. But this world is her creation. It was prophesied she would come back. What does she want? That's the question. Sanctuary has always been trapped amid the eternal conflict. A war between angels and demons. But Lilith serves neither side. She has her own plans for us. And me? Am I corrupted? Not sure yet, but you two share a connection. What will you do about it? Use it. Find out what she's after. Good. Then we're in this together. Rest while you can. Then we'll start in Kiovashad. If we can't stop Lilith, We'll all be damned. Resting a spell inside Lorith's abode, we head out in the morning to the east toward Kiovashad. Thankfully, the blizzard has finally lifted. Unfortunately, the demon plague in Lilith's wake seems to grow by the hour. Oh, this close to the city. Lilith's evil is spreading. Post felling the fallen fiends repeatedly, thanks to the resurrection abilities of their shaman, we find the Eastern Pass is free to cross at last, and happen upon a ruin of a statue that seems to have driven the local hellspawn into a frenzy, even attracting a fallen overseer. Never thought I'd live to see all this. Beholding the demon's work of the defaced statue, we can't make out who it represents, and bend down to study the inscription which is badly marred by clue, and we attempt to decipher the words. May the light of Father Inarius shine down upon all weary travelers of this holy land. 
Turn east and face towards its radiance and find strength renewed. We then turn to ask Nah, what's this statue? The angel in Arius. I'm sure you've heard the Cathedral of Light babbling about their holy father. Well, he's real. An angel walks among us. And when he learns that Lilith is here, blood will flow. They are ancient enemies. They'll drag the whole damn world into their feud, unless we can stop it. Let's not linger. Kiovashad lies just ahead. Heading northeast, we begin to see the Church of Light symbology on the sides of the road, and enter a great bridge, leading to the entrance of Kiovashad city via its gatehouse. We're then stopped by a guard who says... Hold. To enter the city, you must We first... have no time for this. What's this about? <sighs> to enter Kiovashad, you must perform a cleansing ritual. It's a meaningless gesture, but some people take comfort in it. How dare you? Just let him through, lad. I've tried for years to get Lorath to do the ritual. Fine. But this one stays. I'll meet you inside. Take a piece of holy cedar wood from the shrine and inscribe it with the sin which troubles you. Then cast it into the brazier. As the fire burns the wood, so too will the light burn away your sin. Not entirely embracing the ritual, we see the knights of the church and consider our position. Heading up the steps, we find a wooden token, burning it as a gesture choosing anger, an appropriate emotion while being forced to go through these tedious motions while our fate hangs by a thread. Anger. We then inform the guard. It is done. Good. You must feel as though a great weight has been lifted from you. Welcome to Kyovasha. Earning our right of passage, we turn to the Elder Guard in the gatehouse, asking, You know Lorith? Well, a man that old has lived through some dark days. Explains why he's so cross. We're still suspect on our new ally, but sense something dark in his past that has made him a shell of his former glory. Heading into the city across the Great Drawbridge, we see the symbol of the Church of Light etched on the wood. Although it appears to be a candle burning and light's radiance shining out, we cannot help but get the sense this may not be a flame, but instead a drop of blood. It looks as if there is plenty to spare in the Angel's Holy Crusade. Heading into the city, we find just to the northwest, Lorith, bartering with what appears to be the local knacker. So, Wait. what did you write on the little piece of wood? Something about hate or anger, perhaps? Well... It matters little, I suppose. Wait, a horse? Are you going somewhere on this poor creature? I'm off to the dry steps in search of that pale man from your vision. I must know... what part he plays in all this. But first, I need you to retrieve something of mine while I finish my negotiations. A merchant in the centre of the city has it. Just tell him I sent you. Okay, but first, we have to know of Nevesk. What were the villagers doing in those ruins? Sacrificing. Summoning demons. Honing all the wonderful gifts that Lilith gave them. And Lilith's return was prophesied. There was a prophecy, yes. It foretold the rise of the prime evils. The return of Lilith and Inarius. The doom of our world. Inarius adopted the prophecy for his own selfish purposes put it in the Cathedral of Light's Gospel, and made it seem like he would be the hero to save us. We heard that prophecy when we were drugged. However, the version we knew was Rathmus from our order, and now Inarius has warped it for his own means. Tell me of this Inarius and his plans. The Cathedral loves to go on about him. His imprisonment in Hell, his valiant escape, his glorious return here, the world he created, but they never mention how being tortured in hell for a few millennia turned you into an ass. We go to leave and think Lorith called us back, but instead we see he's bartering for the beast. Crack 
sway back, cloudy eyes. This poor thing is practically crow bait. With what you're paying, you're lucky she has four legs. Leaving Lorith to his questionable purchase, we head up the stairs to the east and towards the merchant he spoke of. Inside the weapon shop, we apprise. Lorith sent me. Ah, so the old man's finally decided to buy it back. Knowing him, he didn't mention coin, did he? <laughs> if he wants his weapon, you will need to pay. Forced to pay in the stingy hermit's stead, we see Lorith's polearm. While clearly old, its ornate blade has been kept sharpened and polished, as though it would be needed again at any moment. Wait. The old man sold me this too. He said he didn't need it anymore, but I think he'd want it back all the same. No charge. So pick up the strange amulet, inspecting it, seeing it was an old amulet of unique design. It shows wear from years of use. Perhaps it was a badge of office. Returning to Lorith, we begrudgingly inform I had to pay for your weapon. Ah, apologies. He also gave me this amulet. What is it? The mark of the Haradrim. An ancient order of scholars and mages, sworn to protect sanctuary from demons. These days, we are few in number. There is another Haradrim, Donan. His breadth of knowledge about demons is equal only to his hubris. Sounds like he could help us. Hmm. You should seek him out in Skosglan. But don't forget about the Cathedral. They'll be expecting you, and they might prove to be useful allies too. You're not coming with me? I'm going to the Dry Steps to find out who that pale man is. Join me when you can, just be careful. Your ties to Lilith, the visions you see. You are the key to finding her and stopping whatever she has planned. Sometimes our paths in life are set to collide. We just don't know it. Whether it is by accident or fate's hand, there is nothing we can do about it. The wanderer lost in the storm fed the blood of Lilith, saved by a lone monk. Different lives and incidents drawn together. By what? Destiny? Or some greater power pulling the strings? I did not know. But at the time, I thought I had the chance to protect humanity from the Daughter of Hatred. The Wanderer's connection to her gave me hope. <laughs> Imagine that. As the broken Herodrum Knight, Lorith Nah heads off to pursue the Pale Man, we have been tasked with enlisting the aid of the Cathedral of Light here in the city. Strange bedfellows for a necromancer, yet surely with Inarius' hate for Lilith. Our enemy's enemy may prove yet to be an unexpected ally. As paranoia grips the locals we overhear. I tell you, my neighbor is bewitched. I saw him skulking outside my door, muttering curses. Right, right. This wouldn't have anything to do with the money you owe him, would it? Trudging north, we find a throng of people admiring a large statue of Anarius. Spear pointed to the heavens, which we only take in its full breadth while circling the stone rendition. Then we find a local priest delivering a sermon to all those who would listen. For a hundred generations, hell itself imprisoned Father Inarius, but they could not break him. He cast off his infernal shackles and returned to us. And now, 
He will guide the faithful along the path of deliverance. I guess we shall soon find out if the angel is worth our praise or contempt. Continuing higher up the steps, we see a crowd gathered around the symbol of the church, with an ominous crimson teardrop-shaped gem in the center. To the left of the stairs, we find a woman praying to a makeshift shrine who beseeches. Father Inarius, bless the child that grows in my belly. Keep him safe in your light. Below her, a man named Omitri, who gives thanks. Oh, glorious father, thank you. Your light has cleansed the disease from my flesh. I am made whole in your radiance. Similarly, children huddled for warmth in the southeastern corner spread Inarius' legend further. My brother told me you have to shield your eyes in the Father's presence, or his light will make you blind. That's why the knights wear helmets. So, Inarius performs miracles. But at what price? Entering the double doors of the church, we interrupt mid-sermon. We were born in sin, children of darkness. But the Father's light can be sought through penitence and faith. Walk in the light. And are surprised to see our one-time ally, Eosef. Prava, seeing us, continues. We must be ever vigilant against sin, brother. Yes, Reverend Mother. Let the light of Inarius burn away wickedness. Let not temptation lead you from his holy radiance. Let righteousness sear away corruption and sin. Cast out thy darkness, for only light must remain. Cast out thine darkness, for only light must remain. Is this the one from Nevest? Yes, Reverend Mother. Did Lorath not accompany you? He sent me on without him. Putting faith in that old man was a mistake. What could possibly be of greater import? Lilith. So, you know. Hmm. We have received word from one of our knights of a demon sighting in Gale Valley. The description matches too closely to the sighting in Nevesk. If you would travel to Yelesna and take stock of the events there, you would have the gratitude of the Cathedral of Light. I had thought to send Lorath, but... Again, he fails in his duty. With or without Lorath, the will of Inarius shall be done. Here, take the knight's report before you go. We gather, draped over the altar, an ornate scroll which reads... Reverend Mother, I received a report of a potential demon sighting. Horned woman near Yelesna Mines. Performed routine inspection, nothing yet. Sent in priest and escort of knights. We'll report in when we find something. Pocketing this information, we then ask Brava, you know Lorith? His skill is unmatched, but as you can see, he's not so reliable. It's not out of indifference. He went off searching for a pale man who accompanied Lilith. So someone is helping her. <sighs> How easily the souls of men sink to darkness. What do you know of Lilith? She is spawn of a prime evil. Mark my words, Nevesk was but the beginning. She will kill again. But our father, the angel Inarius, is prophesied to defeat her. Where there is faith, there need not be fear. What happened in Yelesna? One of our flock, the watch commander, Vigo, sent word of a demon sighting. A girl claimed to see a horned woman. The risk is too great to dismiss. Seek him out. He should be well into his search. And so we leave the church on Lilith's trail, down the rabbit hole with a new ally in Anarius's many zealots, 
Hopefully this watch commander, Vigo, or the girl that supposedly sighted Lilith, have the answers we seek before the demoness tears up the rest of the countryside. Leaving the frozen streets of Kyovishad behind, we overhear some of the locals discuss the church. Say, where are those girls of yours? Finally ran off to play night, have they? They left for Corvalar this morning. They'll have food, training, more than I can give them. It seems there is a common theme here. We can't help but wonder how much of his army is comprised of the faithful versus the malnourished. Exiting the city via the southeast, it's evident the ostentatious facade is solely in the western quarter as we step gingerly over the questionable bridge and into a pack of hungry wargs. Marauders too lie in ambush perhaps working in collusion with the wolves for those unlucky enough to leave the relative safety of the city. Heading east, we enter the lowlands and are immediately set upon by a new group of enemies as a horde of ghouls run us down. Contending with the first pack, a second descend upon us. Overwhelmed by their sheer volume, we race towards the bastion of Yelesna, the light of the beacons, sending the ghouls scampering away, momentarily safe. Not while I'm in town. We head inside the town and see a local priestess, flanked by knights, who, seeing our plight, solemnly preaches. Darkness encroaches on the light. Dull swords must be sharpened and armor polished. The town is in a state markedly worse than Kyovishad, and we decide to speak to the nearest local, a woman named Marietta, hunched over a barrel. It's a hard life here, but with the dangers and the mines. But if I'm lucky, could make it five more years without sight of injury or death. Nearby, we hear the unmistakable rowdy banter of a local watering hole and enter the tavern known as the Hog's Head. By the fire, a knight, Gastiv, muses. Look, I didn't ask for this post, but as long as I'm here, I may as well make some money. Don't worry, I'll tithe. No harm, no foul, eh? Congruently, we see a local gambling game being played by a group in the middle of the room who shoo. Leave me alone. I'm off duty. Just trying to have a little fun for once. We then see a gaggle of men in various states of stupor by beer barrels and their server jests. <laughs> Wait your turn, you drunkards! There's plenty to go around! It's true what they say, idle hands make the devil's work. But what has the knight so displaced? We then turn to the local innkeeper, Tassiana, for answers. Why are the mines closed? Story changes, depending on who you talk to. Some say demons, others say werewolves. Don't really matter, all means the same thing. Closed minds and idle hands. Our thoughts exactly. How is Yelesna surviving? The cathedral mostly. Most people don't want to admit it. Too proud. Don't want them here, but can't survive if they leave. <laughs> you seem to be doing well. <laughs> Probably better than it should. Hard times make people want to feel something. A little drink, a little gambling. Better than being scared all the time, eh? What a sad state of affairs. We need to locate whoever is in charge to find answers and the Captain Vigo. We then ask a local guard just outside and realize she's barely able to stay on her feet. I ain't had nothing but vegetables stew for weeks now. What better month's wages for a scrap of meat? We feel bad for the nearby loitering chickens. In the center of town, we come across a welcome waypoint, and to the west, a nearby knight, Fabian, who shivers. This damn cold chews me to my bones. Can't wait to get out of here. And to his right, a guard, Svitla. The knights are willing to teach us a few tricks, which have come in handy. Heading up the stairs, we see an office of import, but pause, witnessing the hanging of a bloody corpse stripped down, being gawked at by a local Grisella. 
I remember when there was a hanging only once in a while. Now, they happen every week. And just to the north, more corpses. But this time, hated vampires. These rotting, stinking corpses of the undead are a grim reminder of the dangers outside the city. A scared populace is a controlled one, but we fear their apprehension is wholly justified. Turning to a smithy hammering a spiky door named Denisov, he ponders aloud. Been working on this door for days. Not much else to do around here. Even less to sell. Mm, should fetch a nice price. Seeing all we need to know of the locals and their plight, we head to the Western Garrison building, pausing only to pat a poor mangy dog. Hello. A bit too friendly when meat is so scarce. Inside the office, we spot the local magistrate looking cast aside with the guard captain at his desk. Ah, uh, can't you see I'm busy? Yes, the knights are not preferred, but they serve a purpose. One this town desperately needs. We then seek the real power in town, Captain Anchors, who scant looks up what from his paperwork need? and questions. Prava sent me. I'm looking for Vigo. You and that nuisance of a child both. Girl's been nagging us about that demon woman all week. Vigo's gone, looking into her claims. He should be at the mining camp north of here. All escort of knights went missing there last week. Along with the girl's mother and another woman. Watch yourself out there. Sounds like this girl may have spotted Lilith after all. A whole escort of knights disappearing is troubling, to say the least. We then head east through the town's muddy thoroughfare, and a pained guard, Mironov, complains. Ah, this blister is killing me! I need new boots. Undersupplied and underfed, we shudder at the damage a demon could do to this weary rabble. Hope the fish are biting today. Heading northeast through the murky Zeleny lowlands, we're again swarmed by the ghouls hungrily awaiting stragglers by the village gates. Sensing the entire countryside is waiting for us to stumble in the muddy terrain so they can take a wet bite out of our flesh. We make a dead run for the mining camp, fatigue setting in and our enemies blessed with our natural stamina keeping pace. It's only as we see the dim lights of the Pine Hills mining camp, still guarded, do we breathe a sigh of relief as our assailants think better of a full frontal assault and peel back into the woods to await the next victim for their ever-growing army of the undead? More strangers in the camp. Once inside the camp, we see we're not entirely welcome. Heading northeast, we find blocking the mine's entrance. A church of light officer, hand on sword hilt and looking worse for wear. We then realize we found Vigo and ask. Are you Vigo? I was sent- <coughs> Hey! I know what I saw. She had horns like a beast. Strode right past where you stand. I just think my mother's trapped in there with her. You let my mother through, sir. Shouldn't you be responsible for her safety? But... Uh, we have soldiers stationed inside. You should be worried about them, too. <sighs> Maybe you can help me. Young Nayrel then approaches us to aid with her mother. And we know, in all likelihood, we're probably too late. Meeting the card captain Vigo in the Windfall Hollow Mines, we learn that a young girl, Nayrell's mother, as well as an escort of guards are trapped in the mines with a horned demon. We then ask, what brings you to Yelesna? My mother and I study the Haradrim. We were onto something big, but then she ran off. It's not like her to abandon the hunt. And you can't go after your mother. Why are these mines sealed off? 
Uh, mines are closed on church orders. They're not safe. Especially not for children. Ugh. Hoping to change the captain's mind, we approach Vigo and inform. Reverend Mother Prava sent me. She did. The Horned Woman is the demon Lilith. No, that can't be. My mother taught me that name. You speak of the Daughter of Hatred. Did Prava mention me? She wasn't angry, was she? There's more than your job at stake here. <sighs> Come on. Let's get this over with. Vigo, acquiescing, opens the door with a slight huff before barreling through into the mine's western track towards the shafts below, fiddling with the hoist, he complains. <sighs> the damn hoist is stuck. We've got to go on foot. Look out! We're then set upon by re-risen miners, swathing through the dead en masse. Nairel then realizes. Hey, that's my mother's charm on your wrist. Hmm. It's mine now, girl. She gave it to me when I let her and her friend pass through. Escorting the knight and the treasure-seeking magpie of a girl east, we locate the entrance deeper in the condemned mines and cautiously step inside as Vigo somewhat loses his nerve. Maybe we should go back, round up the knights. And leave my mother in Lilith's care for as long as that will take? No. I'm going on. Deeper in the stagnant tunnels, the air hangs heavy and the stench of death surrounds us. Although instead of the fresh undead men above, we're greeted by shambling skeletons risen in Lilith's wake. Contending with waves of undead hordes, the mines begin to come down around us, making Vigo warily comment. Beams are too damn old, shaking like leaves. Descending into the dark bowels of the cave, Nairel then questions the captain. What's special about this place anyway? What would draw Lilith here? Hell if I know. Prava doesn't tell us anything. No one goes in, nothing comes out. That's all. Sounds like the first honest thing Vigo has said thus far. We then find another mine shaft with what appears to be a miner holding its legs to his chest, cowering, and wonder how it died in this position. In the center of the room, we see a pile of corpses in a worse state, and Vigo mutters. <sighs> no lift. The jam must be deeper down. With no lift access, we attempt the door Nairel inspects. Locked. Over here. I can squeeze through to the other side. Wait, hold on. And there she goes. Enemies approaching. Nowhere to go. Fight's coming to us this time. We're then set upon by ghouls who drop from the ceiling in clusters, and it's then we realize this is no longer a mine shaft, but a feeding ground, as a hated vampire lord attempts to make a meal of us. Open that door, girl! I've got it! With Nairel safely returned, Ego compliments the girl. That was... quick thinking. Sure. The captain then questions. Why would your mother... leave you like that? She wouldn't. Or... she shouldn't have. I'm sure she had good reason. We then descend deeper from an unstable shaft into collapsing depths, making haste, as a collapse is not an if, but instead, when. Surviving a final cave-in, Nairel exclaims, I'm not dying here! Our only option, to go deeper into the darkened way below. Over there! An opening! 
Go! We arrive in a large cavern before the shaft behind us collapses, and Vigo gasps. <sighs> the tunnel's closed. We're, we're trapped without the hoist. Look, there she is. Nerel runs off into the gloom with Vigo dutifully in tow. We follow behind, and seeing her peering off into the distance, ask, What is it, Nerel? <sighs> that statue. It's her. The way I saw her. Lilith. We need to find my mother. Although this is good tidings that we're on the demoness's trail, a part of us wished the girl was mistaken for her mother's sake. We then double back and find a ladder leading down to the level below. Worse is the blood trail as we spot signs of a struggle between the demon fallen and the Church of Light guards who, troublingly, have abandoned their barricade. Over there, the hoist. We head back to the hoist and Vigo sighs in relief. <sighs> At last, our ride out. Oh, hell. A demon. Here? Dislodging the corpse with a bone shard, Vigo again gasps. Slain? What happened? We turn to the captain and say, Well, Vigo, here's our way out. <sighs> We need reinforcements. No, we can do... <clears throat> what was that? It came from beyond the gate. Curious at the source of the pained grunt, we rush to the stone gate of Kasama, which opens with an ancient seal and a cloud of dust, and witness a terrible scene ahead. No. The escort. <sighs> They're all dead. <laughs> Over there! We rush to the only guard still breathing and ask of the dying man, who did this? A woman. Vigo. It was one of the women you sent. Only... She wasn't human. She, she was... A demon, like the statue, claims she mothered sanctuary. <laughs> it was a dead bloodbath. The other woman, Venard, where is she? <sighs> she begged for her life. <laughs> well, I spared her, let her deeper in. <sighs> Give up, girl. <laughs> She's lost. Vico. You must listen. Steel did nothing. <clears throat> oh, oh, spells. Prayers. All useless. <clears throat> Go to Corval. <clears throat> Tell Pro. <clears throat> Raise the army. The father. <clears throat> Evil itself. <clears throat> Walks sanctuary. <clears throat> Do this for me. He is dead. I'm done for. Your mother told me this trinket would bring good fortune. To think I trusted her. She bribed you with it, didn't she? You weren't supposed to let her through at all. But it's not too late. She can still be saved. Not by me. Not anymore. Prava will know what to do. You're leaving us? Abandoning her? There's nothing left to abandon. <sighs> She's good as dead. I'm sorry, kid. He, he really just left us. <sighs> it's up to us now. With Vigo raising the alarm in Corvala, we're left to pursue Lilith with the young Nairel. Unfortunately, if experience has taught us anything, it's that Vigo is probably right about her mother's fate, leaving the dead where they lie. We gingerly hop over the chasm, and certain death as Nairel follows suit and declares, Lilith can't be too far. It's then we see a stone tablet written in ancient text, accompanying artwork etched on the floor that reads, Lilith showed me the ugly truth of her cosmos. 
the eternal conflict, angels and demons have battled over control of all creation for all time. To what end? I asked, and she simply laughed. But who deciphered this? As we find blood petals below and question. What is this? Using our powers of blood magic, we place a hand on the symbol and see a blurred vision of the past. How your mind races. Yes, I am Lilith, mother of sanctuary. Daughter of hatred. I have what you seek. You hunger for knowledge. You dragged your child all over Sanctuary in pursuit of it. No, I... I taught her how to survive. Is that what you want to believe? Drop the act. You have questions. I have answers. I know the fabric of the cosmos. Everything I've read has warned me against you. You've read so much, yet know so little. Will you accept my offer? I... I don't know. Will you let me try? I want to try. <sighs> Your mother is... alive. She came this way with Lilith. How can you be sure? Sometimes I see visions of the past. I saw them. What? How? Lilith's petals. Her blood was fed to me once. Hmm. So... If Lilith spared Nayral's mother, she must be notating Lilith's words on the stones. We must find her, before she succumbs fully to the demon's influence. Again, a gaggle of fallen rush out of the ruins to ambushes. Wherever Lilith goes, demons seem to spawn in her wake. We then see a picture of Lilith, and what we assume is the angel Inarius embracing on the stone, and the chalky entry is titled, Forbidden Love, reading, Lilith saw a way to escape the eternal conflict. She tells me it started with the seduction of the angel Inarius. All this time, he was just as fallible as any man. Below, more demons loiter over an image of Lilith and Inarius in possession of the world stone. The entry is titled, Sanctuary, reading, Lilith is Sanctuary's mother. Somehow I felt the truth of it the moment she said it to those knights. Now I know how. She used Inarius to craft this world, a refuge from the eternal conflict. Heading up the stairs to the south, the Fallen's efforts to repel us grows as they send waves of their exploding vile lunatics to sacrifice themselves in an effort to halt our progress. Wading through the corpses, we find a mural of Lilith and Inarius seemingly guiding humanity. The stone tablet is labelled The Firstborn and reads, All my life I've sought the origin of humankind. It was always her. From the union of angels and demons came the first generation of humanity. They were powerful, movers of mountain, shakers of the seas. We fight our way to look out over a black lake at the very depths of the temple. Strange obsidian obelisks protrude from a stone platform, and we can barely make out etched writings of a glyph, not unlike that of the Icehall ruins. Doubling back down the path, we begin to climb the slippery stone, lower into the depths, finding a mural we spied originally on the higher floor of a man who appears to be our order's patron, Rathma. Shocked, we read the deciphered stone slab and are dismayed at its revelation as it's labelled Rathma and reads... She was so proud in the telling of this part. Lilith and Anarius bore a son together, 
Rathma. He is wise beyond years, the first to untangle the power of necromancy. She says his lair lies deeper in. We step back in utter shock, staring at the face of her order we barely recognize. Never had there been mention of Rathma's lineage, or to our knowledge, his continued existence. No wonder he craved balance, being the direct offspring of angel and demon alike. It was bred into him. Reeling from the revelation, we press on. Our entire understanding of the order of necromancers is coming into question, and we selfishly want to find Rathma for answers more than Lilith herself. We then enter the Courts of Dawn and find the now familiar blood panels of Lilith in our path. So curious. You are eager to know why you were spared. Yes. Do you have faith in me? I... want to. Good. For now. All you need know is that we are going to meet my son. Rathma, the first necromancer. He is that, and more. He is the key to my plans. It sounds like they're searching for Lilith's son, Rathma. Together. Mother, what are you thinking? It's not long before we also locate more writings on stone, this time in Venard's hand that scrawled. Lilith opened my eyes to the crimes of Anarius. He betrayed her, banished her. He sapped the power of her children. He's the reason we're weak, the reason we die. He ruined us because he feared us. We'll show him he was right to be afraid. To the southeast, wading through the many fallen and their overseers, sent to guard the runes, Nairel exclaims. Huh. Blocked again. Does Lilith know we're coming? As we move to read the blood petals below, we hear an unfamiliar flapping and look up in horror to be faced with a succubus, Rosaka, a gift of the mother. She flings sizzling orbs of crimson death that burn us to our core, not before we swing our sight through a midsection and she falls limp to the floor. We then read the blood petals and see Venard's descent. You've mastered your fear, but I still sense your pain. You miss your daughter. My magpie. She's scared right now. She must be. Go. Or stay. It is time to choose. I... I trained her well. She's a good kid. Strong. She'll be all right, she... You've chosen well, my child. To reach Rathma, we will need to cross a lake at the bottom of these ruins. It requires a ritual. I will teach you. As you wish, mother. Good. You're ready for lesson one. Blood is the key. What did you see this time? I don't need sparing. Tell me. Lilith plans to teach your mother a ritual. One that needs blood. Your mother seemed... receptive. We have to reach them. Alarmed at Nayrell's mother's embrace of blood magics, a dangerous arcane expertise, even in experienced hands, we find by another succubus to the northeast, another delusional diary entry by Lilith's latest apprentice reading. How silly my idle fancies of yesterday seem now. I believed in the Herodrum, but I was misled. With them as our champions, we can barely survive. But Lilith will make us victors. All my life I've been searching, but it was me that needed to be found. As we battle through the Fallen, we realize it's clear that although we'd witnessed the turning of the townsfolk of Navesk, we have wholly underestimated Lilith's ability to seduce through her children's dark desires. And so we then upgrade our garb, found on the felled Fallen enemies in anticipation of encountering Lilith. 
including a rare two-handed sword named Corpse Weaver, as well as a tunic and leggings. It's not long before we find to the west a door barred by a strange aura and Nairel discerns. This barrier, it looks like the same kind of magic as before. We then respond. Demons approach. We need to get through. I think I can dispel it. As the fledgling mage sets to work, sandstalkers pour in from all sides, setting upon us as we desperately try to protect Nairel, who steadfastly works on opening the door. Slaughtering two dozen of the stalkers, we then contend with the gluttonous Brander before Nairel exclaims. Yes, I did it! The ancient gate then groans open, and we descend deeper below into the morning shore. It's to our left we stumble upon a final scribbling of Venard that reads, How sweet this taste! Lilith asked me to aid in a ritual, sacrificing a priest from the escort. He had no fight. He just prayed as we made his blood useful. Forgive my hand, I'm still shaking. Power dances along my bones. I walk the path of our maker now. Realizing we're now at the surface of the Black Lake, we head northeast, hearing chanting in the distance. Not enough blood. Never enough blood. I will follow you to the ends of Sanctuary, Mother. Stopping to check a corpse strewn across the steps and see it's indeed the dead priest she spoke of. A huge gash across his neck has him drained of blood, as Nairel declares. There she is. Nairel's mother, on all fours, traces the runes in the priest's blood, oblivious to our presence, and we turn to Nairel saying, Go ahead, I have your back. Mother? Nairel? You're just in time. Beyond this lake lies the necropolis of the firstborn, a trove of magic and knowledge. I opened the way for Lilith. I could not pass through with her. I... I... lack divine element, you see. Stop. But I can find it. I'm so close. I simply need... Mother, stop! Look at what Lilith has done to you. You're writing in your own blood. My little magpie. She awakened me. She showed me things... I can't even put into words. Once I've finished, you will understand. I don't care what she showed you. Please, let's just get out of here. <laughs> oh, I see. Yes, clever magpie. Trying to lead me away so you can take all this for yourself. Hmm? <laughs> this is my discovery, not yours. <laughs> I will finish these runes with your blood! Oh. You must stop this! Look at the gifts she's given me! We impotently try and extract the Blood Barrier's magics to no avail, and Venard summons Succubi Hellspawn as her personal bodyguards. At intuiting the demon's length to Venard's life force, we dodge their bloody projectiles and manage to dispatch two of the winged fiends, wounding Venard in the process. I need more time. Mother, no! You won't take what's mine! The maddened miscreant sends us back in a crimson wave. As her glyphs glow in ominous red, more demons appear, as well as torrents of spinning blood beams. Again, we critically wound the Blood Witch, and Nairel cries out in dismay. Oh, please! I don't want you to die! <sighs> Desperate, Venard calls forth a throng of Hellspawn led by a Goliath Pit Lord. Our expertise in blood magic proves superior as we release a blood burst that turns the demon to ash. The final succubi begins to flap around in terror, attempting to flee with a final swath of our spectral scythe as Venard shrieks. No! 
As Nayrel's mother lies in a pool of the little blood she has remaining, she begins gasping her final breaths and, unable to look at the poor girl, we turn away and say, I'm sorry. You were... You were protecting me. I don't want to hate you. I'm trying. I really am. We're going to make Lilith pay for what she's done. So we need blessed blood. Go back to your prava. Get that blessing. Beg if you need to. Whatever it takes. My mother started this damn ritual. I'm going to finish it. Meet me in the Mistral Woods. Why there? The Haradrim hid a vault there. Finding it was her life's work. So much for that. Maybe it will help with the ritual. If not, at least I can bury her where she'd want. I need time. I'm sorry. Just leave me. Leaving Nairel to the tragic mess of her mother's remains, sprawled on the floor, we discreetly pick up her dagger, a token of Lilith's power, steeped in Vinard's blood and dark knowledge, no doubt. Attempting to intercept Lilith before she could locate her firstborn Rathma, the patron of our order of necromancers, we find our path barred by a black lake and Nayrel's mother, who we were forced to fell. We then learn the lake can only be crossed with a divine blessing, and thus return to the Church of Light in Kyovashat for guidance, finding Yosef by the altar. See that the kitchen is ready for the morrow service. Angels above, you've returned. We explain. I need a holy blessing to continue chasing Lilith. The Reverend Mother will want to hear of this, but she's away at Corvalar. Seek your blessing there. Everything is unfolding as Inarius foretold. Soon, he will be free to escape sanctuary and return to the heavens where he belongs. Before leaving, we inquire. What do you know of Reverend Mother Prava? As a girl, she was sick, plagued by constant seizures. But Enarius healed her. When I met her, I was a sinner. But her faith showed me what I could be. There's no one better fit to lead us. What is Korvala? One of our defenses against the prime evils. We fight terror with faith, hatred with compassion. We've built the mighty towers at Corvalar to withstand destruction. And Anarius foretold this. He was given a prophecy. Light piercing hatred's heart, it said. He knew what it meant, that he was fated to kill Lilith. And when he does, he will be redeemed and he will ascend to the heavens once more. Teleporting back to Yelezna, we then head towards the fortified outpost of Korvala and push north into the Shivering Wilds with fanatical fallen lion wait. We then lift off the demon some decidedly useful loot in the bitter cold a leather doublet, some welcome warmth for the trek ahead. We then find, through the thick snow, the main entrance to Corvalar. Sheathing our weapon to show we're not an enemy, we see the gates are sealed, and a knight on a terrace above demands. State your business. Reverend Mother Prava expects me. Open the gates! Heading through the open gate, we're welcomed by the icy demeanor of the guards, befitting the gale, and are immediately drawn to the warmth of a nearby bonfire, and see Vigo, realizing he can take no solace in his warmth, as its fire is for his fallen comrades. You are good soldiers. 
Worked hard. Fought hard. <laughs> Drank hard, too. Brothers. Sisters. I hope you find peace in these flames. Vigo, what are you doing here? So you lived. I came clean to Trava. About taking that woman's bribe. Uh, it's looking bad. My ass is on the line. Might not have a job when she's done with me. Hey, you're here for her, right? Let's go together. Maybe she'll go easy on me if you're there. Not liking Vigo's odds. Acquiesce. Surely a cornerstone of the Holy Order is forgiveness earned through penance. Not many could bear your sins. Coincidentally, a nearby penitent monk scoffs at us. Perhaps Vigo chose the wrong order. We inspect what the monks are working on. Curiously, we see the helmet's spike recede deep within the helmet as part of a metal slab that protrudes downward. The metal tendrils stretch to the helmet's base and latch onto a studded leather cap, denying any room for a head. We then interrupt the knight to our right, who is no doubt busy measuring our sins, and ask, is that armor? This is no mere armor. This is a holy vessel of the highest craftsmanship. It may uplift the repentant sinner directly to the light. Can armor do that? Uplift. It looks too large to move. Faith rather than flesh moves the suit, though how is only known to a privileged few. The practice has been long abandoned. Something big is coming. Holy war. Mark my words, she wouldn't have asked me to prepare a relic like this otherwise. Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. Making our way to the Keep's war room, the guard stops us. Hold. She's expecting us. Vigo. Good luck. Inside, Prava holds council. Have the new Watch Commander replace the forces we lost at the mine. So, you've returned. Vigo here tells me you were braver than he. Wasting no time, we explain. I need a divine blessing to chase Lilith. First, you will be made worthy of a blessing. A holy war cannot be won with faithless troops. Make no mistake. This war is holy. Lilith has brought the eternal conflict to Sanctuary, and Inarius will deliver us as writ in prophecy. Until then, we have our parts to play. Make a pilgrimage to the Alabaster Monastery. Cleanse your spirit. Then we may discuss a blessing. Forced to seek the blessing, Vigo says... <sighs> May as well make myself useful. Come by the ruins, south of here. Dutifully making our way south to the snow-laden ruins, Vigo greets. Hail. And we ask, what must I do for my pilgrimage? There's a shrine west of here. Bears a relic. I'm told it takes on your sin. Weighs you down, body and soul. Beats the hell out of you. It'll cleanse you. Prepare you to stand before the Father. I hope you don't have many regrets, friend. This kind of thing is a lot deadlier for some than others. Watch out, all right? I'll find you at the end. I'll find out. What else can you tell me about the pilgrimage? Nothing good. Lost more than a few worthy soldiers to it. But it'll clean you up for Inarius. Rare honor for an outsider, <laughs> if you can call it that. Wait, you're not coming with me? Ah, uh, no. I'm not ready. Not by a long shot. Even if I could survive the trail, there's no telling what would happen in the end. You, though, you have a solid chance. Do you believe in the Cathedral's prophecy? 
I had my doubts. The priests were always going on about the return of Lilith. But now she's here. Just like they said. With Vigo's uninspiring words, we trudged through the thick snow down the side of the mountain, making our way west into the fields of judgment. We soon see the bodies of the frozen faithful, no doubt deemed unworthy. Up a slight slope, we locate a dimly lit altar of purity, and an ornate tablet rests at the foot of the steps that reads, Hark, creature of darkness, for you have wandered beyond the reach of the light. Lift your sins, breathe deep the cold air. The path to redemption lies before you, if you have the faith to walk it. Taking the idol of the faithful, we feel the weight of our sins, and our vision grows dim. Sliding down into the fields of judgment, we we'll soon find the next altar, guarded by putrid rot-wielding Khazra, and led by the vile blight bringer who is touched by destruction. We ward off their pestilent touch with liberal swaths of our side. We then head up the altar of martyrdom and place the idol atop the altar of penitence. The next ornate tablet to our left then reads, Feel the sting of your wounds. Let the ice into your bones. Welcome your pain, for the agony of the flesh is the first cleansing of the soul. Make your faith stronger than any hurt. Prava is either full of faith or a fully-fledged masochist. Taking the heft of the idol on our back once more, we head east and are confronted by a group of undead Khazra, blazing and shambling horrors alike. We see their leader is touched by terror, and we're beginning to sense a theme in these trials. We then place the idol on the altar of inheritance. And our vision grows clear enough for us to find the next tablet. Look around at the mountains towering over you. Feel how small you are. Embrace humility. Accept your place in worship to the Father. For he has shown us the way. Retrieving the idol for a final time, we push east back towards the city. A giant fleshless abomination hefts its axe down on us, touched by hatred. This crazy Khazra stalks us through the snow, and we're unable to stand our ground. Desperate, we make a break for the idol, turning heel to fling shards of bone from its allies in its direction and halt momentarily, hearing only the stinging winds. Wholly relieved, the beast has finally fallen. We then place the idol on the last altar of displacement and read from the tablet at the anointed ascent. The end nears, pilgrim. Look into yourself. Find your faith. Feel how it fills the void within you. Remember, you are nothing without faith. Hold fast to the light. And remember. Apparently, free from sin, the idol, upon being lifted, no longer burdens us so, and instead emanates a warm light. And so we make our way up the mountain to the Alabaster Monastery and taking in the imposing view of the citadel. We then read the tablet to the left, which imparts. Rejoice your faith. The Father is prophesied to redeem us all. A spear of light piercing hatred's heart. When he ascends to the heavens, he shall lift us with him to the light above. Placing the idol on the elaborate pedestal, we're glad to have survived the trials and to see Vigo praying by the altar to our right. 
So, I like playing cards. Doesn't make me a sinner. But that bribe... Good soldiers died on account of what I did. Is that the kind of man I am? The kind I'll always be. I just... Damn it. I'm praying. Why isn't this working? Oh, you made it. That makes one of us, at least. You heard from Prather? I will. Soon. But enough about that. You're about to meet Father Inarius himself. Not everyone comes back, you know. You'd better. I, I owe you a stiff drink. Before meeting the Angel, we ask, what's it like inside the monastery? Not sure, but I've heard crazy rumors. Daft old monk. If the unlucky bastard still lives, probably as cold in there as it is out here. It'll be ornate, that's for sure. Only the best for the one at the top. Cold, crazy, and conceited? But we still speaking about the monks or Inarius. Vigo doesn't bother responding, and we think better of pushing our luck. And so we make our way over the church's seal. Now, post our trials, we have no doubt the red gem represents the impure blood of the church's sinners. We then approach the large stone doors, which eerily swing open as we mount the stairs. Inside the hazy Hall of Ascension, we're addressed by the supposed mad monk. Kneel before him, and remember, you are small, wonderfully small. We then say to the custodian, Brother Orlin, Small? Why must I kneel? No, 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 it's not about kneeling, it's about wonder. Oh, the light itself, divinity itself, radiates from that room. Though my flesh is cold and numb, my spirit is warm with reverence. What can we do but kneel? Tell me, shouldn't Anarius be at Corvala? And so he was, until the sweet poetry of the prophecy rang out to divine its message. He pilgrimaged deep into Sanctuary's heart to meet... Uh, well, I shouldn't say. To meet who? It pains me to withhold the truth of his light. But I sense it in you, Pilgrim. So I shall tell you. He went to speak with the first of his children, Rathma, the prophecy's true author. He emerged armed with sacred conviction, a holy battle at the center of the prophecy to be won by his blade. He has meditated here for years and years ever since, readying to meet fate Head on. Rathma. Hearing Anarius is his father is still a shock to the system. How do you know so much about Anarius? How do you know the warmth of the sun? The love of your mother? The beauty of a song? His presence is infectious. It takes hold in the soul. We are a void without faith, an empty well. The pious fill their cups with prayer. Mine overflows with his light. So near, so pure. I am changed. I I am nothing. I am better. Isn't it beautiful? It seems Lilith isn't the only being that affects the hearts of men, although on opposite sides of the battle. Both benevolent beings bid payment in blood, 
Ascending the stairs, we spy lavish artworks and a mural of Anarius atop the world stone. The next image depicts a sick woman who appears to be Prava, being healed by Anarius, who stands arm outstretched by her bedside. A third image shows Anarius floating about an army, apparently rallying the faithful for battle. And as we reach the highest level, we steal our resolve as we step towards a final double door, unsure of what to expect as we enter the portal of Father's Radiance. Forgive this intrusion, but... Tell me what you need. I must traverse the Black Lake, and that cannot be done without your blessing. If I've learned anything during my time here, it is that what we're looking for, and what we need, are rarely the same thing. I once thought I could find an end to this war. But there has been no resolution, only more pain. Everything I've done has pulled me further from home, from the place I need to be. This world we made was born from the impossible, and yet, like its creators, it rots from the inside. I... I don't... Lilith has entered the ancient city. With your blessing, I can pursue her. Your kind are weak, and this world has been wasted on the crusades of the unworthy. I can stop her. Hmm. This audience is concluded. Leaving our disappointed father's chambers, we mutter. Back to Corvalar. Unsure of our next move, we think it best to seek out Mother Prava about our failed blessing. On the bright side, we're still among the living. For now, at least, unless Lilith's blood kills us first. As we're about to leave, we stop to speak to Brother Orlan of our failed meeting, saying, Anarius didn't seem very welcoming. No, no, no. You heard him, but you did not listen. His voice is music, a symphony of light. Look beyond the words themselves, and you will find truth. Oh, brother. That's more sycophantic drivel. And with that, we leave for Corvalar. Entering as day breaks, and see Prava is mid sermon. Blessed are those who bask in the light. Let our faith be our armor against the encroaching darkness. Approaching her, she sighs in relief. Ah, you've returned. Come, let us speak inside, out of the cold. Bearing the bad news, we admit, Anarius refused to bless me. Yet you stand before me unscathed. I know his ways. That is approval enough for me. In the name of the light, I bless you. May the light flow through you and keep you from corruption and sin. Our victory is prophesied in the heavens. Prophesied? We wonder why has he taken Rathma's teachings for his own and ask, what does the prophecy say? From the Father's voice to my ears, a spear of light piercing hatred's heart. 
First Lilith, then the Primes. He will deliver us from the eternal conflict. Your commander attempted to regain Renarius' favor. What will become of Vigo? Vigo and I had a good conversation when he returned. He will do his penance. Trust that he is in good hands. Why is Anarius here on Sanctuary? Penitence. In the Heaven's eyes, creating humanity was a sin. They cast him down. Now he seeks redemption and the chance to go home. As prophesied, slaying Lilith is that chance. When he ascends, so shall we all. With our unexpected blessing, there's one piece of the puzzle left, and we head back to Yelesna to find Nairel in the Mistral Woods. After obtaining Anarius' blessing, to cross the Black Lake in the wake of Lilith, we learn that we must obtain a ritual as well, which Nairel believes may be found in the Herodric Vault located in the Mistral Woods. Returning to Yelesna and heading north into the maze-like woods, we find the bodies of dead villagers ripped to shreds by the many bats, wargs and werewolves that stalk the wooded glade. However, in one clearing, there is a stockpile of supplies and the bodies of their previous owners. Treasure hunters, perhaps like Nairel. Next to a nearby body is a dimly lit, gnarled statue bearing three heads. Activating it, it reads, Behold the truths that lie within, and our path laid clear we utter. There is something strange going on here. Nairel must be nearby. Cautiously, we enter the cave in search of Nairel, and into the darkened halt. Inside the winding way, the air hangs thick with magics, and we can barely see twenty yards ahead. Delving deeper into the serpentine snowy path, we're unexpectedly assaulted by the very forest itself, as wood wraiths come bearing down on us. Perhaps worse is the throng of wrathful spirits, enraged at our unwanted interloping. Fatigued and lost, we almost give up our search for the young girl when we spy a peculiar sight. A red portal, and with the bloodied wolf standing by it who greets. You're stuck in an illusion created by the Horadrim. The portal will lead you through this crude trap. With nowhere else to go, we hesitantly follow into the fiery portal. Relax. No harm will come to you here. We find ourselves inexplicably in a hellscape of a town's ruins. Following the wolf into a town square, we see him sit by a well, seeping blood. Who are you? An admirer of sorts. I saved you in the mountains. You'd lost your horse and crawled into that cave. Would have frozen to death if not for me. Why are you helping me? Oh, it's very simple. You want to stop Lilith, and I want you to succeed. But you'll never do that by following the Horadrim. Beside him, an image of a maddened man who recently escaped a gibbet to our surprise. We peer into the past and see none other than Decad Cain of the Herodrum, who was once trapped here. Why is Cain a part of this? Their path always ends in fire and death. Making our way over to the bony mass reconstituted as a cathedral, the wolf questions. Seen enough. Open the door. In turn, we follow the wolf and ask, 
Why are you telling me all this? To warn you. A day will come when the Haradrim stumble. Don't be there when they do. The portal will lead you to that little girl you're looking for. Before we leave to try and find Nairel, we then further question. What is this place? Tristram. The Horadrum of old imprisoned Diablo, the Lord of Terror beneath the earth. And then they built this town nearby. <laughs> you can see how that turned out. What does this have to do with us? And why do you want to stop Lilith? I like the world the way it was. Without Lilith, her little game of rebellion will only lead to chaos. You've already seen visions of the damage she can do. Yes, I know you have fed her blood. Do you feel it changing you? Perhaps not yet. But as long as Lilith walks in your world, it is only a matter of time. So this wolf knows we must stop Lilith before we succumb to her deadly blood. Before we leave, we see a stone of great power piercing the chest of a nearby corpse. We're then thrust into a final vision of a great warrior who used a similar stone in efforts to contain Diablo. But what does it all mean? Whatever the reason, we think it best to ponder outside of this plane and so we step back into the fiery portal and realize where we are. Back in the Haradrim's illusion. Heading to the north, we see a figure in the distance and exclaim, Nairel! There you are! I think I've lost my way. The same thing happened to my mother and me earlier on. The trail to the vault ends here. So it should be somewhere around in these woods. With Nairel by our side, we are again confronted by wrathful spirits of the dead Herodrum, guarding the grove. Is someone toying with us? This place is a maze. And now this. What's that supposed to be? We then spy in the bushes a familiar three-faced statue of wood. And as before, examining it, we're ripped from the illusion or shroud of the Herodrum. Back on Sanctuary proper, Nairel claims, Oh, I see. The path is different now. The statue was the source of an illusion. We must be close. And to the west, a great stone structure in which Nairel exclaims, Finally, the Haradric Vault! Inside the abandoned main foyer, we ask, This is the place? Not what I expected. But let's not give up hope. All we need is one book, one spell, to help us cross the Black Lake and stop Lilith. With our task to find the spell clear, we can't help but wonder what happened to Lorith's Herodric brethren. <sighs> Sealed shut. What of the passage over there? We soon see fresh blood and fear. This has become a place of great sacrifice. Looking at the sealed door, we ask. Why were you and your mother looking for this place? You assume we're treasure hunters, don't you? I'm not assuming anything. I just want some answers. Look, ever since I can remember, my mother took me around looking for Herodric artifacts. It was an obsession. And when she learned of this vault and wanted to find it, I couldn't say no. Why not? She was sick. Tried to hide it from me, but... But I knew she didn't have long left. This sort of thing, the hunt, it made her happy. It made me happy too. You have the answers you wanted now? 
Leaving the poor girl with her thoughts, we search for access to the main chamber through the eastern wing, finding guarded by quill rats, a tome of lesser verse and incantations for fledgling scholars. We inspect it, seeing it's a worn, dusty book with a faded Herodric seal on the cover. We return to Nairel and she discovers. This is... I think it's written in Horodric code. And here, the same symbol on the door. I have an idea. You might want to take a step back. Just be shot. Let's keep on. I wish Mother was here. With the entrance now open, we delve deeper into the Herodric Vault with Nairel in tow. Hey! Wait for me! Discovering two wings, both sealed by glyphs and a giant floating orb in the center, we question. Can you open this door? It's the same seal as before. Should be easy enough to break it again. But why would someone use it here? One way to find out. Of course. We can't let anything stop our pursuit of Lilith. I'll open the door, and if we split up, we'll work faster that way. Only if you stay on this side of the door. Fine. What am I looking for? Don't you know? A book, a scroll, or anything that will help us cross the Black Lake. Chespeth Chut! Nairel then unlocks the seal, and the door slides open, revealing an ominous crimson glow within. Heading west through the halls, we encounter a demonic presence crumbling. Demons. Deeper in the vault, we're confronted by a mass of undead, surely summoned by Lilith to guard something of great import. And we find, on their leader's remains, a powerful shield, Ages of the Embalmer. Although somewhat morbid to the layman, we equip it with Venard's knife, as reconstitution is part of the great cycle. And what better weapons to use against our enemy than their own? Inside the northern depths, we descend some stone stairs past a peculiar portal and are confronted by a screech in the desecrated archives. Thief! You won't take my master's book! The voice is that of Chort, a succubi herald of Lilith, bound to guard the tome we no doubt desire. Like her sisters, she hurls bolts of reddish electricity that burns us to our core summoning burning balls of death in her wake and flits about around a makeshift arena. We then bridge the gap, eviscerating her with a final terrible swing of our spectral scythe. Gathering the loot of her corpse, including Astridus' tunic, we equip it and new leggings before picking up the book she was protecting. To our shock, it's a book of Rathmas, and we question. Why was a demon guarding that book? I should take this back to Nairel. Bound in black leather, necromantic runes run along the spine of the Grim Tome. Unfortunately, our skill lies primarily in blood magics, we do not know how this book could be used to cross the lake. Leveraging the nearby teleporter, we find ourselves back in the foyer, and Nairel admits. I hope you had more luck than me. We then share, I found this book of my order. Interesting. This ledger was written by the Haradrim. This is chronicling spells and theories created by Rathma, the first necromancer. That's not what we are looking for. No. 
But it can still work. There must be a spell in this book we can use to bring my mother back. She knows the ritual to cross the Black Lake. Are you sure this is a good idea? It's all we have. My mother will help us through. Meet me down there. With our harrowing new goal to resurrect Nayrel's mother and hope she will aid us, we paused to share before leaving. The passage was infested with demons. I thought I heard something, but demons? How is that possible? It couldn't have been the Haradrim. They're secretive, but would never follow such a path. I don't know, but Rathma, that cannot be just a coincidence. You mean that we found Rathma's book here, and Lilith's going after him? My mother told me once, there are no coincidences where immortals are involved. We don't remember our mother, just the necromancers who took us in. And it's that reason Lilith must be stopped before she reaches Rathma. After discovering Rathma's Book of Resurrection hidden in the Herodric Vault, Nerel formulates a daring gambit to cross the Black Lake and pursue Lilith by resurrecting the only person who knows the spell, her recently deceased mother, who died by our hands no less. Meeting Nerel in the darkened way, we ask of the girl, what's the plan? I'll explain on the way. True to her word, she explains on the way down to the Black Lake below. Rothma's description of the ritual was difficult to understand. And the notes weren't much better. I think I know how to talk with my mother again. As we approach her mother's remains, she questions. The breeze coming from the Black Lake. Do you feel it? Let's hurry. We indeed do see something stirring ahead and return to Nairel so she can begin the ritual with our guidance. Mother? Mother, please. Can you hear me? My little magpie, it's you. I can save you from this, Mother. I promise. I can learn no, how to... No, stop. I can't be saved from my own mistakes. This body is only a husk. My spirit must pass on. And you must let me go. Mother, no. I need you. You need to move on, Magpie, without me. But I can help you one last time before I go. You have the divine blessing. Your blood is the necessary key. Open. We have to go. But... Do you think Lilith is even still here? It's been so long, I'm afraid she's won this one. Besides, I have to... take care of my mother. But it's not over yet. Not for you. Lilith was after Rothma. Find him. Learn why. I'll be back at the vault. All right. Crossing the Black Lake safely, we remark. How strange. Somehow this place feels like home. 
Again, we see the familiar mural of Rathma etched on the floor and press on. Moving past the obelisks, we're aghast to see bloody tendrils growing rampant like weeds, a horrific intermingling of necromancy and demonic taint. Entering the sanctum, we're shocked to see a spirit floating with the face of none other than Rathma, who greets. You are the last visitor to my sanctum. Though, you come too late, just as Lilith did before you. For it was my father, Inarius, who arrived here first. It unfolded as my visions foretold. How we hurtle towards the prophecy's end. Just as he appeared, he then fades into nothingness. And we remember the mad monk Orlan, who claimed Rathma had taught Inarius the prophecy. Inside the retreat, we find it is infected by a demonic scourge we vow to scrub from its halls. Rathma then reappears, guiding. It started in dreams. I saw shattered images of the end of Sanctuary. The scales of a great serpent carried these visions. And so I went to visit him. My and the serpent's thoughts met, and the fragmented future was mended together. I put it down in order, and the prophecy was born. Serpent? He's speaking of Tragul, the joint founder of our order. Fitting, a great dragon taught him about the unending cycle. Down inside the central chamber, we see the source of this blight and remark. I need to destroy the tumors to go any further. Hopping over a small chasm to our left, we encounter one of four bloody pustules. Tumors of hatred Lilith left in her wake to impede us. Deeper in the sanctum, we ironically find an angelic memorial to Rathma's father, Inarius. Perhaps a testament to his understanding that light and dark equally reside in each of us, despite his parents' hubris. Up the stairs, Rathma shares. The prophecy became my burden. There were others that knew. Ones that couldn't understand the nature of such a thing. I knew Inarius would be driven to interfere, believing that it was about him. He saw himself as a savior, piercing hatred's heart and hell. Learning that Inarius had vainly taken on the prophecy to be about his own personal vendetta, Rathma further serenades us as we eradicate more demons from his sanctum. So I locked the gates to hell. It was only a matter of time before Norris would discover what I'd done and come demanding the key. As we enter the depths of the central chamber to slay the final tumor of hatred and uncover the exit, we see a vision of a conversation with Inarius in which Rathma spoke of. Oh, you refuse to give me the key. You stand in the way of the savior. The holy blood in your veins should be boiling. Nothing you do will change the future I saw. I... I create my own destiny. And this prophecy of yours is just a small part of it. It is wider, beyond comprehension of ungrateful spawns like yourself. Destroying the tumor. Our path is laid bare. And we see a further interaction between the two. All you must understand is once I am victorious in hell, the high heavens will welcome me home 
where I belong. I wish it would be true, father. So, he wasn't lying about his plan. He believes killing Lilith is his personal ticket to heaven. Clearly, Rathman knows more than he's given credit for. As we descend the stairs to the exit, we have a strange sensation that someone is behind us. Curse this place. I'm being followed. Inside the Serpent's Passage, we look out over the abyss and marvel at the majesty of Balance's sanctum proper. Hopping over a final ledge, we're met with a harsh bark. Outsider! Beyond this chamber, there's nothing but death and mourning. How fitting it shall be your grave. This foul, cancerous demon must be responsible for the blight covering the outer sanctum. We're then caught in putrid puddles and spawns that sap our vitality. Dodging the numerous pools lest we be infected and succumb to their pernicious effects. We become increasingly desperate as the ground becomes more and more covered, and just as we think we will be overwhelmed, a familiar voice from above booms. Stand behind my barrier! We hide inside the bubble that protects us and are in awe, recognizing the blood-soaked armor resurrected by the faith penitent in Corvalar, but not the man in the suit. Together with the stranger, we work in unison, dodging the tidal waves of contaminated blood and tirelessly attacking the demon from its flank. Anytime Lilith's lament attempts to cast a shockwave of blood across the floor, the armored figure protects us and guides. Stand behind my barrier! After what seems an eternity battling the foul fiend, it finally explodes in a plume of rank sanguine fluid. Finding on its remains a legendary dagger, Kanjali of Plunging Darkness, and the dark deed done, we move to speak to our savior, the valorous knight penitent, donning father's grace, thinking perhaps we judged Anarius' church prematurely while having one of its own save our life. The hulking suit then lurches forward and the man rests on a knee so we can remove the helmet and we're aghast to see the gruesome scene inside. Vigo, who did this? I have done all that was asked. The pain is gone now. This was a just punishment. A stronger man would have refused Venard's bribe. Nerel. Nerel, is she safe? Yes, she is safe. Our meeting is no coincidence. I came here to help. Will you give this to her for me. I should never have taken it. He's so dark. I have repented. Do you think I was too late? No, not too late. The light has come to carry you home. Do you not see it, friend? Yes, yes, I see it now. They have come. You didn't need that armor to prove your worth, friend. Sickened by the impossible demands of even the loyal, 
we scoop up Vigo's protecting amulet that had kept us safe in the battle and is inscribed. Through penance alone, we let the Father's light enter our sinful souls. Lay down your life for his purpose, and you shall shine brilliantly with his glory. Holy words of the Father, Book 8. Anarius may not care about his children, but we vow Vigo's sacrifice shall not be in vain. Descending the stairs heading northeast, Rathma deems us ready to see Anarius' true face in the final vision. Give me the key to hell. I will not ask again. You don't need to. I saw a vision of the key lifted from my corpse under the watchful eyes of the great serpent in my sanctum. If you are chosen as you say, it will come to pass. Crossing the seal into Rathma's sanctum, there is no corruption on the stone walls where the dead are interred, and we question aloud. It's too quiet. Where is she? Passing the rows of the dead, we ascend the final stairs and see the corpse. Is that him? Is that Rathma? Somehow still preserved, we see beyond the body the eyes of Tragul watching what has transpired on the wall. Sobered by the order's loss, we return to his body marked by blood petals to somberly experience the events that had befallen the great necromancer. I don't know if you would have chosen to stand beside me in this new world, Rathma. But I would have saved your place just the same. And now, all that you might have been has been stolen from me. Stolen. Your sacrifice will not have been in vain. Disturbed twofold that it was Inarius who executed his son for the key, and Lilith that claimed it, we do not have the luxury of alerting our order. Instead, we teleport back to Yelesna, finding night has fallen inside the Mistral Woods. And with the path to the Herodric Vault clear, we find Nairel in front of a grave she had dug for her mother, which reads, Here lies Venard, who was ever searching. Now she sleeps at the Steps of Knowledge. Remembering the bracelet, we say to the girl, Vigo wanted you to have this. <sighs> He was a good man. And Lilith? Was she even there? Did you meet her? Already gone by the time I arrived. There is more. I can see that. Lilith took a key to hell off Rathma's body. <laughs> then it was all in vain. She's the only one who got what they wanted. Nairo. She came seeking the Haradrim of legend, seeking hope. She found neither. 
but her part in things was far from over. In truth, we would need her more than she needed us. Didn't seem that way at the time, though. For anyone. Inarius proved to be just as unreliable as I'd feared. His self-obsession had driven him to murder his son, Rathma. And from the corpse left behind, Lilith had taken a key to hell. Where would she use it? We could only depend on ourselves to find out. After learning Lilith obtained the key to hell off her slain son, Rathmus Corpse, killed by none other than his own father, the Angel Anarius, we decided best to seek out a more neutral ally in the war for Sanctuary's soul and thus cast our mind back to what Lorith Nar said of his former Herodric ally of the past, Donan. There is another Herodrim, Donan. His breadth of knowledge about demons is equal only to his hubris. Sounds like he could help us. Hmm. You should seek him out in Skosglan. Journeying northwest out of Kyovashad, we find the icy path of destruction has not spared the peoples of first the town of Menestad, then through the rocky goatmen infested silvered edgelands. By nightfall, we arrive to the region of the Lagland Fen, soaked through by rain, and it's via the Snaking Road do we find the Eldheim Keep nestled atop the mountain. Although we are somewhat surprised to be greeted by the Church of Light's armored knights, who we believed we left behind in the holy city to the south, friendly to a wandering necromancer, the guard directs. Light's blessing. If you have needs, check in with the watch commander. Stepping inside the city, a child crosses our path, urging. Come on, we're going to miss it. Curious, we follow to see an old timer recounting a local tale. The ash fell like rain, and Astaroth's mad laughter boomed like thunder. <gasps> Folk tried to hide, but the demon sniffed them out. He herded them into a cage of fire, and as he prepared to eat them one by one, whoosh! <gasps> a fierce wind blew out the flames. There, in the smoke, stood the three heroes. Even Astaroth trembled at the sight. First came Erida, calling down a storm upon the demon's head with music from her Talharpa. Then came Nefain, growling like a beast, slashing at Astaroth with fang and claw. And last came Donan. He plunged his hand into the demon's fiery chest and crushed the fiend's heart in his palm. Whoa! Astaroth let loose a cry that shook the forest to its roots. And then the monster crumbled into dust. Ha <laughs> ha! So ended the days of Ash. It seems Donan and his companions felled quite a formidable demon in this Astaroth, crushing a demon's heart in his hands. He must be a formidable warrior of great stature and strength. Deciding we have come to the right place, seeing a local Ebron leaning against a wall and ask, What is this place? Can you feel it? <sighs> Eldheim is hallowed ground, my friend. Blessed with Anaris' holy light. Just being here is a way of lifting my spirits. More sycophants dancing to Anarius' tune? Less than desirable. Tell me about Donan. Ah, uh, you'll never meet a man with a bigger heart. Came to see about getting my son some work, and he hired the lad as a clerk. Right on the spot! Don't know how I'll ever repay him, but I'll find a way. Rather magnanimous of him, but we've been fooled before. 
In the keep's centre, a nearby knight, looking soaked to the bone, beckons us over and warns. Ah, I beware the gossip around here, traveller. The Glen folk will find any reason to slander the cathedral. Despite all we've done to heal this broken land. To the west exit of the keep, we just so happened to bump into one of the disenfranchised Glen folk named Meredith, who indignantly prods. Oh no, you another one of his bootlickers. Don't in this, don't in that. People always going on about the man like he's a god among us. Oh, where was he when the knight's penitent scoffed at our offerings to the forest? Huh? Well, I'll tell you where. Up in his pretty keep, prancing about like the cock of the walk. Old guards don't seem to mix with the new, eh? Just below, we find a guard contingent. We then ask the officer, Commander Antger. I'm looking for a horadrum named Donan. An old friend of his sent me. At this hour, I'd wager he's in the keep. Check with the guard at the door. Turning to leave, we see in the city centre a prisoner in stocks named Athael, bemoaning her predicament. Pray for me, wanderer. I've asked Denarius for the strength to resist temptation, but I can't keep my hands from stealing. It's like they're possessed. Past the hanging corpses of vampires and miscreants alike, we speak to a man, Kajail, who similarly pleads. I swear on my soul, I'll never take Father Inarius' name in vain again. Just get me out of this thing, please. No wonder the locals feel the oppressive heel of the church's boot to be unwelcome, resting so heavy on their necks. Heading east through the main thoroughfare, we enter the keep telling the guard penitent, I have an urgent message for Donan. He's upstairs in the great hall with his son. Keep it quick. Entering Eldham's hall through its large double doors, we see below us a mural of three warriors comprising of two men and a female. Ahead, near a large statue is a stone mural plaque that explains, in honor of the great Herodric mage, Donan, and the brave druids Arida and Nefane, who vanquished the demon Astaroth and ended the days of Ash. Wasting no more time, we head up the staircase to our left to see the famous and decidedly stout Donan conversing with his son. Dad, I need to be out in the field with the other knights. Why the rush, my boy? You know, I, I found some of my old Horadric tomes. Stay here, and we can go through them together. I can take some with me. We have a visitor. Turning to Donan, curiously, we also spy the mark of the cathedral hanging around his plump neck and interrupt. This discussion is not over. Is there something you need? I have a message from Lorath. Well, there's a name from another life. <laughs> Has the old man finally come down from the mountain? With a warning. An ancient evil walks the land. The demon, Lilith. And you know this, how? Did you and Lorath discover something of interest? Perhaps this is all connected to what you saw, father. <clears throat> yes, I was just getting to that. There was an incident at my estate. Uh, probably best if we discuss it there. Go and have a look around for yourself. I'll meet you shortly, and then we can talk more. As for your request, <sighs> get to Braystag. And be careful. Stay close to the other knight's penitent. I will. Don't worry. Donan's young son, Joran, then dutifully trudges off, presumably heading to Braystag. And we ask, what's your relationship with Lorith? We haven't spoken much in recent years, but the two of us have history. We are brothers of the Haradrim. 
I'm probably the closest thing to a friend he has nowadays. Forging bonds is not exactly a strength of his, as I'm sure you've noticed. Seems Lorith quit and fell into a bottle, down in here, into the cathedral's loving embrace. We then query, can you tell me more about the incident? It occurred just the other day, in the dead of night. I thought it was a nightmare at first, but unfortunately that is not the case. I have some things to finish up here, and then we will talk more at the estate. Before we leave, I bring dark tidings from the Fractured Peaks. We learned my Order's leader, Rathma, was killed by none other than Anarius for the key to hell which Lilith now possesses. Rathma is dead. I brought the prophecy to Inarius so he could unravel its true meaning. I never expected he would kill his son because of it. And now the very thing he wanted, this infernal key to hell, is in Lilith's hands. It must relate to her search for Astaroth. Astaroth? But the tales say you slayed him. Donan, looking worried, doesn't answer, and we leave him with his thoughts to speak more, supposedly, at his estate. As we move to exit the hall, only now seeing the demon hanging below the trio, who must be the infamous Astaroth, the town's scourge during the days of Ash. Now, with more questions than answers, we leave the keep via horseback to the west, stopped by a Look local ex-soldier who begs. Spare some kindness for an old soldier? We then say to the beggar, Halworth, here you go. Ah, thank you, wanderer. What's your story? I was wounded in the days of Ash. I touched the demon's flame, thought I was being brave at the time. I can still feel the fire dancing across my hands, burning the skin away. Everything hurts to touch. Except coin. <laughs> Funny, many beggars report to suffer with the same affliction. Making our way north through the drenched encampment of the Church of Light's army, we find a small settlement of Firebreak Manor. We see the locals milling about, and up some stairs, Donan's steward, Wilfred, who dutifully greets our arrival. Welcome to Firebreak Manor, Traveler. I'm here about the incident. Donan gave me permission to look around. Incident? That was all he said. I must be referring to his study. Something unsettling transpired there. Entering the manor. We see it as an establishment devoted to scholarly pursuits and bears the insignia of Anarius' church. Searching for Donan's study, we find an empty bedroom. To the north, a large dining hall with an open fire, turned into a study room of sorts, as most of the house seems to be dedicated to. As such, the academics mostly ignore us, and we head west past a worker sweeping the floor and down into Donan's study below. Inside the study, we see a small library and Lilith's insignia smugly sits atop the church's rug. Touching the blood petals, we're ripped into a vision of Donan's personal nightmare. And 
and I know you, Talonan. Old, tired, each day a struggle to live up to your own legacy. What do you want with me? Astaroth. <laughs> She's dead. Astaroth cannot die. Not by your hand. What have you done with him? Away, demon. I deny you. You have grown so frail. I can make you the hero you were. Return to the darkness from whence you came. I said away! Signal horn. Coming through, we hear the horns of alarm blaring and realize how close Donan was to succumbing to Lilith's influence. However, she seemed to only abate after seeing the picture of Donan and his allies that felled Astaroth. Perhaps by coincidence, if there is such a thing, we also find an unfinished manuscript inside a stack of papers bearing the title The Fall of Astaroth. It appears to be an unfinished chronicle of Donan's battle against the demon. Numerous lines have been crossed out and rewritten. Strange as we've just heard the tale, presumably in its entirety, which is the cornerstone of Donan's celebrity in these parts. Wasting no more time, we head up the stairs and find the man who was sweeping dead in a heap before us. To our left, another slain worker in a pool of blood, and above is a goat man battling one of the guards. More of the blood clan set upon us. We then move room by room, eradicating the taint of the killer Khazra, finding all the academics deceased on our way. Outside the manor, we stumble into a grisly scene as the Blood Clan marauders have slaughtered the entire local populace. Some of the guard contingent battle with the swarming threat, but Donan is nowhere in sight. Cutting a bloody swath through their forces, we see their leader in the middle of the field, a massive blood clan Mauler, temporarily bound by Donan's Herodric magics. Aiding the Herodrum, we decimate the lingering goat demons. and turn to Donan amidst the carnage, who is shocked at the Khazra's audacity. Goat men. They've never dared come so close to the estate before. Perhaps they were drawn by Lilith's presence. I saw a vision of her in your study. What do you mean, a vision? I don't fully understand how, but it isn't the first time. Full of surprises, aren't you? No wonder you caught Lorath's attention. Well, now you understand my predicament. The daughter of hatred in my own home. She must be furious I cast her out. That painting on your wall. Who are the others in it? Why do you ask? Lilith seemed to leave after seeing them. The Fane and Arida. The druids who helped me slay Astaroth. Yes. Yes, I think you're onto something. I resisted her. So she might question them about the demon next. There are knights stationed in villages near the druids. If Lilith passed through, they must have seen her.
Post experiencing a vision of Lilith attempting to compel Donan to aid in her pursuit of the demon Astaroth, who, Donan, and two companions supposedly succeeded in felling, we successfully expel the Goatman from the aging Herodrum Donan's estate in her wake. Donan then explains. Goatmen. They've never dared come so close to the estate before. Perhaps they were drawn by Lilith's presence. I saw a vision of her in your study. What do you mean, a vision? I don't fully understand how, but it isn't the first time. Full of surprises, aren't you? No wonder you caught Lorath's attention. Well, now you understand my predicament. The daughter of hatred in my own home. She must be furious I cast her out. That painting on your wall. Who are the others in it? Why do you ask? Lilith seemed to leave after seeing them. The Fane and Arida. The druids who helped me slay Astaroth. Yes. Yes, I think you're onto something. I resisted her. So she might question them about the demon next. There are knights stationed in villages near the druids. If Lilith passed through, they must have seen her. Before heading to the nearby villages to question these knights of Lilith's whereabouts, we stop to ask Donan, what will you do now? I must see to the dead here. If I'd known they were in danger, I would have closed off the estate. Damn Lilith. She brought this on them. Lilith doesn't seem to believe that you destroyed Astaroth. Of course not. Demons are arrogant creatures. She would never accept that our kind could vanquish Astaroth. What troubles me is why she's looking for him. What does she want? Astaroth was from the realm of hatred. The place Lilith once called home. Perhaps therein lies an answer. I'll have to ponder this more. Tell me about Arida and Nathane. They were like brother and sister to me once. But life has taken us on different paths. Arida is consumed with her task of watching over the dead. I long for a time we can meet and discuss old histories like we used to. And Nafane, well, it's a shame he's become so bitter. Lives like a recluse, deep in the woods. Refuses to meet with me. Why did you bring the cathedral to Skos Glen? People either praise me or curse me for that decision. There is no middle ground. Druids like Nafane think I've given away their land to the Knights Penitent. What other choice do they think I had? After the days of Ash, we needed help to rebuild and protect Skosklen. The cathedral was ready and willing. Leaving Donan to begin the arduous task of salvaging what remains of his estate, we then see he has given us clues to his ex-companion's whereabouts, with Arida being somewhere near Braystag. However, we decide to first search to the east and check with the knights in Tiamere about Lilith and hopefully enlist the aid of the reclusive druid Nafane. Exiting the estate, we head east out of Firebreak Manor, passing through the Lagland Fen and to the south gate of the town of Karagar. Entering the muddy municipality, we turn to the local guards on clues of Lilith's whereabouts. By the light, I miss Eldheim. We slept in a proper barracks. Here, we share with the livestock. Seems the knights are none too fond of their station. Up the road, we find a local inn and its publican, Erulf, who we question. How's business? Oh, can't complain. Reckon that be a sin against the father. How are things with the cathedral? Well enough, so long as Donan speaks for them. He knows the Glen, and bled for it too. 
cathedral's lucky to have him. We'll uh, leave it at that. What do you know of this horned woman? Oi, I'll have none of that dock in here, you get me? Folk are skittish enough as it is. The townsfolk are frightened, and rightly so. Near the fire, we find a guard of duty. A noon. <coughs> oh, so strong. What is this drink? <laughs> it's just Glen Beer, love. Our children drink it at supper. Scouring the village, we see tensions are high between the locals and the knights, with their faiths being at odds with one another. I saw you pass Vasily's tree. You kicked a runestone on purpose, you steel-plated bastard. And what if I did? To the east, villagers gather to overlook a blocked-off lower part of the city as a man named Balak reminisces. I lived down there when I was a boy. You should have seen how green it was. How proud we were. In the center of the village, rumors of Lilith seep into local gossip. There's a whole mess of knights up in Braestek waiting to buy our green. Forget the damn green. I ain't hauling it nowhere with that she-demon about. To the northeast, we find the chief's meeting hall, where villagers gather to have their grievances heard. If you need a word with the chief, get in line. I've stood here long enough to grow roots. At the end of the hall, is a mighty iron brazier that the chieftains of Scotsglen gather round to hold council, and we overhear. Talk of this horned woman is stirring up old fears. It's no good for the market. Folk need to see their chief ain't afraid. I take a letter to Donan. I would have his opinion on the matter. So the chief defers to Donan's council. It appears the Horodrum really is the glue holding this shaky alliance of druids and Anarius' followers together. Outside the hall, a merchant named Leosa leans against her cart and clucks. Women with horns. <laughs> Never heard such mewling over rumors. Donan will have it cleared up soon enough. To the west, we find the church's base of operations, and the knight commander, Romark, complains. You want to know suffering? Try planning patrols around every sacred pebble and twig in this city. Speaking of scared, we find at the north end of town an ancient oak carved with runes lovingly adorned, clearly a place of worship for all who practice the old ways. A man to our right, Eolan, scoffs. Woe to the demon that sets foot in the moors. Nafane will have its head. Nobody's seen him. Just that wolf of his, wandering about on its own. So, Nafane has a familiar we should look out for. Interesting. By the tree's base, we find a man named Albard, the tree's keeper. She was raised here by Vasily himself. First of the druids. He planted scores of oaks just like her all over the glen. Only two remain. Departing the town by its western exit, we stop by the stables and the children sing. The demon set the glen ablaze. Dunnan and the druids made it pay. The days of Vash have gone away. But ne'er forget their passing. Attempting to pass through the lower city, a knight blocks. The lower city is closed to travelers. The father invites you to enjoy the city proper. Heading back through the upper city, forced to take the eastern path, we get a final spot of Skosglen hospitality proper from a local prisoner in the stocks. If you ain't got Milus, you can pass right off. Northeast, we battle through the infested daughter peats, swarmed by pestilence thick as a cloud. Finding our way into the small hamlet of Tiamere. Saw that? Overgrown vermin's broke another trap. We see a hunter, Ianan, kneeling over a fetid deer corpse who promises. <sighs> Damn. I thought you were clean. Try and find some use for you, little one. Corrupted or no, 
I'll no let your death be for nothing. Realising this must be Lilith's taint, we waste no more time and head west to a local guard, tending to a man bleeding profusely. The whole forest has gone mad. We're not going out there again. We then ask the night captain, Razia, have you seen a demon pass through here? There's a horned woman in the moors, spreading corruption, if that's what you mean. Yes. She's after the druids who vanquished Astaroth. Ah, that madman Nefane lives out there. We already tried checking on him. Got as far as Boglinstone Circle, and then the druid's wolf companion appeared and bit one of my men. I'm already short on knights. Not going to risk what I have left on some bastard who hates the cathedral. Why does Nefane hate the cathedral? Nefane sees us as intruders stealing from his land. But how does he expect us to survive? We need timber to build, ore to forge our weapons, wild game to eat. Truth is, I think his hatred for us goes back to Donan. They were friends once, but they had a falling out. What happened between him and Donan? Not sure, but I met the druid once. I was riding through the moors minding my own business when he came up and spoke in the beast tongue. Caused my horse to throw me. I broke my leg. Hasn't been the same since. I don't care what happened between them. I'm just glad Donan came to his senses and broke it off with that brute. Looks like we will encounter some hostility from Nefane. Better start our search in this Boglin stone circle. Before leaving, we attempt to understand this strange corruption of nature the villagers experience. Starting with a local boy, Afan, cutting fish just above us. This looks all right, Ma. Do you think we can eat it? I'll try anything at this point. Clean it like I taught you. Bring it here and I'll hang it. it has to be better than these fetid fish. Inside the local inn, a man named Hamish enjoying his libations declares. Ah, people whine about the smallest things. So, the harvest sent as bountiful as before. It happens. Cycles or something. We then ask of the local innkeeper, Siona. This town seems to be struggling. Only a matter of time before the people of this town will move on. Even the ancestors won't answer our pleas. Do you get many visitors? We don't get many travellers anymore. Folk are afraid to come near the moors, let alone Tiermare. They say we're cursed. Anything happening in town? Your patronage is appreciated, Wanderer, but you won't find much here. Some things tainted the land. She won't provide for us like she used to. To her left, we find a list of out-of-stock items. It stands as a timeline for the decay of the land as the items change from obscure ales to more common items like deer meat, fish stock, and honey. Beneath the beds, we see an open ledger with angrily scrawled notes detailing places that no longer have game, are too dangerous, or are so tainted it isn't worth setting traps anymore. In the center of town, we see what must be the twin to Vasily's tree in Karagar, a druidic altar adorned with painted runes that serves as a place of worship for the old ways. Despite only catching a few clean fish, some souls still choose to offer their day's work to the ancestors. To our left, a druid, Anira, prays. Ancestors, spirits, Hear my pleas. The land, she is sick, and we desperately need timely intervention from your gracious hands. Heal our beloved Loch, our once prosperous lands. Moving through town, we hear several villagers discuss the blight. I remember when these waters were teeming with life. That seemed to have never run out. Perhaps they were too greedy. Is this our punishment? The lake ain't providing like she used to, Pa. You always said the key to fishing was patience, but it's been weeks since I last caught anything worthwhile. At the eastern gate, 
we also overhear a couple who are ready to abandon the town. Leave it, Mary. You don't know what's been infected. The lighter our cart, the faster we can leave these forsaken lands behind us. I've lived here my whole life. I can't just pick up as easy as you. We'll make home wherever we are, love. This is just a place. A place that's dying and cursed. It's in the main thoroughfare. A local sitting by a fire, Driston, gives us our first solid lead. Your day's hunt has been blessed. It'll be a good one. I saw the wolf this morning when I was out setting traps. Locked eyes with him. He's still healthy? Aye. Far still as white as the moon. I'll take any good omen I can find. So, the white wolf, Nefane's familiar, is nearby, and only seems to attack members of the church. Riding east through the plague-infested Daughter Peats and climbing a sheer cliff, we discover the aforementioned Boglan Stone Circle, which is troublingly smattered with blood. Looking out over the cliff, past the wooden dwelling, we see the blood-soaked grove below. Next to the tent is a stone carved with a message welcoming travelers of the forest, where they became one with nature. But something has been written over it in dried blood. A warning we could almost hear echo in our skull. Cathedral dogs not welcome. Easy, my friend. I'm not one of the knights. We then feel a presence stalking us and see the white wolf appear. I'm looking for your master, Nefane. Think you could help me with that? Good boy. Lead the way. The wolf then bounds off down the southern path, and we dutifully follow in tow, swatting off the stinging swarms that infest the daughter Peets. We're then met by a trio of festering blood maggots and a roaming lichen terror in the blood veil. See the flora covered by a bloody taint that makes the rivers run red. We then fend off a bear and all manner of diseased creatures, driven mad by whatever unseen miasma that has taken hold. We then ward off feasting mangy hounds, seeing the armor of a slain knight penitent. The helms are old dented from violent blows and spotted in dry blood, but we're no closer to their assailant. In the heart of the moors, the wolf guides us up a cliff face as the rest of the forest's rabid inhabitants descend upon us. Scrambling up the slippery slope, we hear low moans coming from a tree ahead and are aghast at what we find. Oh. 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 Nefane. <gasps> what? Who? <gasps> oh. Who are you? <gasps> you stink of Dunan. But he is not here. <gasps> Coward! He feared Lilith might seek you out. He was right. Oh, yes. Oh, she put me here. I am beyond saving. All you can do for me is find the demon. I will help you. Go to the north. She is there. 
warning something. There is still time to stop her. Fearburn will accompany you. Hurry! Leaving Nathane's eviscerated remains strung up on the tree, we make haste with his companion, Fiorban, in pursuit of Lilith. However, we discover at the cave's entrance, Lilith has barred our entrance and we mutter. A barrier of blood. There must be a way to bring it down. Searching the veil, we locate two unnatural growths, which we exhume like the tumorous protrusions they are. After which, we attack the profane clot that blocks our path. And enter the untamed thicket. Inside the pustule-filled cavern, we see more of Lilith's marks that guide. Under old boughs hangs the heart fruit, swollen with hatred. Let it burst forth and flood the streams and burrows. Heart fruit? Is that a connotation for Nefane's blood that has sullied the soil below? Another vision that imparts. In this crimson cradle, let there be born an amalgam of rage. So, Lilith is using Nefane's blood and rage to create something. To the north, she further explains. Let its anger ever burn, until it has devoured the whole of this wretched land. At the end of the cave, we discover the corrupted spawning ground. It's then we see something gestating in the pool below, with no sign of the Daughter of Hatred. Nafane's blood, it all flows here. Instead, a pack of werewolves emerge to defend Lilith's prize. After the fiends are fallen, we find we are too late, as a three-headed dog is born of blood, howling as unholy life is breathed into its lungs. Fjorben helps us fight this crimson foe as it leaps at us, gnashing its teeth and biting in a fit of rage, mirroring Nefane's own at the profane trespassing of the Church of Light dogs. Wearing the newborn pup down by expertly manipulating its own blood as crystallized shards are flung at its own exposed hide, sensing danger. Lilith beckons to a new pet. Come to me, spawn of hatred. We have tender meat to hunt. <sighs> Damn it. Wounded, but not dead. Where has that creature gone? With the dog alive and running, we scoop up the poultry items in its wake, returning to Nafane bound to the tree to advise him of the grim news. No, she was already gone. And I fear she has taken a piece of you with her. A beast born from your blood. Oh, it's my fault. What part did you have in this? A pact with Lilith to help me destroy the knights. Penitent. In return for what? I told her, where Astaroth is hidden, held high. 
Why? In her presence, I lost control. Rage consumed me. Oh, there's only one thing to do now. End the corruption. Post witnessing the profane remains of Nefane, we gain insight into Lilith's plan to unleash a terrible beast upon the citizens of Skosglen. And so we make haste to Donan's former remaining companion, the druid Arida, in hopes we find her before Lilith does. With the Knights of the Church of Light rumored to know Lilith's whereabouts, we aim to gain intel in the town of Braystag. Entering its soiled streets, we see a nearby knight named Yethim who declares, I will send scores of spirits to their rest. With the light beside me, I am untouchable. The light will protect your soul, but not your hide. Remember that well. Spirits? What is he talking about? In the center of town near a druidic totem, we overhear more knights conversing with a local druid. Wood will bend like grass in the wind when the spirits arrive. Physical barriers alone will not be enough. And your talismans and dirt scrolling will give the dead greater pause. Turning to the ginger-haired chieftain Asgail, she remarks. You picked a fine time to visit Breistag, Wanderer. The whetstones are singing. Hearts are pounding. Sweet music for a red day. Donan sent me. <laughs> At least you're not another night penitent. At least? It is us who will protect this village with our lives. Let it be. <laughs> <sighs> there is an ominous fog uphill. Mad spirits emerge from it. They'll be here shortly. Are you here to help us ward them off? I seek a demon who passed through. <sighs> so, that's what it was. <sighs> well, this day keeps getting better, doesn't it? The demon went uphill to Erida's domain. But unless you want to join the spirits, I wouldn't go there. It's best you stay with us. I can lead you to Erida. Out of the question. I'll be safe. Donan puts his trust in this traveler. So shall we all. Tell me when you're ready to move. Mind what lurks in the fog, and return as soon as you can. Donan will have my head if anything happens to you. In speaking to the diminutive diplomat, Yorin, we ask, tell me about Erida. She's a legend. One of the druids who fought alongside my father to defeat Astaroth. I was raised on stories of her wisdom and courage. Then we can use her help against Lilith, no doubt. Let's go. The roads are thick with fog, so the fastest route to the hills is east, through the Weeping Cairns. With Yorin tagging along, we seek to gather intel before wandering into the deadly fog and see a knight, Roxana, below. Light watch over us. We live in dark times, and I do not know that we'll see the light any time soon. To the right is a druidic ornament, latticed branches woven to withstand strong winds of the hills. Another form of protection for the locals. Superstition is strong here. 
On the balcony of the hut, we see what appears to be the thorn beasts meandering below, awaiting our arrival. In the middle of the town, a knight kneeling in prayer. To their left, a well-loved prayer book sits among the other knight's possessions. Prayers won't protect them from what's to come. To the northwest, a local woman, Beatrice, cooks by a fire and reflects. The knights penitent think they understand what's out there. Think they're lights enough to face it. They're in for a shock. Just below, a knight, Nadalia, seems to agree. How is sparring and training with dummies supposed to prepare me for fighting ghosts? What if they turn me into one? Crossing the town's waypoint to the southwest, we find the local inn. Inside, the innkeeper, Gregan, stands and we inquire. What do you have to offer? We've got ale. Bread for you too, since you're not a knight penitent. No bath, though. Go to Kerrigar if you want that sort of service. Are you worried about the fog? We've got folks up there, in Clochin. We're worried about them. He wouldn't be. Do you trust the knights? They think by flashing Yorin's pretty young face we'll put our fate in their hands. <laughs> but Glenfolk have always taken care of our own. Sitting at a dining table by an open fire, a man, a railed, can be overheard discussing. Can't hunt like we used to. Wasn't safe before. Damn deadly now. Moving to leave the town, we make our way up the road and spy a small local testing a knight's patience as he works. Mama says that tying her hair into the wards makes him stronger. And further up sits a guard, Egan. Ah, good. They're burning the pine resin. I hope it will keep us safe. It always has before. Trust in the old ways. Mounting our horse, we exit the town via the north into the gloomy Isle of Whispers and Urine Stars. You look like someone who's seen the world. I hope I can do the same one day. What's holding you back? My father. You've seen how he is. I need to persuade him just to let me leave the bloody keep. We barely make it through the Isle unmolested, only to find a local flailing in attempts to ward off a mob of Blood Clan marauders. To the northwest, we scale the mountainous ridge onto the Valley of Passing and find what appears to be the entrance to the Weeping Cairns. Hoping this Arida and her keeping of the dead will see a kinship in us as necromancers, perhaps she will lend her aid. Yorin, reading the runes, then discovers. It's sealed, but there's writing. They look like old druid runes. The song of wind. The howl of... Oh no. They're coming. Hurry. All right. E a le. E a le du gro a ni do la no re do. It's a chant. The chant will open the way. Light, protect us. Hold them off. Enraged, banshees and vengeful spirits spring forth from their resting place, attempting to overwhelm us. As Yorin continues to chant, the spirit's leader, Runa the Anguished, untethered itself from its resting place to be met with a myriad of their kind's corpses exploding into fragments that fell them where they float. Un It worked. Something's rousing the spirits from their rest. We should make haste within. Unsure why the spirits Aradise in charge of were so unruly, we cautiously enter the can with considerable consternation. Inside the can, we hear a distinct rustling to the east, and Yorin says as we're set upon. The dead are stirred here as well. Yet, Erida's absence gives me greater concern. We then arrive in an eastern chamber, and the boy remarks. This chamber is just how my father described it. 
You've never been here. This doesn't seem right. Though none involve the restless dead, Erida would not have barred the path of the dead like this. The spirits should be free to roam within the earth. Lilith. Strange. The door is locked with an earthen seal. What was it my father said about this? Wardstones, that's it. If you bring me one from the nearby cairns, I think I can open the way. How do you know so much about the druids? Father always respected their beliefs and customs. It was important that I grew to understand his admiration. Whenever he talked about coming here to meet Erida, I saw a light in his eyes that rivaled any fire. The two were close, though... I think time has seen them drift apart. Was your mother a druid? No, but this was her land. She was something of a scholar, preserved local customs and rituals. She passed when I was young, and... Well, most of what I know about her is through her writings. Looking at the empty rune standing stone, we see a crucial object is missing and begin our hunt for the orb-shaped stone in a western passage. Unsurprisingly, Lilith has left the dead to guard the overgrown wardstone altar. Contending with corpses, we hoist the rune stone on our back and make our way to place the stone in its intended resting place. Leidal Hal il Oskal. Oh, that did it. Maybe this will ease the dead. It's a start, at least. To the north, we come across a blood-stained druid altar, and Jorin realizes. Demonic markings. Lilith's been here. Something's written on the altar. By stone and root, by tears and pain, we bear this flame that must remain. Dead eyes stained with ash and ember, cursed are we who must remember. Ah, an elegy written by Eretha. This... This is a memorial to all who died fighting Astaroth. <sighs> The weak perish. All us forgotten. Wait, we we are not your enemy. Then disembodied voices rise in forms of towering, wretched, vengeful wildwood. Their gnarled branches twisted as is their demonic purpose. Lilith, she must be bending these heroes to her will. Erida would never stand for it. Unless... Oh, something has happened to her. We don't know that yet. Come on. This must be the cairn of the Elders. So much... defiled. Demonic scars upon their grave and... Druid runes to rouse the dead. These runes... The delicate touch. This is Erida's work. Why would you be aligned with the demon? I have seen others fall under Lilith's control. Erida was sworn to keep the dead at peace. What do we do? We'll need to stop her. Uh, right. Solutions are found ahead, not behind, as Father says. With the grim reality that Arida may have fallen under Lilith's sway, just as Nefane had succumbed, we exit the passage to the mountain's top and into the drizzly mountain heights. Departing the cairn, we hear a scream carried on the wind as does Yorin. Did you hear that? Something screaming in rage ahead. The path to the north we find blocked by an unsettling fog that hangs against the movable roots jutting out of the path. 
and to the west, the source of the screams. Risen remains, propped up by a gnarled tree, by some form of twisted druidic magics. Oh no. That was one of the revered dead from the Cairns. Returned to the worms. May they find rest. Arlo! Did you think we'd so easily join the dead, lad? How did you find your way up here? Through the Cairns. Through them? Mighty brave of you. And mighty foolish. Turning to Arlo and his daughter, we ask, what happened here? Erida came through with a horned woman. Not her normal company, to be sure. Ah. Lilith. They headed towards Solitude, the top of the hill. The sound of Erida's Talharpa carried with the wind. And then, this madness began. If your aim is to follow them, you won't get far with all this fog. It seems to be drawn to the risen remains. We spotted others in the hills before this one tore from the earth. I'll stay here and protect these two. The fog is too near to leave them undefended. The stones defend us, lad. I remember when you were still a... I'm staying, Arlo. <laughs> Stubborn like your father. That will keep you alive. Concerned, we ask, before contending with the defiled dead placed by Arida, now in league with Lilith. Concerned, we ask, why do you stay here? Much safer than stumbling through all this fog. These huts are more than just stone. My ancestors blessed them to ward off storm and spirit alike. When the wicked wind starts to moan, Best to shelter in the safety of stone. <sighs> right you are, lass. Where is everyone? I told them to stay put, but they all fled when the fog crept in. I'm sure they're safe. They know these hills better than anyone. But fear has a way of making the wise into fools. How do you know Yorin? I'm a friend of his father. Met him in the days of Ash. Saved his life, actually. <laughs> if you asked him, he'd probably claim he saved mine. Hasn't come up this way in a long while, but he used to. Now and then I'd even go and share a pint with him in his fancy house. <laughs> That's how I came to know Yorin. We then check with the young girl, Maisie. Are you alright? I have enough food to last us weeks. Sharpen my blade, too, in case any spirits get too close. You taught her well. Not so much to learn from someone like me. The truth is, she's the reason I've lasted so long up here. Leaving the trio, we are curious about their methods of warding in the stone huts and find a piece from Maisie's journal discussing Arida. Arida came for a visit. Dad gave her salt and water. She thanked him, then went on her way. I wanted to go with, help her sing to the dead, but Dad didn't let me said that we share the hills with the druid, but her work is not our work. In order to dispel this vile mist, we find and destroy not one, but two of the risen remains haunting the decidedly aptly named Wailing Hills. is thinning now. I should check on Yorin. With the deadly fog lifted, we easily break the corrupted roots barring a path to the village. The roads are clear now. We need to get to Braystack. It's safer there. We've lasted this long and survived worse. You've been fortunate. Agreeing with Yorin, we apprise. If Lilith is here, you are still in grave danger. Braystag, swarming with those cathedral gobshites. Please, Arlo, just for now. Maybe we should go with him, Dad. <sighs> well, the ale would be welcome. 
I will deal with Erida and Lilith. See them safely to Braystag. I... I will. Thank you. As the trio depart, we fix our sights to the north of the mountain. Solitude. Riding up the windswept trail, we hear a disembodied voice carried across the wind. Have you seen the signs as I have? Erida! Hell is coming, and my people are not ready to face it. Not yet. But you, you are already strong. <sighs> Come forward. Searching for the druid among the stone circle atop the hill, and turning about toward the sound of the Tal Harper's hypnotic tune, we find the aging druid, legs crossed, playing an instrument excitedly, looking over the valley below. Only one of us will walk away from this. So let's enjoy the storm a moment. Ah, nature's music. The dead are killing your people as we speak. Some will die, yes. But that is the way of nature. It is a crucible. It devours the weak and makes the strong stronger. And those who survive, they will save this land from hell. You've fallen for the demon's lies. No, no. This is my choice. Lilith only granted me the power to do what must be done. And what did you give her? All things must be earned in the wilds, even knowledge. Prove yourself, and you will have your answers. Arida then calls down lightning, and we dodge just in time, flinging a blood spear at her as she vanishes into the storm. Dodging deadly gusts of wind and lightning alike, we frantically keep moving with one misstep potentially spelling our doom. Mid-fight, Arida calls upon the dead to protect her, and we turn our attention on them briefly. Using the dead's twisted remains as tools of their fallen ward's downfall, flinging a final shard of blood in her chest that's crystalline form embeds there, she lurches over in pain. Arida perishes atop her apex of misery. <laughs> The stronger prevails. So be it. What did you give Lilith? I told her of the wards around Astaroth's prison. How to break them. Why? <sighs> My people have forgotten what it took to defeat Astaroth. Oh, they must learn again. If they cannot vanquish him, how can they stand against the full might of hell? With the rogue druid Arida dealt with, who fell under Lilith's spell, we speak to a young Yorin and Braystag, saying, 
I found Arida. And? She is at peace now. I hope. I... I never thought it would turn out like this. Heroism and sacrifice are often entwined in the course of fate. My mother's words. I must tell father what has happened. What Lilith has done. We cannot let her destroy anything else. Heading south through the torrents of rain to meet with Donan, we're bothered by stinging swarms, dismounting to rid ourselves of the nuisance, and not noticing the missing beggar who once sat here as a blood clan impala's spear whistles by our ear. Shocked that the Khazra are so close to the keep, we look up through the murky black of night in horror to see embers pouring down as the keep burns and marauders execute a straggler. It seems the knights penitent have fallen to the demonic horde that have claimed the keep, and we realize Lilith has beaten us to Donan. Blocked. I'll have to find another way inside. You there! Come here! It's only to the south behind a bloody barricade do we find the remnants of survivors. And ask the commander, where is Donan? The horned woman, the beast, nothing could stop them. Not our steel, not our prayers. <sighs> Listen to me, I must find Donan. Where is he? Some... somewhere inside. Dead, like the rest, for all I know. The light has forsaken this place. With that grim assessment, we begin our search, perhaps in vain, to find Donan inside Eldheim Keep's ruins via a door that leads to the Great Hall via the stormed battlements. Below the stairs to the right, we find a lone survivor, Donan kneeling over the fallen knights. Light, cleanse these faithful servants of their sin. Bring them peace in death. Bloody miracle you made it here in one piece. Lilith and that beast tore right through us. Could have killed me too. But she left me untouched. She's toying with me. She wants me to... Watch her destroy everything I've built. Damn it! Did you see Yorin the way you came? No. She hasn't won yet. There's still a chance to stop her. <clears throat> but I can't do it alone. I'm with you. Where is she now? An old chamber beneath the keep. That's where Astaroth is. I didn't vanquish him like the stories say. I imprisoned him in a soul stone. It was a last resort. I built Eldheim over the stone to contain its evil. I've spent my life watching over it, keeping it a secret, so Astaroth would never hurt anyone again. Not even my son knows. I'm sorry for hiding this from you before, but I couldn't risk a stranger finding out the truth. We should get moving. Follow me. If you didn't see Yorin outside, we'll search on the way. When was the last time you saw Yorin? We were discussing what happened to Erida. 
And then Lilith stormed the keep. I ordered some guards to escort him out of Eldheim. I should have stayed with him. Searching the burning barracks for Yorin, one by one, we begin to find the bodies of Yorin's guards. One of Yorin's protectors. The last of my son's guardians. Come, quickly. Yorin's mace is here. I told them to get out. Maybe he and the knights tried to stop Lilith. Could she have taken him somewhere? What possible reason would she have? He means nothing to her. We need to move. The way to Astaroth is through here. On the second fallen night, we discern. One of the guardians done in order to watch over Yorin. Just a broken corpse now, marred by claw marks. Yorin's mace sits atop the body, but there is no other sign of the boy. Making our way down the earthen passage, we're confronted by Lycan questioning. Why is Lilith so eager to find Astaroth? I've been asking myself that same question, but I'm as much in the dark about it as you are, I'm afraid. They share a connection, though, and a strong one at that. Astaroth is a guardian of Lilith's father, Mephisto, the Lord of Hatred. Pondering on Lilith's relation to this Astaroth, and why he wouldn't attack her where she stands as a presumable outcast of hell. We find ourselves chasing behind Donan as he speeds up rather remarkably with his stout legs heading towards the tomb. Here it is. The Soul Stone Chamber. Lilith has what she wanted all this time. She took the stone. No sign of Yorin, though. We need to find him. With the Soul Stone tomb plundered, we are too late, but pause to see Lilith's mark and a chance to glimpse where she is headed. But what we find is horror beyond words. Mighty Astaroth, the charred duke himself, confined to a cage. What a pity. Daughter of hatred. I have an offer. You will grant me safe passage to a place I am no longer welcome. <sighs> In exchange, I will give you freedom. And more. <laughs> Donan's progeny. His pride and joy. <laughs> Your retribution. If you give me what I want. <laughs> Was it another vision? Did you see Yorin? Yes. He... Lilith... stabbed him with the Soul Stone. My son? I'm sorry, Donan. This... This isn't over. I know what I... No! There's still time. You have to trust me. Meet me in the Great Hall. Shaken by the revelation as is Donan, we comply with his wishes, meeting him in the Great Hall standing by his fallen comrades. We then stop to ask, why did you build Eldheim over such a dangerous thing? I... I had to. 
Even after I warded the stone with Nafain and Erida, the demon's power gradually seeped out. So, I turned to the cathedral. Eldheim itself is a, a giant capstone, blessed with Inarius' light. It subdued the evil below. It... It... None of that matters now. It was Arida and Nefane that told Lilith about the stone. Traitors. They did this to me. To my boy. And finally, what do we do now? We must find Yorin. As quickly as possible. Uh, I realize how hopeless this all seems, but I've spent half my life studying the Soul Stone. I know its nature. It will take time for Astaroth to overpower my boy. I taught him well. Even now, he, he's resisting the demon's influence. It, they'll be close by. Karagar, perhaps. Yeah. All those innocents to burn will excite Astaroth, make him fight harder to, 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 to take control. Lilith has what she wanted from Astaroth. Why would she linger here? I... I don't know. Donan has not given up hope for his young son and has guided us to Astaroth's perceived new stomping ground, the nearby city of Keregar, where he can burn and torture its inhabitants. Admittedly, with little hope, we dutifully follow Donan's direction, arriving at Keragar from the southwest, and we see the town is already set ablaze as a local guard, Brenta, shouts. More water! Wet that wood over there! Don't let the embers catch! Desperate to find Yorin before Astaroth takes hold of the boy, we begin scouring the town, covered in a blanket of ember and smoke, obscuring our vision as we bump into a man tending his horse named Liam. Easy, easy, my girl. I'm scared too. Please, just need to get us out of here. At the Eastern Gate, a guard, Cargan, cowers. No, I can't fight. I won't. She's here. She's here! In the middle of town, Finch inhales the smoke and begs. Father, <coughs> Narius! Please, forgive us. Save us from the demon's fire. To the northeast, near the chieftain's hut, we find two merchants cowering neath their carts and cast our minds back to their scoffing at the idea of the very real threat of the demoness Lilith. Women with horns. <laughs> Never heard such mewling over rumors. Inside the chieftain's hall, an injured Rosine endures. Muskins chowed to the bone. But I feel nothing. Why do I feel nothing? Moira, the healer, casts incantations at the old mood point and admits... They look to me for help. Bones crushed, flesh melted by Vasily. The smell. I'm not sure I can take much more. Departing the desperate scene, we find past the dead, the chieftain Cranock, where we expect, by the druid's revered tree praying... Ghosts of my kindred spirits of the wild, forgive my weakness. Rise to our desperate need. We then see, just to the north, villagers gathering to look at the lower city burning. Though we see movement, we cannot make out what is down there due to the shrouding effects of the smoke. Heading west for a better vantage point, Balak cowers. It's Astaroth! He's returned to finish us! Making our way west, we then find a boy lost and sobbing in the street. Mama! Papa, where are you? His parents, unfortunately, are nowhere in sight. Instead of any formal guardians, do we spy among the ashes a cruel reminder of the original trio of heroes' folly, as a plaque reads, Behold Arida, Nefane and Donan, Enders of the days of ash. Let their victory remind thee of the light we share between us. Circling back, we find Mikhail had found his father's corpse. 
We then bound down the muddy path, vowing we will do everything we can to reunite at least one father with their child this day, as the guard Dalen informs. It was a beast. A, a hound of hell. Down the northwestern slope, in chase of presumably the bloody hound we'd seen prior, we come across a burning stable, and Betris sobs over a charred corpse. Kaina, get up! We have to go now! I can't leave without you! At the gate to Lower Kerrigar, we find Donan still as a statue, save for a few words he manages to stammer. There. They're here. Yorin can resist. He's strong. Donan then darts full-heartedly towards the gate, and we are forced to follow. Yorin! He has been waiting for you. Where? Where is he? <sighs> Come forth. My boy. Three of our villagers immediately flail towards us, burned alive, exciting Astaroth as he rides his great Cerberus that breathes fire as he wrenches on the large chains that bind them. The demon then calls forth colossal meteors in an effort to expunge us from his new playground. Forced to flee, we use the Hellhound's own blood, born of Nefanes, to injure it and the rider above. Agitated, the charmed duke turns his mount to new prey. Leaping to the north as we follow close on his heels, trailing behind his path of destruction as more villagers burn and the demon becomes visibly invigorated by the carnage. Disturbed by our defiance in the face of the inferno called forth, the hellhound calls its own minions to surround us in a war of flaming attrition. Enraged at the loss of his minions, Astaroth further proves he is still vulnerable in his new vessel, as he scampers south atop his steed to feed on the misery of more of the seared citizens of Skosglan. Leaping debris, we follow in tow. The fires inside us now a raging inferno, as scores of villagers burn and we find scant safe ground to stand on. It's here. Astaroth makes a final stand, but despite the slews of hellhounds and werewolves sent to fell us, we use their corpses as explosive shrapnel to barrage the demon and his pet with bone and shards of crystallized blood alike, until he finally succumbs to our bloody onslaught. Donut then rushes to the remains of his boy, 
and we respectfully watch on. Leaving Donan to mourn, we scoop up the items found on the fallen amalgam of Rage's corpse, a yellow fur-lined robe enhancing our defense, and a legendary sword, the vicious bone-ridged blade, Edgemaster's spinal. Sheathing the blade, we re-enter the flaming remains of Kerrigar and check on the villagers, wary that Lilith may still lurk in the area. Noticing the absence of the cathedral's knights, and so we start in the ruined stables. Damn devil, burned all my animals. I can't feed a city on mud and straw. By the western gate, the guard Dalen scorns. We should be corpses for trusting Donan and his bloody cathedral. By the smithy, a fed up Anag declares. No more cities. We are taking what the fire's left and heading to the country far as we can get. Inside a hut to the east, featuring a druidic shrine, Lena questionably concedes. Nathian was right. We've forgotten who we are. Only the wilds can heal us. By the east gate, Elsie wonders of the church. Where are the knights gone? After all the promises, they just left us. Inside the chieftain's hall, the chief is nowhere to be seen. And we instead find Moira the healer who thanks. Don't look so grim. We're a sorry sight, but we're alive. Thanks to you, I hear. Searching for the chief, we first stop by the drinking hall and find Baird and his brother discussing the dead. We've been clearing debris through the night. We haven't found a living soul. I know, brother. But we stop when they're all found and buried proper. By Vasily's tree, we find the chief Cranock who tempers. I saw what you and Donan did for us, what he had to do to his son. It is a cruel fate for an old warrior to see his legacy perish. He did not deserve it. And to the west, an optimistic Brewers apprises. Quite a chore ahead of us. Got to pick up the pieces. Put him back better. Heading back to the inn, we ask the publican, Errol, how are the people holding up? Well enough, as long as we don't stop moving. Any word from the cathedral? Last I heard, the bastards took a beating down at Eldhain Keep. Seems the rest tucked tailed and fled back south. Good riddance, I say. Pausing as we see something foreign scurry around the room, we inquire. Where did that cat come from? A little lady just wandered in, covered in soot, and made herself at home. Seems to like Glenbeer well enough. In the center of the city, we find the trio of hero statues destroyed as locals scarf. That thing was Astaroth, plain as stone. Donan swore it was dead. That may be. But I saw him. He lost everything trying to stop it, including his boy. Upon closer inspection, the statues of the former heroes of Scots Glen stand in dishonor, defaced by the curses of an angry mob. Despite their chieftain's seeming understanding of Donan's blind, before we leave the city, we pass through the market and see a visibly shaken foss 
a son who's lost his father and clings to hope. Dad said if anything happened, we'd meet in the market. He'll be here. I know we will. Hopefully, one father and son are reunited this day. Ending our time in the broken land of Druids, tasked with rebuilding their lives from the ashes of Astaroth's destruction a second time, we find ourselves outside the gates to Lower Kerrigar and locating a guard, we inform. It's over. The townsfolk can search for their loved ones now. Aye. A shame about Yorin. Was one of us, you know. We'll take care of him and his father. Lilith and Astaroth had made a deal, and we were the ones who would pay the cost. Our presence was no coincidence. Everything happened exactly as Lilith wanted. We just danced to her music. Donan was shattered, his mind on grief, not her, not answers. No one knew what Lilith was truly after, or exactly what Astaroth had promised her. But we needed to recover quickly, and we needed to stop chasing her phantoms. This is the story of learning the Pale Man's disturbing identity in Diablo 4, Act 3-1, The Spreading Darkness. After our fiery encounter with Astaroth, we head back to the barbarian outpost of Kedbardu in the Dry Steps to meet up with Lorith Nar as he adventured off alone to find the Pale Man. Upon our arrival in town, we hear the locals complain. The old bastard drank half my stock and left without paying. Wondering who this reviled drunk is, we again hear another displeased local heir. Miserable drunken louse. It's only after our third local complains. Uh, can we never have peace? Uh, shouting and cursing all night. They should run him out of town. Do we see just to the north? the source of the disturbance, as a snoring Lorith naps in a muddy pigsty. Well, he's still breathing. He is lucky to be. And we ask the nearby villager, what happened here? That old man there, he claims to be Horadrim, but he drinks like an ox. He came to town days ago, looking for a servant of the demon Lilith. A pale man. It seems he didn't like what he found. Uh, I see. I will take it from here. Who are you? He and I met in the Fractured Peaks. I saw his pale man in a vision, if you can believe it. Enough. He's yours. Just keep away from the bottle, both of you. As the locals meander off, we're left to rouse the incapacitated Herodrum, much to his dismay. <sighs> oh, bloody damn hells, what do you want? You told me to meet you here, Lorath. Remember? Of course I remember. I'm just surprised you're not dead. Hand me that bottle. What happened to you? I was attacked, obviously, by vast quantities of alcohol, wielded by my own treacherous hand. <sighs> there may also have been a brawl with the goats over this patch of mud, but I like to think I triumphed. Lorath, who is the Pale Man? The Pale Man is, or was, Horadrim. Horadrim? Then you must know him. <sighs> I thought I did, once. His name is Elias. He was my apprentice. He was the one who brought Lilith to Sanctuary. It's possible that I did not take the news very well. What must we do, then? Find him. 
figure out what he's done, and then kill him. Listen, there's a woman here someplace. She has some messages we'll need, and I'm of no use to anyone right now. Could you find her? Enough time has been wasted. Oh, check around the inn. Ask if she's heard from the Orbe Monastery. We then dutifully make our way south and find at the inn's entrance a native woman out front named Tekran informing. Loreth sent me. Have you heard from the Orbe Monastery? <sighs> no, no word from Orbe. Same as yesterday and the day before. But I have something else. Rumor has it a pale man passed through the Abaru Canyon some time ago. Fearsome fellow, dressed in black. After Lorath's performance last night, I wager he'll want to know. Elias is nearby. With this news, we race back to Nar, still recovering from his bender, and report Tekran had no messages, but... Strange. I wrote to the Orbe Monastery the day I arrived. The abbot should have replied by now. Tekran spoke of a rumor. A pale man, seen near the canyons. The canyons? Why didn't you say so? We go at once. Oh, but we can't leave Orbe unchecked. Sod it. I'm off to the canyons. You can meet me there, or go to the monastery. You seem reliable, thus far. Do not prove me wrong. Before we choose our path and lure at the parts we further apprise, we have news from the Fractured Peaks. Inarius killed Rathma for the key to hell. Inarius' stupidity never ceases to amaze. Had he not murdered Rathma, Lilith might have been stopped, but now, now she has the key to hell. We can assume she'll be looking for a door. There's more. I bought witness to Lilith's evil in Skos Glen. Astaroth was resurrected thanks to Lilith, and Donan unfortunately lost his boy Yorin in the process. Oh, Donan. The poor fool never could have guessed that Lilith would come for Astaroth, let alone offer his boy to it. But what does she buy in return? Astaroth hails from the realm of hatred, same as she. Perhaps she left something at home. Tell me, why would Elias summon Lilith? Is he insane, you mean? Elias was an exceptional mage. He would plunge through fire and shite in search of the truth, and very often found it. Whatever truth he has found in Lilith, only he can say the why of it. With time wasting, we rush to meet Laura to the south of Kedbardu in the Abaru Canyon. Departing the town, we see the bodies of the whispered cannibals in the hills, and it's just to the east we find an encampment that has succumbed to an unseen carnage. By the well in the middle of the road, Lorith looks on and we ask, What have you found? I had hoped to find a witness who saw Elias. Instead, I have a camp of dead merchants. They were slaughtered by demons, that much is plain, but none were summoned here. We should search the canyons. Could Elias have summoned these demons? Easily. And assuming he did, he may still be here. Stay close to me. Just to the south, as promised, we're set upon by four-legged flesh threshers and vile fiends who lie in wait. As we make our way down the cliffside, we look over and see a rustic stone hut in which Genbar presumably resides. By a rickety wooden bridge, the flesh thrasher demons amass to defend something of value just out of sight, and we cut a path through the fiends to find a strange demonic glyph, and Lorith recognizes the danger immediately warning. They're coming to a hell rift. I will close it. Put them down. The rift then births a throng of succubi that screech when put down. Evidently, 
Not content with our defiance, the rift releases a giant fallen foe, Harath the Cinder Moor. It's only when all the demons are disposed of, Lorith pants. <laughs> Far too easy. These demons were vermin. I'd expect more from a mage of Elias's ability. Let's search the house. To the northwest, we find the house lightly guarded by demons. Dispatching them, Lorith warns. Tread carefully. Elias could still be close. See what you can find. Turning to an open journal of one Genba, it reads. Today, Master Elias called at my door. I had trouble with my words, so I showed him my carvings. He said he could see my pain in them. The pain of a lonely man who had learned to hate the world. And yet, our mother, Lilith, found me beautiful. He said there are others like me as well. And together, we will build the new world. Statues of Lilith? What else has Genba been up to? A demonic scroll in the northeast of the room reads, Scrolls of incantations for summoning of minor demons. Drawings resemble the four-legged demons in the canyons. Moving to the courtyard, we find Lorith inspecting some broken carvings, and we see the remains of a fine stone statue smashed into pieces. Heading to an alcove smattered in blood, Lorith sighs. What a damn mess. Overlooking a bloody glyph, we see an expertly carved statue of Lilith, covered in blood and viscera, wondering if this is Genbar's remains or someone else. Handing the demonic scroll to Nar, we inform, here's what I found, and he quickly divines. Burning hells! We're too late. Elias is long gone. This Genbar is our summoner. How can you be certain? Isn't it obvious? Elias finds Genbar alone, friendless, full of anger. So he plays him like a fiddle, offers him Lilith's love and a part in his grand delusion. Then he gives him tools to express his anger. Summoning scrolls. Very perceptive. Who knows how long Genbar has stewed in this madness. Let's hope he can still be questioned. Through the northern Mac door, we follow the trail of blood and descend the rift of a thousand eyes. Aptly named, as we see true to his word, Genba has been carving statues in Lilith's honor, and we stop abruptly as we hear his prayers carry oh, through the caverns. Thank you for opening my eyes. Your hatred fills my heart. I cannot stop my hands from working. Genba, you poor fool. Batting aside more demons as we pass the chorus of watchful stone eyes, we soon find the summoner by a carved demonic symbol in a northeastern cavern as Genbar gives thanks. Thank you for sending Master Elias to show me the way. I long for the day when we stand by your side and set the cleansing fire. We then interrupt the prayer, saying, Genba. Visitors? D did Master Elias send you? Master Elias? Well, yes, in fact, he did. Ours is a very important mission. We have something for the Master, but we had heard he was with you. Do you know where he is? Liar! Dirty pig's born liar! The Master has all he needs! Rise now, my wretches, to me! We're immediately plagued by a fear spell. Sent hurtling through Genbar's demons, he calls forth, only catching ourselves in time before we're swarmed entirely. Without his many summons to protect him, the Shrine Keeper becomes vulnerable to our volley of blood magics. 
and desperate, he calls on his master for aid. Master Elias, hear me! Your enemies are here! Laura, no. I have waited a very long time for this. I have a gift for you. That is a proper demon. Watch your ass. A powerful winged pit lord, Marmon, swings its giant sword at us and calls forth a wall of stone to trap us as the demon and Genbar work in tandem to overwhelm us through unholy magics and brute force alike. Focusing down the colossal pit lord between the hefts of its mighty sword, it finally falls, turning into a black husk and keeling over in defeat. Genbar, now utterly alone, frantically calls forth lesser demons, but to no avail, as we use their mounting corpses to become explosive shrapnel of bone and blood that's fragments finish off the former Shrine Keeper. Oh, Elias, how vicious you've become. Bad news first. Gembar was expecting someone. It seems Elias has turned others to his madness. Taught them to summon too, I'd wager. You heard Gembar. The Master has all he needs. They're about to do something drastic. And the good news? <laughs> Elias gave us a gift, remember? This demon he sent to kill us. It is unique. It requires constant feeding. Human sacrifices, in fact. If I cut open its belly, someone inside might hold a clue. Tell us where it came from. I must have it brought to Kadbardu for examination. The Abbot, open the door. And the pale devil smiled. He took the forbidden knowledge! This is the story of Diablo 4, Act 3 2. How Elias learned how to summon a lesser evil. In the wake of dealing with Elias's newest acolyte, Genbar, who he taught how to summon demons, we continue hot on the pale man's heels. However, Lorith is disturbed that the nearby Orbe monastery has not returned his letters, saying... Make yourself useful and head for the Orbe Monastery. See what's keeping that bloody abbot. Before leaving, we attempt to learn more of the Pale Man and ask of Nah. You know Elias. Has Lilith corrupted him somehow? Elias had a talent for persuasion. Convenient trait for a Haradrim, given our dealings. But he could be... relentless when he wanted something. Even cruel. In that way, he and Lilith are similar. Suffering. Bloodshed. To them, these are a means to an end. They will bring out the worst in each other. Why would Elias target the Dry Steps? The Dry Steps have no Cathedral of Light, no Druids, and their capital city, Gulran, has been sacked. Many are vulnerable, just like Genbar. We must learn what Elias has planned for them. With all we can learn of Lorith's former apprentice, for now, we head southwest of Ked Bardu, across the parched plains, and soon come to a seemingly deserted monastery, left to bake in the sun. The only signs of life, a foreboding pool of blood. And as we pass over the Zacharum symbol under a low arch, we dismount our steed appraising. A house of the Zacharum. Left alone to rot. Inside the dark hall, we find the source of the rotting stench being the remains of an outstretched slain monk. On his person, we scoop up a message from the abbot to Lorath. Lorath Na, how bizarre it is to hear from you. Your charming apprentice arrived just this morning with equally disturbing news, but he made no mention of you. Am I to assume you did not send him? Please, join us at Orbe as soon as you are able. 
Following the bloody trail, we descend the stairs into the lower levels, calling out. Is anyone here? The outer cloister too seems empty until we are startled by a frantic scream ahead. Murder! Murder in the sacristy! Lock the doors! What about the others? The elbows? Do as I say! Hearing the Orbe's outer cloister being sealed, we find we are locked in what is now a mausoleum for the dead. It's only when we arrive at the central door that was previously sealed, we hear that the monks locking themselves in seem to be a fatal error. Unable to open the large double doors, we see a nearby skull pedestal and divine that a crucial object is missing. Making our way to the low levels, we hear screeching of the monks being attacked. <laughs> it's him! Distraught that Elias may be tearing through the poor monk's ranks, we begin our frenetic search of the corpses littered about for a key and find on Sister Mariah's remains an ornate crusader's skull. Hoisting said relic on our back, we trudge as fast as we can to the pedestal as the monks continue to beg. With our path unlocked, we find one of the nearby monks already deceased and their journal reveals. I was so excited when I walked into the sacristy that day. Finally, my turn to enter the archive and explore the knowledge of darkness. Now, I'd give anything to forget what I've learned. Knowledge of darkness. As we are set upon by wrathful spirits, we cannot help but wonder if the monks had toyed with powers beyond their comprehension and are now fainted to haunt these halls in a hellish undeath. In a northern study, we then find the monks had transcribed clandestine knowledge of the very birth of hell. Lo, the great beast Tathamet was struck down, and its blackened husk sank below the abyss. There, it smoldered and festered, and from the ruin of its seven heads were born seven great evils. Three primes and four lessons. Enemies of all creation. Something tells us that whatever the monks stored here was invaluable to someone obsessed with the dark arts such as Elias, and we must make haste to make sure he doesn't get his hands on the forbidden knowledge. Still true to their duty in death as they were in life, a wrathful phantom in the southern wing warns. Not a Roger, not a man, a devil. In the central hall we find a slain monk's journal as another slain monk interrupts. Commissioned during the time of troubles, the old- Damn you, Abbot! Why did you let him in? The Archive has expanded to the study of all evils, restricted to only the most devout scholars of Zakarum. To the northeast, we locate a raving monk crouched and rambling. Unto evening, unto evening, I shall keep it safe. And then... <laughs> we then ask, are you wounded? Where is the abbot? The abbot? Open the door! And the pale devil smiled! He took the forbidden knowledge! Shh, it's all right. I've cleared the way out. Can you walk? There is no way out. What knowledge remains must never leave. Unto evening I shall keep it safe, and into the night hereafter! We must protect the archive. Wading through the many phantoms sent to protect the Archive, 
we discover its door is sealed and inscribed. You who would seek to know darkness, kneel before the light, speak the words of the litany, and accept our holy burden. Nearby, we locate three statues that contain the litany of the Orbe. From morning, my eyes were opened, and I saw the coming darkness. Through the day, I have prepared to accept the burden of knowledge. Unto evening, I shall keep it safe, and into the night hereafter. The door then unseals and swings open to reveal the archive engulfed in flames. Too late, we bound up the stairs and find the abbot alive, sitting atop a stack of books with a torch in his hand, and we cautiously approach, urging, Abbot, we need to leave now. With the rest of it. Where is Elias? Gone. He said... The ruin of Sanctuary was imminent, and only I could help. He is going to summon a lesser evil. He took all he needed, and then... My scholars... He murdered them. He... Oh... My friends, forgive me. The spirits of the fallen rush to claim his soul. We're then immediately engulfed in vortexes of red, ethereal energy that blind us, and as we move to escape, find bone walls erected to cage us in. Pushing the spirit into the burning corner of the room, it proves it is not without defense, as the bone wall caging it turns out to be an offensive act as the bone fragments explode as deadly projectiles and fling towards us. However, despite our predicament, we still call forth the crimson ichor of the bound dead inside the fiend and extract its putrid essence until it falls defeated upon the floor. On its remains, we locate a Gospel of Mother written by Elias, as we have confirmation, his former pupil is now in possession of the means to summon a lesser evil. The whole of human knowledge shall be shared among the children of Lilith, and no secret shall be kept from them. And the liars and learned thieves of the world shall perish in their regret. This is the story of Diablo 4, Act 3-3, the crazy creation of the cannibals. Once we contend with Elias' newest lackey, Genbar Summoned Demon, we head to the Orbe Monastery on the trail of the Pale Man, only to learn he had stolen valuable information that would aid him in summoning none other than a lesser evil. We then return to Ked Bardu, where Lorith plans to conduct an autopsy on said demon for clues of Elias' whereabouts, and we inform. What did he take? Scrolls. From the Forbidden Archive. He has the means to summon a lesser evil. In what? Which bloody one? Where? Oh, we don't know, of course. Elias could cover the steps in blood, but a lesser could wipe out the continent, or worse. Come, Elias' pet demon is inside. Pray it leads us to him. Before aiding and hacking up a demon's remains, we inquire, what are lesser evils? <sighs> Perhaps you are too young. The prime evils you should know, Diablo, Mephisto, and Baal. The lessers are their rotten kin. Asmodan, Belial, Andariel, and Duriel. Each of them has ravaged humankind since the dawn of history, and they will gladly do so again. Tell me, what happened between you and Elias to send him on this path? He asked me endless prying questions. Frankly, I should be more concerned about your past. 
trusting one's soul connected to Lilith is quite a risk on my part, and one I do not take lightly. With valuable time wasting, we then proceed. All right, let's begin. It was protecting that fool, Genma. This is Elias's work. But where is he? The answer lies in the stomach. <clears throat> this is delicate. A soft noble's hand. Elias would have to feed this thing with more than fancy boots. That's someone's son. Or daughter. We should burn demons. This is wrong. Ah. This medallion bears the crest of the ruler of the royal house of Gul'ran. Former ruler. Obviously. That's enough, old man. The dead deserve respect. The dead deserve nothing when the living are in danger. Now Gul'ran has a new ruler, and we have Elias to thank for it. The dead may be worthless to you, but that medallion could bring peace to those two mourning. Fine. If we are to find Elias, then we must also travel to Gul'ran. Meet me there, and be swift about it. Oh, and avoid the city gates. Too many cannibals. Go to the cliffs. We'll find help there. Before we meet Elias at the sacked city of Gul'ran and contend with cannibals, we decided best to learn of Gul'ran's fate by speaking to the displaced refugees that found their way in the city of barbarians in Kedbardu. To the northeast, we find a bustling market where a visitor, Rangol, wishes. Father always wanted to see the markets of Kedbardu. I wish he had made it. Just to the north of the vibrant hub, we see a stranded merchant's cart. It seems merchants from all around travel to sell in the markets of Kedbardu. The reputation of the barbarians' metalworks brings visitors looking to buy. Just ahead, we overhear a mercenary arguing with a trader. Passes to the southwest are still blocked by bandits. How are we supposed to transport goods if we have to go around the damn pass? Paid for your swords, so use them. <laughs> not enough to get myself killed and eaten in those hills. Speaking of Eden, it's not the cannibals that we worry about, as we see a pile of meat in a nearby butcher. It's clear the butcher's stockpile runs low these days. The increase of people has made it difficult to keep up with demand. The fear of cannibals outside the city remains high as Asha inside the jewelers complains. The barbarians chose to ignore another crisis, I see. They're working. Their craftsmanship built Kedbadu. Well, next time they look up from their work, I hope they don't see a town that has been overrun with cannibals. To the west, we find the infamous metalworks, and in the middle, a large bonfire. And we overhear the barbarians were the first to settle Kedbardu, and the city has grown around them, but their encampment remains largely unchanged. Asmus, a local getting warm, then complains. Every day I hear of a new threat in our lands. What of it? Our gates and people are strong. Arrogance is what topples cities. A nearby artisan showcases barbarian hospitality. Away! I have work! Up the stairs, a guard Dorji explains. The cannibal attacks have people frightened, and fear is good for business. In the local inn, Barine complains of the refugees. All the crying and worry of Gulran survivors are scaring off buyers. Let's have some compassion. I would rather have coin. We then ask of the innkeeper, Ergam. Have the mercenaries been helping keep the city's infamous wares safe? The mercenaries are decent with a blade, but those greedy canyon adders are always raising their prices. Nobody should have to pay for safety. Huh. Why is it so busy here? Aye, 
Since bandits blocked the pass in the south, babbling merchants have been haunting my... <laughs> have you heard any local news in Kedbardu? Oi. Make your stay in Kedbardu a short one. New faces tend to bring new problems. Atop the conjoined building with the inn, Lagra, a local empathizes. It's hard to walk down the streets when they've been flooded with the grief and sorrows of Gulran. The situation is so dire, the local authorities have pinned on a message board in the center of town. The survivors of Gulran have settled in makeshift camps on the west side of town. Kedbadu doesn't have the resources to build quick enough to house its growing population. To the north of town, a Gulran survivor then shares. The locals even avert their gazes, but at least we're safe here. And to the west, we find the blood-soaked and tattered clothes of refugees. Those that fled their homes in Gulran had little time to gather anything. We then see a nearby elder who stands over this sad scene and simply sobs. Just to the north of the haphazard base camp, a young boy, Jamstus, complains of their new living conditions. When can we go home? Cat Bardu smells like smoke. The food is too salty, and Yakfor is itchy. Shush. This is home now. It's clear between the bandits and cannibals blocking the south and the displaced former inhabitants of Gulran City, integrated into an overpopulated Kedbardu, that things are looking bleak for the local barbarians' trade and the refugees alike. Resolved to put an end to Elias and the rumored usurpers who have taken over Gulran, we begin our journey to meet Lorith at its cliffs to the south. It's only to the southeast of a rickety bridge to the blood-soaked Ingress do we run afoul of the cannibal cleavers mid-meal. Somewhat foolishly, we attempt to ride through their encampment and find ourselves at a broken bridge as a hot meal on legs tries to flee screaming. Mauling the many maniacs during one of their meat-munching meetings, we mash their maws and step forward to the edge of the bridge to witness the unspeakable horror of what remains the city of Gulran. Realizing a full frontal assault is suicide. We opt to follow the more covert path Lorith insisted we originally pursue. Thus, we find a winding cliff path along the trail of bones to the east until we come across a hidden overlook. Inside the winding cave, we find an opening overlooking the ruins of the city below, with Nar gazing out into the carnage and we inform. I'm here, Lorith. Good of you to come. Pity you didn't bring an army or siege works. Elias is here. Gone to the palace, no doubt. Behind the high wall with the gates barred behind him. We can't get through. You know who can. Zelaya. How many messages did I send? Huh? How long has Ohyun been missing? Trapped in there with those butchers? She may be the only one left who knows of the tunnel. If she's still alive. If this tunnel exists at all. You don't trust me. Of course not. You're a thief. Useful years ago, true. But it's clear you have some other reason to seek this, or you. Not your business. If I were to look for Oyu, where would I start? She has a house in the market square. 
We were supposed to meet there before, but I couldn't get close. Try to come back alive. Not convinced this old union is worth the risk, but perhaps you'll prove me wrong. Yeah. Have a little faith for once, old man. Watching the duo bicker, we follow them to their encampment and ask, how do you two know each other? Had the pleasure of meeting her years ago. She tried to steal my Herodric amulet. Thought it might be worth something. My mistake. We then query Zalaya. What was that about the tunnel? Oh, Yoon mentioned the passage once or twice, but never went into detail. And I knew better than to pry. And who is this Oyun? An old friend. She served the overseers in the palace kitchens. Knows all the secrets in that place. With the ticket to entering the palace tunnels being held by the prisoner Oyun, we wait until nightfall. Shrouded by darkness, we descend the cliff's face into the city's seedy sanguine alley. Aptly named, as the streets run red and crimson bloodhawks swoop to meet us. Searching for the market square to gain our bearings, we see a pond filled with blood and remains of the former inhabitants as a cannibal absent-mindedly gorgeous on his latest prey. Scaling the rooftops for a vantage point, we traverse a rope line across the city streets and come across a woman fleeing from an attack. No, no! Don't let them get me! <sighs> Thank you! Thank you! Have you seen someone named Oyun? I... I, I don't know. The cannibals are rounding everyone up, killing, feasting. But a few, they drag away. The prisons, I heard. Why would these monsters keep anyone alive? The prisons. Maybe there is a chance Oyun lives. Heading northeast, we find the path to the prison blocked and choose one of two lesser paths being scaling the western wall of the forsaken vestibule and circumventing the gate altogether. Once inside the prison, we see a mural to the aforementioned overseers presiding over their prized slaves like cattle. To the east, the entrance to the forlorn cells and execute some nearby cannibals feasting on corpses of their guests. Entering the furthest room to the east, we're pounced upon by a kill the jailer of the weak, who unsurprisingly has mastery in walling his prey in combat. Collecting the prison key off his corpse, we open the nearby rusty door calling out. Oyun, are you here? Who? Who's there? By the far wall, Oyun sits among her dead kin and shares. You... You're not him. Who are you? The chopping. It stopped and I thought... I thought he was coming for me next. Your friend Zelaya sent me. She... she's still here? You'll see her soon. We need to get through the market. I... I know another way. It's safer. The old prison wing. It was sealed off years ago after an earthquake. Where did the cannibals come from? Here. They were prisoners. A clan of bandits, led by Tyrant Bro. I overheard them talking about a, a new age to come and the man who would bring it. 
Elias. I think he turned them into these monsters. Set them free. It was Elias who stoked the cannibal's insatiable hunger. The wall ahead. That used to be the entrance to the old prison wing. Can you break through? Breaking through the flimsy wall, shambling corpses then ambled towards us en masse with ill intent. I thought it would be safe this way. We'll get through. Stay close. Wading our way through scores of undead, Oyun finds a way out of the wretched pit. Look! A, a crack in the wall! We made it. I can't stop my hands from shaking. Give me a moment. With a moment of welcome respite in the exit chamber, we ask, why didn't you escape? I was waiting for Zolaya at my home. When I realized she wasn't coming, I, I tried to run. But those monsters caught me. Who were the overseers? Royal blood. Ruled Guran for generations. Decadent and cruel, but they were saints compared to Bro. What do you know about Elias? I... I saw him at the royal court. He walked in, unannounced. <sighs> Demanded the city to be given to him. The overseer sent him to the prisons, of course. They laughed about the strange man all night. That was the last time they laughed. And now the overseers laugh no more. With time against us, we inquire. Are you ready? Yes. Where is she? As we guide Oyun up the side of the mountain, we hear Lorath's voice carried on the wind. Keep that beast quiet. Shh, it's safe now. Nothing will get you up here. Zolaya! Oyun! Oh, you've come back to me! You waited kept yourself in danger. Oh, you stubborn cow. Of course I waited. Where would I go without you to tell me? Anywhere away from here. Yes, well, you are a lucky fool. I'll give you that. Ah, uh, Lorath here sent this one to find you. They need your help getting into the palace. There's an old escape tunnel. The entrance is in the caverns nearby, behind an alcove marked with the Overseer's Cross. Twin sabers joined at the hilt. Press the left pommel to open the way. Caverns. Hmm. <laughs> Could be worse. Wanderer. Thank you. Take care of yourself. Let's go! Hiya! I think that was the merchant's horse. Best not tell him. With our path clear, Lorath strangely stands firm instead of heading towards the tunnel, and we query. Lorath? You know, when we first met, I assume this connection you have with Lilith would lead you to darkness, as it has Elias. But after the good you've done here, maybe I was wrong. We shall see. After extracting Oyun from Gulran's prison, she gives us the location of the hidden underground passage leading to the palace. And so we meet Lorath at the cave's entrance via the winding trail of bones, and he muses. While you were in the city, I was thinking on Elias's plans. Which of the lesser evils he means to summon. What he did to go round is a clue. He has drowned it in blood. Meaning his goal is likely Duriel or Andariel. What's the difference? Duriel feeds off physical pain, and Ariel revels in mental and emotional torment. Whichever one it is, if Elias succeeds, many more cities will share Gulran's fate. 
Her only hope is he hasn't completed the summoning yet. Lorith then meanders into the awful pits and we follow close behind. Oyun said the tunnel is in a hidden alcove. Beginning our search, we're soon confronted with undead ghouls who have made the moist cavity their home. To the north, Lorith exclaims. There. Ahead. Could that be it? And we see twin crossed sabers next to a large door, as promised, and ask Lorith. This is the place. Twin sabers. Just as Oyun described. As the door lurches open, we see dried blood of the dead left to rot by a stream. Climbing a nearby ladder, we skirt the edge of the cavern and see a gap in the bricks, indicating we are by the city's walls and lore of warns. Wait. Do you hear that? Why do we stay here? Need more prey, more meat. And you will have it once Elias has finished his grand work? What work? You will see soon, bro. The seeds we have sown will bear fruit. Gulwang will be reborn and so will... But work. Elias, he is poised to summon Andariel into the world. Her, her power will lift us to new heights. And of course, you, you will have more meat. <sighs> I want to watch. Certainly, Great Bro. You will be the guest of honor. With Elias's demented plan laid bare, we charge around the corner following the blood trail, and Lorith despairs. And Ariel, the maiden of anguish. That is the lesser evil he means to summon. Heavens help us. Inside the once opulent palace to the east, Lilith's disciples lie in wait. On the heels of the ex Herodrum, we locate his throne room to the east. However, one of his underlings warns. The master calls forth the maiden! You will not disturb him! Attacking this harbinger of mother's judgment who sits perched atop a glyph of blood, she hurls violent bolts of electricity and summons swirling shock spells sent to shear flesh from bone. Despite the cruel sting of her sorcery, Lorith casts a stun spell that lands square on her back and proceeds to swing and stab furiously with his polearm as she rises in a daze and we unleash a wave of blood that rends her corporeal form asunder. Looking at the glyph she stood atop, we see a gruesome collection of partially eaten corpses. Scraps of fine clothing suggest these may be the remains of the royal family. We then pause by the gruesome remains of the royals atop their throne, where these original overseers somewhat reaped what they had sown. Backtracking, we find in a nearby room a seal that bars our path to Elias's sanctum. Once dispelled, Lorith informs. Look at all this. An archive of the Forbidden, handpicked by Elias himself. He must be planning to summon Andariel somewhere else. But he did his research here. Look around. There might be some clues that can tell us where the ritual will take place. The Pale Man's Sanctum is a treasure trove of books and forbidden tomes, and we see on the nearby table one of his journal entries. The prophecy is unfolding before my eyes. I was right to act on it. When the prime evils come, they will find no easy prey. We will be ready. Our rebirth begins here, with Andariel chained to the heart of Gulran. She will feed on the suffering in this city of anguish, and we in turn will feed on her. 
and Dariel's power will be ours to wield against the other Lords of Hell. If more must die to see it come to pass, so be it. I will not fail you, Mother. In the western corner, under a three-headed snake statue, we locate sketches of three shrines, each depicting one of the prime evils, Diablo, Baal, and Mephisto. Below the drawings, Elias has written, only the blessed can open the way. Returning to Lorith, who is gazing at an unknown clump of flesh preserved in a jar, we inquire, what have you found? I recognize many of these books. He must have stolen them from their Roderick vault. Realizing we'd seen similar books in said vault, we question. Elias summoned demons long before this, didn't he? Don't tell me you were meddling in the Haradric vault. I put a seal on his quarters for a reason. The fool thought he could use their power against the prime evils. Fight fire with fire. I gave him an ultimatum. Stop or leave the Haradric. You know the rest. Leaving Lorith to his research, we find a nearby old worn map. At the center of the map, is the Temple of the Primes, an ancient complex buried beneath Mount Sivo. Notes are scrawled across the paper, and they appear to be calculations for how much of Gulran's populace would be needed to excavate the temple. Putting the clues together, we return to Lorath announcing, Here's what I found. And Ariel, chained to the heart of Gulran. Her evil will not stay contained here. It will drown the land in suffering. This is beyond madness. Quite the opposite. Elias' mind is clear for once. When I knew him, he was searching for purpose. I couldn't give him one, and so he found it in Lilith. I didn't stop him. I let him become... this. Now is our chance to make it right, before things get even worse. Yes, we have what we need. The summoning will take place at the Temple of the Primes in Mount Sivo. Now to find a way out. Knowing Elias, he would have had an escape route in case things didn't go his way. Behind the bookcase. I guess that's the one thing he learned from me. Following Lorath to the Hidden Overlook, we find ourselves in a large open arena and ask, what now? Should have killed him when I had the chance. We must hurry. Exiting the corpse-smattered city, we begin our way up the forsaken ascent of Mount Sivo to the east. The terrain and its structures that sit upon the volcano are burnt alike, as if it had been set off not long ago, making our ride up the presumably active ascent all the more nerve-wracking. By a sizable group of slain demons, we locate Lorith and ask, what is our next step? Somewhere in this paradise, the Triune has reclaimed its ancient temple. Trouble is, we can't simply walk in. Elias was researching something about shrines to Mephisto, Baal, and Diablo. Only the blessed can open the way. Yes, but to be blessed by the prime evils. Damn risky. If it is the key to getting inside the temple, I will take the risk. Baal Shrine is close. We'll start there. As promised, to the east past some fervent followers. We locate a crude yet menacing effigy of the Lord of Destruction, with some pressing questions that need answers before we're caught in the web of a prime. We ask of Nar, what is the Triune? They worship the Lords of Hell, or at least they used to. If the Triune is working with Elias here, it must mean they pledged themselves to Lilith. Wait, if the Triune worshipped the prime evils, why have they joined Lias? It all comes down to power. The old cult bowed to the prime evils, 
little more than slaves to demons. But through Elias, through Lilith, they can become masters of demons. Or so they think. But why would Elias want blessings from the Primes? They are his enemies. The blessings are just a means to an end. Elias needs the temple, a place of demonic power where he can summon Andariel. Knowing we too must be granted the Prime's blessing, we approach the altar and the candles spring to life. Baal, Lord of Destruction. His influence has launched every war in history. Never once has he tired of conflict. Speak his true name, Tor Belos. Tor Belos. Are you all right? I'm... I'm fine. Two more shrines to go. Diablo and then Mephisto. Stay strong. With a foreign tingle of Bale's destructive energy surging its way across our very being, we cautiously seek out his brother, Diablo's shrine, finding it upon the spine of Sivo. His worshippers forgoing their lives for the Lord of Terror. Again, we proceed to the blood-soaked altar and Lorith instructs. Diablo, Lord of Terror. Every mortal fear, every nightmare, he is the root of it all. Always has been. Speak his true name. Al Diabolos. Al Diabolos. <sighs> Incapacitated by terror, we have been twice lucky to walk away relatively unscathed. Yet somehow we can feel the aspects of the evils lingering as we revel in the destruction of our enemies, almost feeding on the cultists' fears as we wipe them off the side of this charred rock. It's down by the molten lake's edge, in a camp devoid of life, do we find Mephisto's sinister countenance peering down at us. We turn to Lorith and mutter, the last shrine. Mephisto, Lord of Hatred. Father of Lilith, you need to be careful. Her blood is already a part of you. I can handle it. You see? The power here is already agitating you. I told you I can handle it. Tell me what to say, and then go search for the temple. So be it. When you're ready, speak the name Dull Mephistos. But watch yourself. Realizing Lorith is right, and we've been allowing the brothers to take root in our mind, we apprehensively recite Dul Mephistos. Yet, nothing happens to us. Instead, we see the familiar portal the bloodied wolf had opened before, and wary, we step inside. It's there the all-too-congenial wolf greets. <sighs> We meet again. Mephisto. I know who you are now. Yes, but that doesn't mean we can't help each other. That mortal Elias seeks to use the power of the Primes for his own ends. No one knows their place anymore, do they? His meddling has drawn echoes of the past to my refuge of hatred. But you and I can put things back in order. Once you've brought peace to this realm, I will be able to give you my blessing. Unsure how Elias is affecting the Lord of Hatred's realm, and disinclined to waste time wondering why, we focus on ending this supposed illusion. The forces of hell approach! And so we head up the snowy mountain path of Cesaron, putting down barbarians in events we were nary born during. Ulk, 
Kathos, lend me your strength. It's only at its peak, post slaughtering some numerous notable barbarians, does one called Gorm attack. Though formidable even as an illusion, his flesh still peels off like an overripe grape against our summoned blood wave. Seemingly satisfied with our performance, Mephisto purrs. Well done. You were born for this. I didn't expect a prime evil would need a mortal's help. Yes, I've had some bad luck in recent years. Trapped in those soulstone trinkets. Cast back to hell. My essence is reforming, and so my power has limits. We all have our ups and downs, don't we? You deserve far worse. All I have done is offer you help, and yet you repay me with hatred. Why not focus that anger on Lilith for the time being? Take my blessing, destroy her, save your world. Before we leave, we inquire, who were those barbarians? The victims of my brother, Bale. He laid waste to the barbarian lands long before your time. I wish I could have seen it with my own eyes. I had no part in it though. Elias has upset the balance at the Temple of the Primes, and those shades of the past belong in Bale's domain, not mine. But I do welcome their hatred. With all we need, we exit the portal and re-emerge at the spine of Siva. To the east, overlooking the temple, we locate Lorith. And seeing the entrance, a surprise that's unguarded, and inform Nah, I've received the final blessing. What took you so long? I saw something at the shrine. A wolf. Hmm. Mephisto has been known to take such a form. It's not the first time I've encountered him. What? When you kept this from me? We all keep secrets, don't we, Haradrim? We don't have time for this now. Elias could be in the middle of his ritual already. Clear your head before we press on. The Temple of the Primes is just ahead. At the base of the mountain, we cross the River of Flame and the Trion symbol unmolested, hearing Mephisto's voice ring out. By your hand, the way will be opened. Inside the temple, we find tributes of both material wealth and human sacrifices to the primes. Just to the east, a dark priest, Siban, threatens. Trespassers! Your screams will welcome and and yet it was her scream we heard instead. Passing through the halls of destruction to the west, Lorith stops us as he hears. Wait, do you hear something? Dodging a giant swath of its sword just in time, we begin fighting the Pit Lord, Marla, Master of Flame, dodging his fiery assault amidst his tantrum as it bashes the ground furiously. Fighting scores of cultists, we finally find an opening and see a sacrificial altar below, spying Elias mid-ceremony as the cannibal brawl paces like a caged animal. Getting closer, Lorith whispers. Oh, we're too late. The ritual is underway. 
I will deal with Elias myself. Stay to the shadows. With Lorith escaping the sacrifice, we're left to contend with the tyrant King Brawl, barely dodging death as we move to confront him and one of his two large swords glances off our armor. The crazed cannibal proves surprisingly agile for his size, rushing us in a hulking charge and sending us flying. We realize one step too far near the pit and we're done for in the lava below. Taking advantage of his great sword stuck in the floor thanks to an overhead swing, Brawl becomes further enraged, calling forth his many minions. However, we quickly dispose of them, using their bodies for dangerous corpse explosions that catch his meaty flank. As we send a wave of blood at the brute, he shockingly charges through still intact. And it's only after a final heft of our sword that we dispatch the fiend. We then scoop up the items of the fallen hostile, including the legendary torturous adventurer's gloves, giving us a boost to our Iron Maiden with a 17% chance to have enemies be stunned for a second if they attack us. This is the story of Diablo 4. Act 3, 5. The Unkillable Herodrum. You think killing me again will have a different outcome? Liberating the female sacrifice from Elias's ritual and felling the tyrant king Brawl. Nearby, we find the mysterious woman recovering with Lorith by her side and she introduces. Ah, uh, what... What happened? It feels like fire crawling over my skin. Ugh. You were tattooed. A ritual. I... Oh, hear something. A voice in my head. And Ariel. A connection was made between you and her. Who are you? Ta... Taisa. Who are you? I am Lorath, one of the Haradrim. Haradrim? So... so is Elias. If he told you that, he was lying. I came to kill him. Thought I had, but the moment I looked away, he vanished. If he survived, he will have fled to his refuge. Refuge? He has a palace, 
somewhere in the deserts of eastern Kyrgyzstan. But that is all I know. Taking a moment, we inform Nah. Brawl is dead. Well, that's one bit of good news. With him gone, perhaps the cannibals in Gulran will fall into disarray. How do we find this palace? We should get to Tassarak. The people there know the deserts of Keshistan well. Maybe someone has heard of this palace. Let me join you. I don't know how much help I will be in this condition, but I owe you my life. You don't owe us anything, but you are welcome to come. You deserve vengeance too. Lorith and his new ward Thaisa depart, while we are instructed to meet them in the southern Kedjistani town of Tarsarak. If it could be called a town, as we find it is little more than a dusty outpost for weary travelers. Inside the settlement, we find Lorith kneeling next to a pained Thaisa by the town well and ask, have you learned anything about Elias's palace? Just rumors, mostly. The people here speak of a sorcerer who lives in a grand palace beyond the endless sandstorm. One of these nomads could help us reach it. They know the land better than... <sighs> Taisa. <sighs> and Daria. I hear her. <sighs> I need a place to focus. Keep her voice at bay. Look for a guide. I'll get something to help Thaisa clear her mind. Before searching for the palace, we inquire with Thaisa. How did you become entangled with Elias? I was hunting him, much like you. Infiltrated the cult to get close. Somehow he was ready for me. He is more powerful than he seems. Searching for leads on this palace, we first stop by the local inn and ask the publican, Irizadi, how is business? War in the steppes, bandits in the south, and Chaldeum has closed its golden gates. The few customers we get usually want a guide to take them to safety. Akarat knows where that is. What can you tell me of Tarsarak? Behold, the armpit of the desert. Our families came from Alcarnus years ago after that city went to hell. They camped here by the crossroads, set up trade. It's been a struggle ever since. Further speaking to the hard life that the desert bears, a local, Linnea, shares from her stupor in the corner. Last night I dreamt that the sandstorm came and buried us here. <sighs> if only... South of the inn, we find a mother with child wailing on the steps. Let me guess. Just passing through. <laughs> oh, yes. I'll never be married. Just below her stand two residents and we ask of Marjub. I'm looking for a guide to help me pass through the northern storm. <laughs> You'll find none fool enough to accept that request here. Give up and stay alive a day longer. Understanding their apprehension, we press on, seeing to the north a woman by a butcher's cart, Nadia, and ask, will you guide me through the sandstorm to the north? Are you mad? There's a sorcerer living in that storm who will rip your flesh from your bones. We then head into the town square, and to the east see two merchants bickering and interrupt. Excuse me. I need a guide to get through the sandstorm to the north. Ha! No chance. Not for all the gold in Chaldeum. Wait. What about the old man? Ha! I'd sooner walk backwards into the burning hells than rely on him. But he might be the only one crazy enough to agree. He spends his days in a fog by the banks of the Argentec River. It's no place for kind souls. Be careful. With but one lead left, we inform Lorith. I know where to find a guide. Where is Thaisa? Found a quiet spot where she can focus on controlling Andariel's presence. Is it safe to leave her here? Safer than stumbling blind through the desert. At least until we find a reliable guide. 
exiting via the western gate, we find a loitering local Mawadi who beckons to us and mocks. <laughs> That's a fine costume. The desert sun is going to love you. Despite his tone, something tells us this is probably sage advice. However, it's not long before the promised gold and blue garbed bandits assault us to the south in the central rise. To the southeast, we find the Argentec Riverbank Encampment, a welcome respite for the harsh desert sun. Save our welcome, as we realize it's wholly inhabited by bandits. Hmm. Every day brings new fools. I'm not the one who's gonna roll their corpses into the river this time. <laughs> no chance. We find the local populace largely holds their hostilities. However, when we approach the inn, the proprietor, Sifar, warns. You'd better turn around and walk out of here, friends. Ignoring the warning, we begin to search for a guide, but hear his mirthless laughter. <laughs> well, can't say I didn't warn you. The entire inn then descends on us. <laughs> With the bandits obliterated, bar a straggler, we head inside the dubious den out back to find an old timer in a blissful haze and rouse. Wake up. Uh, what's that? I'm paid up, leave me be. We're not here to collect. We need. Huh? This can't be. Can it? Is that a symbol of the whole? The horror of. Haradra. Uh... Yes, Horadrim. Decat? Decat Kane? Can it be you, old friend? It's me! Me sheath! No, Decat is gone. My name is Lorath. We need your help passing through the sandstorm to the north. Sandstorm, eh? The others must have turned you down, told you some rubbish about a sorcerer, I'll wager. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, what can a sorcerer do to me that time hasn't already? <laughs> yes, yes, I'll help. There's an old chapel near there, an auspicious spot to begin a new adventure. Good. Gather whatever you need. I'll fetch Taisa and meet you there. Ha! Ah, this is wonderful! Like old times, eh, Deckard? Despite the clear case of mistaken identity, we stay a while and listen to the old man, Mashif, who, after a good rant, has decided to join us for one final supposed adventure with Kane. A Herodrum we had only heard whispers of, and yet, no, he was once a revered member of the Herodrum that had dealings with the Lord of Terror back in yesteryear. Meeting Lorith and Mashif in the Forsaken Chapel to the north, as instructed, we also find Taisa elaborating on her entanglement with the lesser evil. Ah, you're here! Deckard is inside with your friend. The moment we stepped inside, Andario grew desperate. But her screams are only a whisper now. This is holy ground. Her influence will be weaker here. Curious, we then ask. What does Andariel say to you? Terrible things. Mad things. She knows of Lilith's return and what Elias is planning. But Andariel does not care who wins, only that someone loses and that their suffering is extreme. Is there anything I can do to help? No, I've been a burden for you already. One day, I will find a way to help you. With Elias being the key to all our questions, we inquire with Lorith. Is everyone ready? I am. Up to Taisa, whether she'll join us, though. Every part of me wants to walk through that storm and draw Elias' blood. But... Perhaps he is counting on my vengeance to lead me back to him. So he can finish what he started. 
It is safer for everyone if I stay. No shame in that. It's the wise choice. We'll bring you his head. Out front of the chapel, we then meet Mashif tending to his camel and ask, Tell me more about Cain. Ha! <laughs> Hasn't told you much about himself, eh? I remember when you couldn't stop him from talking. We met several lifetimes ago. In Aranak, I believe. Or oh, maybe Lutgalain. That's right. Well, I was a sailor back then. And a handsome one, too. Deckard was always such an intense fellow. But kind and dependable. Took it upon himself to right any wrong he found. <laughs> and we found many. To think I would find him here, of all places. Still just as intense, and still traveling with interesting company. <laughs> Are you prepared? <laughs> Are you? Oh, I hope you've lined your pockets with healing drafts. <laughs> if not, help yourself to the ones I keep on old Isabella here. <laughs> Storm's going to get worse, too. I can smell it. When it starts to kick up, we'll have to find something to shelter us. Oh, there'll be nothing left of us but bones and stories. Following Mashif southeast into the silent expanse, we find him staring out into the storm and question, Why have you stopped here? Ah, just savoring the moment. This is going to be a trek to remember, eh, Descartes? I can't wait! The older man trudges headlong into the scouring sands at an impressive speed for his advanced years, deftly dodging the giant scorpions patrolling the dunes. The winds are turning angry! Follow me! He then beckons us as we run headlong into a twister. Finding a small reprieve in a merchant's camp to the west, it seems the inhabitants had succumbed to the dangers of the desert. Mashif excitedly declares, Could it be? Ha! Ah, it is! The gods favor our journey, friends! Share a drink with me, Deckard. A toast to another life or death adventure. No, I, uh, I've had quite enough. It's all yours. Ha! I won't turn down such generosity! Seems it's dying down. <laughs> Onward! Resuming our track to the north, we are then swarmed by all manner of hostile, dredged up by the treacherous sands, and Mashif warns. Storm's kicking up again! This way, quickly! Pausing at a great unnamed creature's carcass, our guide laments. Oh, no. no! Back! We need to go back! What? What's wrong? My pipe! I left my pipe back at the chapel! We must go back and get it! Oh man, if you turn your back now, I'll be the first to bury a blade in it. Bah! Fine! But I won't forget this betrayal, Deckard. You know I won't. Come on, then. To the east, we're surrounded by skeletal foes, and Mashif wisely pauses, crying out. You're being swarmed. Keep his Isabella safe. It's time to move, eh? Follow me. With the beast of burden safe, we overhear him questioning the foe Cain. Ha, ah, Deckard. Do you remember the smell of the salt air on the ocean? No shade or devil could stand in our way. Been all across this world since then. Seen things you wouldn't believe. But it was never quite the same. Wandering without a direction, it was just... waiting. Aye. It's important to have something to walk towards. One foot in front of the other, eh, old friend? If we stop walking, we die. Sounds like the winds have calmed. Stay close. 
It's only to the north, under some natural stone arches, does the sandstorm momentarily abate, revealing outer gardens of an oasis-like palace setting. Mashif then amazes. Ah, that wasn't half as dangerous as the others made it seem. Look at this. To think such an intriguing place was hidden beyond the storm. A relic from the old days of Ketistan, maybe. Lost to time until Elias seized it. He must have stole some treasure, eh? Mashif, don't move. Don't speak to anyone. There is great danger lurking here. You've grown fearful in your old age, my friend. But worry not, I will stay put. Leaving Mashif and Isabella at the entrance, we're soon stopped by a pompous follower of Elias who scoffs. Elias chose them to join his anointed circle? Ha! <laughs> That one in rags will never survive what is to come. To the east, more nobles congregate and share. I heard the calling in a dream. I saw an army at the mother's side, ready to wage war against hell. And I was among her followers, reborn anew with her power. And to the north, near the entrance's stairs. It was Master Elias' hand that brought Lilith to sanctuary, and it will be his hand that binds a lesser evil to our will. Imagine when we hold that kind of power. Ascending the stone stairs to the opulent desert palace, there is little sign of cultist activities, save for the triune symbol etched on the floor. Passing the seal, we are promptly stopped. You there? Wait. I haven't seen you before. We just made it through the storm. By the Mother's grace. Ah, new disciples. You've come at an auspicious time. Lilith recently graced us with her presence. She was here. Oh, it was magnificent. But do not worry. Perhaps Master Elias will give you a glimpse of her through the sightless eye. If he deems you worthy, go inside and present yourself to him. Entering the palace's gloom, Lorith warns. Damn, this is worse than I thought. Elias has the sightless eye. It's ancient magic. He can see anywhere with it. Across time, even. Time? What a vexed relic for our enemy to possess. Searching for the pale man to the northeast, we're greeted. Our flock has grown. Behold, the wonders that the mother has in store for you. Already we see bleeding statues of Lilith, and our heart sinks. Inside the inner gardens, we hear what sounds like fighting, but instead we see nobles praying by one of Lilith's cultists as he summons a succubus. <laughs> The illusion is then made clear. These anointed nobles own pride is weaponized against them as they already believe they're a caste above others and therefore erroneously see themselves as worthy masters of demons as well, which a nearby noble confirms. Raise your heads high, champions of Lilith! Never again will we fear demons! They will serve us in the war to come. Words cannot begin to describe the misguided arrogance. We then hear a nearby noble's prayer. Mother, bless me with your power. And whatever you ask of me, it will be done. Locating Elias's inner sanctum, a noble guarding his quarters permits. Go forth and stand in judgment before Master Elias. But show no fear, no hesitation. Don't worry, we won't. Inside we see the pale man mid-prayer. Blessed Mother. I will not fail you again. The maiden will walk this.
this world. Interrupting the master of the new triune, Elias spins on us, taunting. You should have stayed in that little cabin, hoarding your regrets. I am beyond you. This is over. We should find the Sightless Eye while we still have time. We can't leave it with these fanatics. Hold on. I see something. Blood petals. Checking the blood petals, we're ripped into a vision of the recent past. Mephisto, Diablo, Baal, the ruination of sanctuaries imminent. And yet you doubt. Only zealots and fools are completely certain, Mother. If we are to be saved, it will be by your hand. I have not come to save. To empower. In my shadow, the strong will oppose the might of hell itself. Let the weak fend for themselves. Another vision. Lilith thinks the prime evils will destroy Sanctuary, and she's empowering people to stand against them. That's why she and Elias are gathering followers. They're building a bloody army. Yes, Lorath. The Lords of Hell threaten our existence, and we are doing something about it. Elias! How are you still alive? You will never understand what I have done for this world. Elias, the somehow resurrected fallen Herodrum, flings blood magic at us, summoning a demon to be a champion of Lilith, reminding us of the demon we felled in Genbar's cave. Elias then scoffs. After all these years, this is the best you can do! As Elias stalks the stairs, we hurl a blood wave at our foe as a frustrated lure of questions. Why won't the bastard die? We can't keep bashing our heads against him like this. He'll wear us down. We need to escape, but not without the sightless eye. If we can take it, that'll rob him of some power at least. The sightless eye. We find just ahead a bloody altar to Lilith and a tome embossed with demonic ruins at the stairs which reads. In the mountains, the mother and I saw a village. The people, cold and hungry, prayed to a light that would give them no warmth. But in her presence, a new fire was stoked in their hearts. They would never go hungry or feel cold again. He must be speaking of Nevesk. What a twisted take on the bloody butchering that transpired there. And Myas's mind must be broken to believe Lilith was anything but a malevolent matriarch. It's only deep in the halls of the Master to the northwest does Elias re-emerge appealing. I sense the blood of Lilith in you, Wanderer. You received her blessed communion. Open your heart to her. Embrace your nature. Never. The fallen Herodrum again opens a volley of blood magic attacks at us. 
supremely confident in his ability to never fall in battle he ridicules. You will give up at some point, old man. It's what you always do. As the battle wears on, in a now familiar rhythm, he mocks. <laughs> you think killing me again will have a different outcome? As Lorith pierces Elias's side with his polearm, blood sprays across his face and he gags. Ugh, that stench. It's unnatural. Some kind of necromancy. Where did he find this power? Necromancy? But we've never heard of self-resurrection, save whispers of our patron Rathma. Stepping into the bloody hall, holding the sightless eye, its guardian, Elias, greets. Are you looking for the eye, Lorath? Taking it will change nothing. It is too late to stop what Lilith has begun. Again, we initiate a now all too familiar dance as Elias scoffs. Oh, you can do better than this, can't you? Incensed at his former master, he spits. Ugh, stop holding back, Laura! Now, with crazed supplicants empowering the pale man, we contend with them first, and hopefully, for a final time, we watch as Elias falls. Here it is. The sightless eye. Mashif can help us get the artifact far from this place, but we need to hurry before Elias returns. That opening over there is our best chance of escape. Exiting via the small gap in the wall into the outer gardens, we descend the stone, making a dash back to Mashif, and find we are too late. Put pressure here. We need to stop the bleeding. It seems I've lost a step in my old age, eh, Dracata? <laughs> no. Hey, <coughs> you made it. Did you kill that sorcerer fellow? Don't talk. The storm was broken. We'll get you out of here. Oh, it's a shame. <coughs> I got mine, just a hair too late. Sneaky devil poked me in the back. <sighs> Skewered like a quill rat. So it goes. Eh, hey, dear God. Aye. So it goes. They'll be coming. I'm taking the sightless eye. We need a safe place to study it. Use it against them. We'll meet at the desert chapel. Go. We then make a somber solo trip back to the desert palace to meet Tyson and Lorth and explain. I have news of Elias. Did you kill him? More than once, in fact. Trouble is, he won't stay dead. <laughs> he is more powerful than I thought. I underestimated him. So did I. But we took something important from him, at least. The sightless eye. I think he was using it to commune with Lilith from afar. A powerful piece of magic. And dangerous. Perhaps we can use it to our advantage. Give me some time to study it. The prime evils were reforming. Hell was coming. But Elias was not the answer to anyone's prayers. 
If you want to take the measure of someone, you judge them by their deeds, not their words. Simple as that. Elias preached of saving the world while standing atop a mountain of corpses. Then there was the Wanderer. Everything Elias was not. Tainted by Lilith's blood and yet able to resist her corruption. That was what I witnessed in the Wanderer's deeds. And that was when I started to think that perhaps together we could keep the evil at bay. Did you kill him? More than once, in fact. Trouble is, he won't stay dead. This is the story of Diablo 4, Act 4, the return of the Maiden of Anguish. In the wake of battling the Pale Man Elias in his desert palace, only to learn he was seemingly unkillable, we had absconded with his prized possession, the Sightless Eye. Unfortunately, upon our escape, our guide Mashif was slain. And so we returned to Thaisa in the Forsaken Chapel to find Lorith comforting her. Must have been gruesome in that cult of his. No more gruesome than the rest of Sanctuary's underbelly. Before we speak to her, we turn to Lorith apologizing. I'm sorry we couldn't save Mishinif. He deserved better. Damn it. I brought him into this. Thinking back to Elias's fanaticism, we ponder aloud. Unlike Elias, the Cathedral believes the prophecy is all about Inarius. Of course, their entire faith hinges on it. Inarius is the spear that will pierce hatred's heart. The knight's penitent to the weak made strong. Prava is the mother who will mold a new age from the ashes. They found a way to weave themselves into every part of it. Where did the sightless eye come from? It's a relic from when the world was young. For many years, an order of rogues called the Sisters of the Sightless Eye kept it safe. Not sure how they lost hold of it, but I've heard the Sisters are not as strong as they once were. Knowledge of their craft has spread to others, but most rogues you see these days are not true members of the order. Asking after the ailing woman's health, we inquire. Feeling better, Thaisa. I can shut out Andario's whispers most of the time, but not always. Better a whisper than having her walk the world again. Andario is part of Lilith and Elias's plan. But how? What do we know so far? Lilith made a deal with Astaroth. Hmm. A demon who served her father. Interesting choice of ally. And she has a key to hell. A place where she's seen as a traitor. So why would she go? And is she already there? We need answers. Elias used the sightless eye to contact Lilith. Perhaps it can help us. Bring it here, would you? It's risky, but we haven't got a choice. Retrieving the artifact, we delicately place it on the pedestal. When you're ready, picture Lilith in your mind and gaze into the eye. Following Lorith's instructions, we're immediately ripped into a disturbing vision. is reforming. How do you know? I feel it. Like a thousand old wounds ripped open again. He is still weak. Thunderbolt. I must strike before he can resist. Make his power yours. The other lords will What happened? She... saw me. She knows we're looking for her. Only a matter of time before she comes after us. 
Not necessarily. What do you mean? Mephisto is reforming. And Lilith aims to take his power while he is still weak. So... That's what you've been preparing for. All right, old man. Think. Think! If she takes Mephisto's power, she'll become like a prime evil herself. She'll be able to conquer hell and sanctuary alike. I have an idea how to stop her. But for it to work, we'll need the help of an old ally. Deliver this message to Dolman. <laughs> He'll have gone to Kyobashad for guidance. Message in hand, we inquire. If Lilith consumes Mephisto, could it help Sanctuary? It would strike a blow against Hell, that much is certain. But is it really for our benefit, as she claims? All her actions are driven by hatred. That is her nature, and she can never change it. You're saying she has plans beyond protecting humanity? I'm saying it's impossible to know. She can peer into hearts, tell us what we want to hear. You've seen it with Donan, Elias and others. To trust her would mean gambling with the fate of all humankind. Not a risk I'm willing to take. What did you write in the letter? The beginnings of a plan to thwart Lilith. One thing's for sure, we need a soul stone. And that means we need Donan. He'll understand when you deliver the letter. Asking. What do you know of Andariel? Thaisa then interjects. More than I care to now. Her pain is primal. Wordless. Once, she was part of something more. Ah, uh, she doesn't like me to think on it. As a quick aside for fans of the series' lore, it's most probable Thaisa was referring to Andariel once being part of the seven-headed dragon Tathamet in the universe's creation story, as explained by Lorith in the Book of Nar. Tathamet's blackened house gave birth to the burning hells, and each of the seven heads transformed into the seven great evils, each with dominion over their own realm. Returning to Kyovashad, we find inside the Cathedral of Light Donan, attending a sermon and in form. After... after everything... brushed aside. I have a letter for you, Donan. Good news for once, I hope. It's from Lorath. Oh, wonderful. So... Lorath... Lilith... Entering hell with this soul stone. What? Is he serious? What does it say? He didn't tell you? No, of course not. That would require some basic degree of consideration. It's written in our code. He sent a plan. Though calling it that is generous. He wants to imprison Lilith with my soul stone, the one that held Astaroth. Can it work? Certainly not. The stone needs to be attuned first, and he will need an expert for that. Lorath thinks that expert is you. Then he is even more foolish than I thought. <sighs> Go to the Horadric Vault, will you? I'll dig up what he needs. You can deliver it. And maybe then he'll leave me alone. Pre-departing for the vault, we question. Did you come to see Anarius? For all the good it did. After Skos Glen, I hoped he could give me... I don't know... Forgiveness? Guidance? Anything. He spoke of the prophecy. His campaign against Lilith. I offered my help. 
But all he said was, What use has a general for a broken soldier? Was there something in the letter that angered you? It's not what was in it, but what wasn't. He didn't even have the decency to mention it. Ah, it doesn't matter now. He's come down from the mountain, yes. But he's still the same man who went up. Speaking of Anarius, we see by the pulpit the angel giving a stirring sermon. Faithful penitents, a prophecy has been delivered to me. One that speaks of a glorious future. Tears of blood rain on a desert jewel, and the way to hell was torn asunder. Then came a spear of light, piercing hatred's heart, and he who was bound in chains was set free. You've all heard rumors of the demon Lilith, the daughter of hatred. It is my spear that shall pierce her heart. The chains that hold us to this world shall be cast off, and on my wings I shall lift us all to heaven! Seems Anarius is gearing up for war. With that chilling thought, we make haste to the Herodric Vault and meet Donan inside the foyer and query. Have you found your things? I haven't even gone in yet. We have an intruder. It's not like that. She's but a child. You brought a child? Here? It was she who brought me, actually. Inside the study, we soon locate Nairel asleep on a desk by the fire. <laughs> Watch where you swing that stuff! It's not a toy! Who is he? He once lived in this vault, the one you're trespassing in. Explain yourself. I'm a student, conducting research on the Haratrim. What's left of you all, anyway? A student, huh? You have a teacher? Don't tell me Loreth has taken another apprentice. <laughs> I don't need a teacher to study. Lilith... Lilith... threatens Sanctuary as we speak. I need to prepare for that. With <gasps> or without help. <laughs> you? Against Lilith? Well, I came to get my things. I pray they were free from your meddling. Following Darnan, he admits. I used to be like that girl. I had more dreams than I knew what to do with. Let me unseal this. Ooh, Chakit. Just beat him. The stone will need to be attuned to Lilith before Lorath marches up to her. It won't hold her well otherwise. I put together some notes on the process before I left. In the northern chamber, we discover Donan's notes as he shares. First things first, Lorath will need my notes. Soulstone magic is treacherous, even in the most skilled hands. In a southern study, we see on the floor a chronicle of the new Herodrum, in which Lorath writes of his old ally. The mage Donan has proved to be a wonderful addition to our order. The man has knowledge in spades. Any topic, even the most mundane, becomes profound in his care. He challenges my perspective in a way few have. We've made solid discoveries in the short time we've spent together. I suspect many more to come. And in a dusty workshop to the west, Donan reminisces. The old workshop? 
apartment. Lorat Elias and I would spend days on end cooped up in here, experimenting, debating. Nothing to hold us back but our own imaginations and how much of each other we could tolerate. To the northeast, Donan finds his needed research on the Soulstone attunement. Lilith hails from her father's domain. Hatred. That's the essence Lorath will need for the attunement. I kept a map. Somewhere. Ah, uh, here. All the places Mephisto's hatred yet lingers. There's just one last thing. And finally, in a central chamber by a desk past a Herodric seal, we ask, is that your Herodric amulet? Yes. I bet Lorath still wears his. The Order's mission was his lifeblood. I couldn't give up my life for it. Not like him. I wanted to be a man. I left to chase family, fellowship, glory. And for what? You saw how that ended. My son, I can't do it. It wouldn't work anyway. Donan. You don't understand. The stuff soul stones are made of. They're old as the eternal conflict itself. With magic so primordial, you need faith. You need spirit. I have none. What you lack in faith, you have in allies. <sighs> Who? You? Yes. You're the only one who can help us. <laughs> Unfortunately, you may be right. I can't make any promises. Really. But I can try. For you too? I'll try. Let's hear what the old man has to say. With Donan's final notes in hand, we exit the vault, passing Nayrell inquiring. Nayrell, what have you been up to? This place is a treasure trove. Look at this masterpiece. Kull has beyond the veil of the southern jungles. You're familiar with Kull has work? She's brilliant. One of my favorites. Mine as well. Have you read her treatises? Uh, never mind. You can tell me on the road. On the road? I'm going to help you. I know the Haradrim's ways, your magic, even that coded writing system you use. And, and don't tell me it's too dangerous. Lilith took my mother. I'll do whatever it takes to stop her. <laughs> That's a good speech. Might even convince the man you should be telling it to. Come on, I'm headed to him. But your Horodrim, isn't this your vault? It was once. Now, I suppose time will tell. Before we leave, we wonder, are you going to reseal this vault? No, I don't think I will. If we fail, what would it matter whether all these secrets stay buried? How many people lived here in its heyday? Us three, Horadrim, Elias, Lorath, myself, and an angel, Tyrael. An angel? Like Inarius? Very different from him, fortunately. Tyrael set off before Elias did. I don't know what drew him away, but I could tell he was afraid. We fell apart after he left. I've been meaning to ask, what is a soul stone? It is a curse. The bane of the Haradrim, but also our greatest weapon. There's nothing like it in existence. The first Haradrim, 
used a set of soul stones to contain Diablo, Mephisto, and Baal. But such power comes at a cost. A soul stone must always be guarded. It consumes your days, your dreams. You become a prisoner just as much as the demon contained in the stone. And despite your efforts, the evil eventually finds a way to break free. Even so, I know of no better way to contain a demon. I wish I did, though. Turning to Nairel, we probe. Find what you were looking for in the vault? I've only scratched the surface, but that will have to be enough. Lilith won't be stopped by studying alone. We then leave the vault, perhaps for the final time, meeting Donan and Nairel and the others as night falls in the desert's forsaken chapel once more, and over here. You were right to call upon me, you know. Soul stones are no trifle. There's the Donan I remember. I need air. Interrupting this little meeting of the minds, we ask Nairel, what's going on? I'm still muddy on the details of this plan. The bones are there. Lilith aims to take Mephisto's power for herself. Before she can reach him, we use the soul stone on her. Preparing the stone will take time we don't have. Why don't we fight her? Who among us? You. Her corrupted blood still runs in your veins. No. Fighting her kind is always a last resort. Even if you could defeat her, she'd eventually come back. But a smarter weapon, the stone, would be up to the challenge. So stones usually fail, given enough time. It might not work. You can make it work. There's no one I trust more to do it. The wind is picking up. I can't... I can't see her. Taisa! I'll find her. Chasing after Nairel into the sudden storm, we stop dead in our tracks as we see a familiar figure looming over a comatose Taisa in the circular clearing ahead. You're fumbling in the eye. Let me write to your little cap. You! If you hurt her, <laughs> hurt her! I elevated her! The runes ink into her skin form a waypoint. She is a beacon across realms! Get her out of here! It matters not. Her part is done. Your part is done too. Savor your breath. While it lasts. You then hear an approaching clanking of chains as an agonized room chain statue binds us. Confronted with the horrifying visage of a charred maiden of anguish, we see the lesser evil is bound by her arms to some type of restraining contraption, no doubt to keep her under the yoke of Elias and Lilith. Dario then begins to waft in and out of the battleground at will, keeping us caged inside the storm as she emanates fiery trails of blood and fire, while simultaneously releasing ghastly projectiles. When all the while attempting to root us in place with runic chains to cement our doom. As the battle drags on, the Maiden of Anguish unbinds herself from her stocks, falling forward as her four poisonous appendages break free. Expertly utilizes her bonds as fiery whips in a deadly arc and savagely strikes us with her stingers when we are caught in her trap. We step too close to the demoness with an effortless backhand. She sends us flying backwards towards the sandstorm as the fight drags on, 
We realize the storm is closing around us and use a well-timed blood wave that sends the demon into a fit of agony before her body burns up. Atop her charred remains, we collect some trinkets as well as some legendary gloves and look around, seeing for the first time the storm has abated. Making a break for the church, the Herodric duo are seen holding up magic barriers and puzzle. Oh. Oh. Hell of a storm. What happened out there? We then report to Lorith. Elias summoned Andariel. Bloody hell. He finished the ritual from the volcano then. Elias. That's the man who summoned Lilith. You're saying he summoned a lesser evil too? Keep up, girl. Is Andariel gone? Yes. And Elias? He fled. Before going to the steps, Elias came to Hauza, took something that wasn't his. It's why I'm hunting him. I have a friend in Hauza who has mastered the art of immortality. She might know his secret. Let me take you to her. I thought we were after Lilith, not Elias. Finding him may lead to her. And while we look for him, you'll have time to work on the stone. That's what you wanted, isn't it? Ah, damn it, I'll bite. On one of those rare occasions you gave me good advice. You said the answers you need are often in the place you least want to look. It was you who said that. Ah, you're right. <laughs> Let's get the horses ready. Outside the chapel, we asked Donan, did you know Elias well? I thought I did. He was Lorath's student in the Order. It used to be just the three of us. He was young then. I guess we all were. His thinking was always radical. But I never thought... I never thought it would come to this. We then approach Thaisa nearby as she packs and query. Your hunt for Elias, is it personal? Huh. Not at first. But then he almost killed me. Marked my skin. Put a demon in my head. I will take pleasure from his death. The hunt will soon be over. You've angered him. He will come to you. And I will be there when that happens. If fate allows, let it be my hand that ends him. And finally, report to Lorith. The others are ready. Listen, I didn't mention it earlier, but uh, you did well. You stood against Andario, a lesser evil, and lived. That's no ordinary feat. But don't let it go to your head. The arrogance and foolhardy never last long in Hauzar. I wonder what old Deckard Cain would have written in his chronicles if he had seen us. Two old friends reunited. New allies eager to learn from our vast knowledge. Bound as one against the encroaching darkness like the Haradrim of old. <laughs> they were probably lost and bitter just like us. But Cain had a gift for seeing the good in people. One thing was certain at least. Lilith meant to devour Mephisto and claim his power as her own. Had that been her goal all along? Not sanctuary, but a bid to reign in hell. And Elias, the damned fool, was too blind to see it. Perhaps we weren't perfect, but we knew we had to make a stand. We were the world's only hope. Arriving in the swampy capital city of Zabanzet, in the western province of Hauazar, we find the town, an outpost of soldiers of the Zakarum faith. Near the center of town, we locate our motley crew of adventurers banded together, 
In efforts of tracking down Lilith's right hand, the seemingly immortal Elias. You were a student of Elias's, Thaisa? I was hunting Elias. Pretending to study with him was useful to me. We then query Thaisa, how are we going to stop Elias? We must break his hold on immortality. He cannot continue to escape his judgment. Yes, and without Elias we may have more success against Lilith. Where do we start? Seek out Timoe in the marshes. She traded with the power in the swamp and received long life. She may have the answer to killing Elias for good. Nayral and I will start looking for her. What about Donan? He has his hands full with the Soul Stone. A heavy burden to bear alone. Might be wise to offer him assistance. Turning to Taisa, we ask. Who is Timoe? An old acquaintance who has lived in this place for countless years. She taught me much about the swamp and its power, though that was a long time ago. She might try to turn you away. Do not let her. And what do you know of Sabinset? It is a town at the edge of Hawazar, forever between Sanctuary's power and the swamps. But Hawazar is a part of Sanctuary, yes? Ah, is it? Confused, we dutifully seek out Donan to join the party, finding him by a Zacharum priest up some stairs, asking, Will you journey with Lorith and Nairel into the swamp? They're on the trail of Elias. I think not. I have to take care of the Soul Stone. Lorith will be fine alone. Northeast of here is a Zakarum keep. We know hatred has a strong presence there. Perhaps we can use it to prepare the Soul Stone to trap Lilith. I could use your assistance if you're able. With our path divided, we regard the stout man and notice. I see you're wearing your Herodric amulet now. It doesn't have sharp edges like that cathedral pendant. That's a benefit. Makes me think I shouldn't have taken it off in the first place. Tell me, what happens between you and Lorith? If you asked him, he'd say I abandoned the Horadrim's ways. But all I wanted was to broaden our horizons. Forge new allies with the cathedral. Start a family of my own. The thing about Lorith, it's hard for him to get close to people. And even harder to let them go. Coincidentally, if we had probed Lorith earlier about his relationship with Donan, we can ask, were you and Donan friends? Friends? Did he tell you that? If he thinks so, you should ask him what happened. I don't care anymore. It seems you still care. I'm starting to think taking you on this journey was a mistake. Choosing to first aid Donan with preparing his soul stone by attuning it to the power of hatred. We meet him deep in the swamps to the east, where we find he has made camp out front of the ruins of Rakat Keep, and he greets. Do you feel that? Mephisto's touch is heavy here. All that hatred. It's just what we need to attune the soul stone. To make it ready for Lilith. I'm too old to climb, but you can get in and open the portcullis. Before we climb the hazardous crumbling walls, we inquire, where are we? The fitful resting place of a Zakarum leader pursued by Mephisto. A group of holy paladins built the keep and entombed the body within. Looks abandoned now, though. Looks abandoned being the key word. By the way, Taisa said something strange, that Hauzar isn't part of Sanctuary. Did she? She could be right. Even the air feels laden with an otherworldly sort of magic. With that obscure assertion, we deem Donan's assessment wholly accurate. The air has a strange quality to it, though we don't get to explore this thought much further, as the interred dead paladin skeletons rise up to meet us. As promised, we locate the gate of the keep shut tightly to the inner court. Skirting the outer rim, 
we find a toppled statue to one paladin of note, Marshall Carthus, who is the canonical paladin of Diablo 2, and I have explored his quest extensively in a standalone video which will be in the end cards of this lore play. Post scaling the treacherous walls of the keep filled with undead paladin defenders, we find, as promised, a gate winch that we raise. Once opened, Donan meets us and exclaims, We are finally back. Hurry, everything here makes my skin crawl. Following Donan to the entry, we see extravagant tapestries depicting Sanka Kerr becoming Mephisto's host and the Lord of Hatred's subsequent defeat at the hands of the Paladin. However, we do not dally as we hear a bone-chilling howl in the distance. Do you hear that? How strange. Are there wolves in Hawazar? Donan then trudges inside the foul undercrypts, and we hesitantly follow behind. Inside, we're met with mountains of bones, Donan remarks. It feels worse here somehow. This must be the place. Following a pair of rats down some stairs, a path is barred by ancient paladin protectors of the tomb. Ostensibly, they still work in the service of the light. However, it seems they've been twisted to serve hate in a mockery of their former allegiance in life. After putting down the leader of the re-risen, Donan then admits. I haven't fought much since I was a young man. I've lost the grit for it. Seeing no glyph on the door to Sanka Kerr's tomb, we opt to use brute force to bash it in, in tandem. In the center of the black tomb, we locate Sanka Kerr's obsidian casket that, after all these years, still emanates hate and menace. Whatever else is here, hatred persists. Strong enough to attune the Soul Stone. Creation dan tenis beri dis tom hiklimon. Damn it! What's wrong with it? The Herodrum, perplexed with his failed incantation, is aghast to see a manifestation of hate climb its way out of the tomb, enraged at our intrusion. <laughs> With a foul fiend felled, we see Donan slumped over and check. Did it work? Come on. Come on, you old fool. What's wrong with it? Why won't... Oh no. This is worse than I thought. It must have been damaged when you're in... Astaroth. Do you know how to repair it? We'll need... Rare materials, Quicksilver to start, and tools, alchemical tools. There's a village near here. We'll see if they have what we need. Meet me there when you can. Nestled atop a hilltop above the virulent Bloodpox Basin, we meet Donan, as instructed in the nearby village of Wedgenhani, finding him probing the locals for ingredients to fix the damaged soul stone. I'll say it once more. Whatever it is you're looking for, we don't have. We then ask, is there a problem? The town doesn't seem to have anything that we need. We're a village in the middle of a swamp. There must be something. I can feel the magic in this swamp, and where there is magic, there are users of magic. If a witch is what you want, go to the tower then. Fire's lit, she's home. Sounds as though we go to meet a witch of the swamp. Be on guard. Locating the nearby rumored ruined tower, we cautiously open the large doors and discover a surprisingly familiar face. Thaisa? <laughs> You're the witch in the tower? 
Horadrim. I thought you journeyed to the keep. Yes, well... Cutting to the point, we explain. Taisa, we need your help repairing the Soul Stone. And why would I help you? Well, we all want Elias dead. We do. But fixing the Soul Stone, that is about Lilith, and she does not concern me. I don't need much, just Quicksilver and the tools you have there. <laughs> Such small asks rarely remain so. Surely you must know this. But you did help me survive Andaril's summoning. So, my tools are yours. You will have to go to Valtha for Quicksilver, though. Find her, and she will give you what you need. Before searching for this Witch of the Waste, we speak to our current allies, asking Donan, how do you feel about repairing the Soul Stone now? The Haradrim have studied the Soul Stone for generations. I have studied it for more than 20 years. But there aren't enough books in Sanctuary to contain what we don't know about it. It will take a miracle. But that's what you expect from me, isn't it? What do you think of Taisa? Well... Yes, Haradrim. What do you think of me? I've been... My life has kept me in Skors Glen for many years now. I haven't met anyone like her, you, since before my son was born. Strange as it may sound, you remind me of what it was like to be young. To adventure. To encounter danger? To believe I can defeat it. Look, I didn't say it before, but I'm sorry about your and... Yes. Yes, I am too. If I had written to Lorith and stayed in Eldheim. If I raised Yorin to be a scholar rather than a soldier. It doesn't matter. We then ask Taisa, who exactly is this Valtha? Sister in trade and service. But don't think that we are your witches from folk tales. Valtha is no potion dealer. Tread lightly with her. We were surprised to see you here. Why have you returned to Wedjinhani? Because I have chosen to. You will make Elias mortal. I will be there to collect his debt. Exiting the Witch's Tower, we begin our hunt deep in the cinder wastes to the east. Finding Valtha's hovel is infected with demonic taint as the ashen countryside is accompanied by roaming, burning dead. Disposing of the scorched skeletons, we see a body hanging out front of the hovel and hope it's not that of the witch. Scrounging around her empty abode, we see, outside of the main piles of bones, a nearby spellbook on a desk that reads, The prophecy lives in my dreams. Sanctuary falls, and I along with it. But Elias says there is another path, Lilith. I feel a connection with her, deep in my bones. I know she is the answer. Cursing that we're too late, we see further proof of the crone's corruption in her manifesto stating, What my sisters do not understand is that we have more in common with Lilith than that with her enemies. The tree may exist outside of the eternal conflict, but we don't. Our survival lies with the Mother of Sanctuary. Searching for the Quicksilver in her volatile cauldron, we instead find it simply reeks of demonic fire, sulfur ash, and blood. Leaving empty-handed, we're intercepted by the witch. Do you have a habit of snooping around other people's homes? Hands up in supplication, we explain. Valtha, Thaisa sent me to get your help. Thaisa has unknowingly sent you to your death. In the end, she will see the foolishness of her pursuit of Elias, and she will know that Lilith is our future. We soon learn why she chose this fiery pit as her home. 
Without hesitation, the hag flings fireballs at us, making meteors rain from the very sky, extinguishing the witch's flame, she recalls. Like in a dream. And we pluck the purified Quicksilver off her remains, making haste back to the others as night falls. Donan then welcomes. Ah, you're back. Place the purified Quicksilver in that bowl on the table. Before beginning the ceremony, we ask of Taisa, how has Donan been? Even more restless than before. He's lost a son, and inside his grief chips at him every moment he refuses to face it. And how was my sister? Valtha chose Lilith over your friendship. Elias convinced her to join him. That can't be. She would have known not to trust Elias. It wasn't Elias that seduced her, but Lilith. She found her ideals convincing. <sighs> Valtha was my teacher. She guided me when I first began my service. This is... <sighs> Difficult to believe, I know. I've seen my allies throw their lot in with Lilith. People I thought were stronger than that. But that is why we must press on and mend the stone so no one else will fall to her lies. First off, the... that the Quicksilver mix some of it into the pot. Hoping Donan is up for the task, we begin following his instructions. Raise the flame. Turn the wheel um, twice. Or is it three times? Give it another turn. The sulfur. Grind it in the mortar. Sha shall you kill me? Sha shall you kill me? Sha shall you kill me? No, it's not working. Ah! Speak to me outside. I told you. I told you. I'm not the man you want or need. Taisa then confides in us. He is not up to the task. What can we do? I suspect he no longer trusts himself. We cannot erase all his doubt. But his most recent grief, his son, there is a way. He won't enjoy it, though. Why help him? You could simply leave us to our fates. Everyone needs a reminder every now and then that you can defeat danger. You only have to try. Haradrim! Come here. What? Why? I want to take you somewhere. A place of old power in this swamp. I think it will do you some good. With Donan's mind being made whole seemingly the key to the incantation, we do not pretend to fully understand Thais's intent, yet obediently accompany the two to the hungering swamps. Why do we go to this place? There's nothing left for me to do. Can't you see that? Let me return. Return? Return where? <sighs> no, Haragrim. You will remain with us. There is still more to do. Locating the entrance to the Hungering Swamp, we discover it is a ritual ground, and approaching a ramshackle hut in its centre, the mage Donan perks up. Light. 
Do you feel that? The swamp's magic is more potent here. We then ask of Taisa as she leans over her cauldron. Taisa, what are we doing here? Valtha brought me to this place when I was younger. Here, you can face your demons, whether they be fear or grief. Who is... No. No, I've had enough of this. And what will you do instead, hmm? Nothing in this swamp is free, Haradrim. Not even your magic. Whatever logic you think will win the day, you are mistaken. I... Where is your sense of adventure, huh? Not buried in your youth, is it? <laughs> Go outside and make an offering to the swamp. A ring, a necklace, something you hold dear. While you do, our friend here will collect two things, maggot ichor and yellow lotus. This is foolish. With Donan sulking as he saunters into the swamp, we inquire of Taisa. Will you make an offering to... Not today. But a time will come when I must shed the unrest that plagues me. Were you very close to Valtha? Valtha forged me into the witch I am. I struggle with her death. I understand where she saw a future in Lilith. The mother of Sanctuary isn't so different from the witches of Hawazar. But I won't ever shirk my duty in bringing Elias to justice. That is the part of Valtha I will never understand. Ambling into the menacing marshes, we cut a swath through all manner of wretched wildlife, including the humanoid swamp spawns to the northwest that guard the Yellow Lotus. And to the southwest, we discover the grubby lair of a maggot queen. Furious, we dispatched her brood like chaff before the wind. We then scoop up the maggoty queen's icor. And are immediately glad it is Donan who has been tasked to drink the vile bile-like brew. Returning to the ritual site, Thaisa instructs. Good. Make haste. The Haradrim tires of waiting. Set the swamp's gift in the pot to brew a tea. I simply think this is a waste of your time and mine. Do you see the braziers? Light each of them. Then we will drink the tea and wait. Lighting each of the fires, we can then begin the ritual. Wait for what? For the swamp to call out to your soul and draw what festers from you, like poison from a wound. Just... 
father. I'm ready. Finding ourselves in another twisted vision of the bloodied wolf, aka Mephisto, who greets. Didn't I warn you the Horodrum would only hold you back? Look at them, <laughs> so consumed by their emotions that they forget what really matters. Lilith is the true threat, not Elias. I know why you're so afraid of her. My fate is tied to yours. If she devours me, sanctuary is lost. But you still have a chance to stop her. What if I opened a portal for you out of this swamp? Let the Horatron deal with Elias. He is their sin to bear. You and I can work together to stop Lilith. I know who my real allies are. My friends. Take me back to them. The day of reckoning will come. And your true friends will be revealed. Now, take the portal back to your allies. Tired of Mephisto's games, we inform. The Herodrum aren't the only ones trying to stop Lilith, you know. I wouldn't put your hope in Inarius, if that's who you mean. The Angel was my prisoner. I have seen his true face. He and Lilith are not as different as you might think. What do you mean, Inarius and Lilith are not so different? The Angel was already filled with hate when he became my prisoner. All I did was refine his anger. When he escaped back to your world, he brought it with him. Turning our back on the wolf to leave, he arrogantly muses. If Lilith prevails, You'll only have yourself to blame. Seeing through the wolf's bravado, it seems like the Lord of Hatred has just as much to lose as us. Despite his monuments to his own grandeur, exiting the portal, we find we're back at the ruined tower and find Thaisa and Donan querying. How is he? I don't know yet. He wandered around for hours until the tea wore off. A long journey through the swamp is more rewarding than a short one. Yours was even longer, it seems. Did you face your inner demons as the Haradrim did? Yes. Hopefully for the last time. We then discover Donan working furiously, and he declares with renewed vigor. Let us begin. Mix the quicksilver in the pot. And the fire. Turn the wheel twice. No more, no less. Now grind the sulfur. Carefully. Ma! 
pilot. Was it so easy then? You have no idea the toll of such a thing. No idea what one must face. Overcome to perform this act of magic. Perhaps not. But still. Enough. It is done. Let us not tarry. Yes. We have our task at Zakarum Keep. Let's finish this. In the serpent-infested southeastern swamps of the Dark Dross, we catch up to Narell and Lorith who complains. Oh, what a lonesome place to come seeking knowledge. He must have thought he had no choice. Neither do we. We then inquire, any luck finding Timue? Another set of eyes, at last. We've been searching for Timue with little success. Slaughtering the many slithering snakes, Nairel questions. Do you think Elias knew Taisa before she went to his palace? I don't know, Nairel. What do you know? Many things I wish I didn't. When arriving at the gate of Timue's hovel, nestled in a southern nook, we inform Lorith before stepping inside. There's something you should know. Donan's ritual, it failed. The soul stone was damaged, but luckily he has repaired it. I never doubted his mastery of the stone. It's his state of mind I'm worried about. He'll need my help for his next go at the ritual. Keeping our mind at the task in hand, we enter Timoe's abode and she evaluates. Hmm. Only two kinds of people come looking for old Timoe. Those running away from trouble, and those running toward it. Which kind are you, I wonder? Dispensing with pleasantries, we inform. We're hunting a man named Elias. Never heard of him. We think Elias made a pact with the swamp to become immortal. Thaisa said you could help, but... Thaisa. Only she would be cold-hearted enough to send a child to die out here. We've no intention of dying. One of you will. That's the way it always ends. Go back where you came from. I won't have a child's blood on my hands. I saw my mother possessed by Lilith. Driven so mad, it killed her. I'm not a child anymore. So be it. If this Elias made a pact, it was with the Tree of Whispers. There are many paths to reach it. But the nearest is in Ingovani. A sacred incense is kept in the temple there. Retrieve it, and your path to the tree begins. Go to Ingovani. Nairel and I will see if we can get some more information out of Timoy. Before leaving for this tree of whispers that we ourselves had only heard whispered rumors of its dangerous existence, we interrogate Timoe, probing. Thaisa said you had traded with the swamp for long life. How? Yes. 
I was infected with the swamp's poison. And I made a pact with the tree out of fear. So now I give it knowledge, and in exchange it keeps me one step away from the grave. I wish it would just let me go. But a pact made cannot be broken. Sounds like bartering with this tree has dire consequences. How does Thaisa know you in all of this? She was like you once, standing here in my hut, asking to be set on the path. And you will be like her, taking the answers you need and never looking back. And what is so important about this temple? The swamp nests in the roots of the Tree of Whispers. This is how each path begins. The temple at Ingovani rests on one root, but it is no less or more important than any other root. Left to mull on Timaway's riddles, we locate to the northwest the remains of the town of Ingovani. Now infested with serpent cultists and their kin, we find a shrine to Lilith and realize her influence too is present in the swamp. To the west, we spy a shrine to a three-headed snake and cast our mind back to a similar shrine we'd found in Elias's study in the palace of Gul'ran. Nearby is a large circular engraved stone door and we reflect. Mm, the door bears an image of a snake. Her eyes are missing. Perhaps returning them here is the key to opening the way. Indeed. Our instincts prove correct as we happen upon a thieves' encampment to the north, overrun by various serpents. Too late to stop a dying bandit's poison taking his life, we ask, what happened here? The villagers, those fools. They wouldn't listen when we demanded the gems to open the temple. Death found them. It's the way of things. But I hear them still, their warnings. Four of us are dead now, and I am soon to follow. Plucking the ruby left eye off the introspective bandit's fresh remains, we begin our hunt for the right eye. It's below the morass of misery, we stumble into the sight of a destroyed serpent shrine. With cultists devoured, we cannot help but wonder if their serpentine masters simply decided they were best used as sustenance. As we retrieve the topaz gem off his corpse, Nagari serpents attempt to defend their treasure, snakelets in comparison to their colossal kin. With both gems in our possession, we race back to the serpent door, placing each in their socket. Searching the slithering dark, we find the money cavern mostly empty, save for the odd nagari and plague swarms, the moisture making a formidable breeding ground. However, deep in the cave system, cultists begin to spring forth, protecting something no doubt of value, and we unearth a nest of sorts, filled with snake eggs and great treasure, and we declare this must be it opening an incense box neath another three-headed snake statue. We're immediately stunned, and the terrible snake queen, Molon, erupts from the ground like a force of nature, spewing vile venom in our direction. And as we dodge streams, we haphazardly disturb her brood as they too burst forth from their eggs to quell our intrusion. Infuriated at the death of her offspring, Molon viciously whips a meaty barbed tail, sending us hurtling backwards against the wall. The final dastardly trick is to summon hypnotic orbs to stun us. As a summoned spawn attempt to curry favor with their mother and attack us in unison. We then summon the remainder of our fleeting strength to project a wave of blood that sends the snake sprawling. 
We then retrieve her mystic incense. The strong earthy scent clings to the back of our throat and makes our head swim. Departing the putrid pothole, Nayrel and Lorth stand out front, and we think back to Elias's statue of Molon asking the Herodrum, why do you think Elias sought immortality in the first place? The ritual to summon Lilith would have been demanding. Perhaps he was afraid he wouldn't survive it. And I'm sure he expected to make enemies along the way. Then he is cunning as he is ruthless. On the plus side, I think we have what we need. Good, you found the incense. I'll keep it safe for us. While you were gone, Timue warmed up to us. <laughs> Well, to Lorath. He's surprisingly nimble with old women. Nairal. <laughs> she says there's an altar. That's what the incense is for. It's not far from here. Catching up to the duo in the misshapen labyrinth to the northeast, they discuss confused. But why did Tyrael believe the Haradrim would be a solution? We weren't a solution, we are... The world needs protectors. Confused, we then ask. What do we do now? The incense should provide us with the path to the tree. What sort of path, I can't say. I can say that the time for questions, Nairal, has passed. To the north, we find an ambush awaiting us at an altar. Damn. They must have tracked our scent. When you're ready, light the incense. Under the auspices of twin snakes, we light the incense and everything becomes hazy. What now? We wait for the path to appear. I think it worked. How long were we out? I don't know, but I see something. Following the giant serpent as it cuts a swath through the fanged marsh, Nairel marvels. <laughs> this creature, it's magnificent. I can see myself in the scales, walking on them like a path through the swamp. The serpent is the path. Serpent? What are you talking about? You don't see it? No. Only a cloud of smoke. Oh. As we trail the snake's path, Lorath exclaims. Bloody hell. I see the serpent now. What do the scales show you? A deer caught in a trap. Uh, why 
Watch out! forward oh, there's an opening beneath the serpent just big enough for me I think it wants me to go through don't be ridiculous we must follow the path is this dream snake helping us or or did it corral us here Following the snake into the venom-drenched path, Nayrel pauses and we check. Is something wrong? Can you feel it? The swamp is watching us, whispering to us. It's the incense, playing with our heads, just, just an illusion. He hears us. Just as you do, Wanderer. The old man is full of secrets like our thief, Elias. Birds of a feather. Perhaps that is what we need. To the east, the snake's body bars our path once again, and Nayrel cleverly discerns. There's no way through this time. Oh, it's wounded, though. Or is it telling us to wound it? <laughs> Look at that! Look at that! Ruthless! Flippant! How many ruthless Haradrim? Hang from our branches. Not enough. <laughs> so many come seeking answers. So many fail. Will you die like these souls? With a question still on your lips. Shut up, shut up. You aren't real. <laughs> we are real. And so is the Lord of the Swamp. To get the answers you seek, you must offer payment. I head for knowledge. Not yet. They have another purpose first. The voices, seemingly in need of us, have the snake remove itself from our path. I know you heard the voices that time. Who were they? I don't know. We can't trust anything here, but we need to press on. Following the path revealed by the snake, we locate, at the end of the swamp, a great tree of hanging heads, and they real questions. That... is that... The Tree of Whispers. After a man named Elias. Elias. Slippery, that one. He owes the tree. It deals in thoughts and insight in exchange for a head. He is the first of us to escape payment. Will you tell us what you told him? If we can stop him for good, the tree can finally collect. Hmm.
He sought the way to summon Lilith, but he made another stop on the way. To a place beyond the tree's sight. That might explain his hardiness. I've damn near lost count of how many times we've killed him. So that's why Taisa failed so dismally to reclaim his head. This place Elias stopped at. How can we get there? Seek a coffin beyond the wrecks. It will take you where you must go. Find out what secrets linger there. For the tree knows not. With the tree only hinting at our final destination, we ask of Lorith, where do we go from here? If there are wrecks to search, they'll be on the eastern coast. We'll head there now. Meet us when you can. Guided by the Tree of Souls to the supposed place, Elias achieved immortality. We begin our trek to the eastern shore, catching up with Lorith and Nerel as they make camp in a sheltered overhang discussing. Rothma's prophecy spoke of a serpent, right? If Elias knew that too, maybe he came looking for it. Did he ever tell you what he was planning? No. By that point, he wasn't my student anymore. What happened? Yes, Nerel's right. It's time you told us what happened between you and Elias. The moment Elias heard Rathma's prophecy, it poisoned him. He became obsessed with it. Prophecies are riddles. Not even the very wise can be sure of their meaning. But Elias believed he could solve it. And when I told him to wait, he called me a fool. Said we had to do whatever. You tried to stop him? Tried, yes. And failed. It'll be different this time. Let's find that damn coffin. We begin our search for our coffin by the wrecks to the east, spying a mass of ships broken and deserted. Any sign of it? Hmm. There's something at the far end of those ships. I see it too. We'll have to cross the wreckage to reach it. Gingerly jumping between wrecks, we're soon assaulted by the drowned. Merciless marauders, we had heard that they had thrown in their lot for whatever their sea god had promised. Contending with their quartermaster, Nayrel quickly appraises. I think I can unlock the door from the other side. All right, go. However, we soon hear her scheme is gone. Terribly wrong. It's here! Just a... <laughs> Dispatching the drowned, we break through the door and find their ilk assaulting the downed girl. Damn it, what was I thinking? No, no. It burns. This is not good. Damn drowned. My arm. You've been infected. It's spreading. We have no time. I must remove the drowned necrosis. I don't understand. Aura, are you certain? I'm certain she's dying. Hold her. We have no choice. Now hold her. I will 
not fail you. Go on ahead to the coffin. I'll look after him. Forced to leave Lorath to tend to his new apprentice's wound, the disembodied voice of the Tree of Whispers informs in our ear. Close. You're getting close. The edge of our sight. The limit of our knowledge. You see the way, don't you? Inside is the thing Elias hides, the source of his immortality. Fear not this cradle. Colder breaths than this await you yet, traveler. Washed up inside the temple, we find we are miraculously unscathed and see an image of the necromantic serpent Tragul on the floor and an echo of Elias bars our path. Elias's presence still taints this place. Disgusted at the thought that this once temple of our order has been tainted by the power mad pale man, we resolve to find his secrets and quell his immortality for good. Among the many scrolls and tombs of knowledge, linger disturbed dead, rotting putrid remains that serve as sentinels for the forbidden knowledge therein. To the northeast, we see another spectre of Elias, produced by the temple to aid us, the true followers of Rathma, in putting down this heretic. Every tome, every scroll, Every book in this temple produces the same answer. The only being willing to stand against the eternal conflict, against the prime evils, was Lilith. The day I'm done with this self-righteous bastard will be a great one. To the east, we discover another echo of Elias as he pilfers the many scrolls in the library. Lilith, the mother of sanctuary. She made us to be strong and was sealed away to weaken us. The daughter of hatred. I cannot say that there is good in her. Morality is the privilege of people in better situations. We are beyond the question of good or evil. But the question remains. What will she do to us if I summon her? When I summon her? I must prepare myself for anything. Rathma kept the means of attaining immortality here. Once I have mastered it, I will go and bring the mother home. So it's true. Rathma did discover the key to immortality. We can only hope he had surreptitiously achieved it before his final meeting with his father. And to the north, 
the last echo is stumbled upon. When the mother of Sanctuary re-enters her world, it will change. But in the end, we will remain. We will survive. Rathma writes that when Inarius discovered Lilith's plan to overthrow the so-called natural order, he sealed her away. For thousands of years, Lilith has sought to elevate us out of this cycle. Has fought to secure us our birthright. Sanctuary. The secret of Elias's immortality must be deeper within. It's in the deepest recess of the temple. We find a shrine, and Elias's secret to immortality is laid bare. Well, well. Elias's finger. He bound his life essence to a piece of himself. Clever. Pocketing the finger, the temple immediately betrays us, filling with water, and we declare, I'm not going to die here. Awakening at the sheltered overhang, we're relieved to see Lorith sitting by an unconscious Nayrell and want to know, how is she? Still resting, but her fever is broken. I think she'll be alright. The road that comes after though, we shall have to see. He is hoping. How did I get here? I found you drifting in a coffin, clutching a severed finger. What happened? I'm not sure. The temple began to sink, and I thought I'd drowned. Temple? So the coffin was a gateway? What of Elias' immortality? He stored his life essence in a piece of himself. Burn it. Without hesitation, we toss the decrepit digit in the fire. Good. Let us end this then, once and for all. Let me end what I began. No one else is going to get hurt because of my choices. Uh, uh, no. No, it wasn't a dream. My arm, it's... It's really gone. You'll get through this. You're going to leave me, aren't you? You'll find a place where I can be taken care of. Do you want to be left behind? No! I just... don't want to be a burden. Then we won't leave you. It never crossed my mind. No more time to rest. You should check on Donan. We'll meet you at the Zakarun Keep later. On the precipice of ending Elias's demented charade, we portal back to Rakat's ruined keep, immediately hearing the bickering of the older Herodrum. You look tired, old man. Even for you. I can manage the ritual. If you could do it alone, it would have been done. We then ask Nayrel, how are you managing? The fever has broken, at least. Now it's just my hand. My arm. Throbbing. Lorath promises it will get better. <laughs> Hard to believe at the moment. Consulting the witch, we query. Taisa, why have you come? So much has been made of these Haradric arts. I decided to see for myself. And we ask of Lorath, will you be joining the ritual too? I will, unfortunately. And Nayrel must also. Donan might have finally got his head on straight, but the Soul Stone is our only weapon against Lilith. 
I will leave nothing to chance. And lastly, Donan, are we ready for this? Speaking for myself, yes, I believe I am. Ready to attune the Soul Stone, at least. As for what comes after, capturing Lilith, keeping her bound in the stone, we know how that's gone in the past. I have to believe it is up to us now. Not to the prophecy, Inarius, or anyone else. Entering the black tomb of Sanka Kerr for the second time, Donan rightly shudders. Something is wrong here. Nothing right about this place. Best do this quickly. With everyone in place, surrounding the sarcophagus for the ritual we inquire. We're all here. What happens now? Right, Lorat. We will inscribe the six sigils of Dendus in order, then- Follow with the second and fourth reversed. <laughs> it's nice to see you agree on something. Focus. Let us begin. Creation dan tenis beri dis tom iklimon. There. Do you feel that? What is it, witch? Someone is coming. It's Elias. He's here. We have to. <clears throat> Loras, don't you dare leave. No, I'll kill him myself. Thaisa races headlong into the foul undercrypts. As we trail behind, finding Elias waiting for us, as Thaisa threatens. The tree demands that you pay. And so do I. I will set your tree afire and cast your corpse upon the flames. I owe no one. But the mother. We find ourselves again in a bloody brawl with the pale man, who summons Succubi to his side and hurls blood magics with devastating ease. Blood magics he no doubt stole from our order in the sunken temple. Enraged, we answer his blood waves with our own torrent, and he stumbles back in surprise. How many times must we do this before you learn? My life is not yours to claim. I have been to the deepest chambers of the sunken temple, Elias. <laughs> You have no secrets from me. Although Elias escaped momentarily, we know he cannot get far wounded and without a secret weapon. Hoping to intercept him, we find Thaisa standing firm in the Plague Marsh, calling out, I am here! We then query, where is Elias? I lost him in the tunnels, but the swamp has him now. Haradrim, we were about to finish without you. He's still alive. Where is he? At the end of his bloody trail. This way. Following the blood trail, we intercept a fatigued Elias resting on a rock, no doubt due to blood loss. Taisa, I need to speak with him. Then do so, Haradrim. Zorath. <coughs> oh, Elias. Was all this worth it then? Truly? I brought Lilith to sanctuary. A thing no one thought possible. And when hell rises to sweep across this world, I should be there beside her, ready to push it back. You left me alone to 
cross the lines you would dare not attempt, and you have nothing to show for it. You are nothing but a wasted life. Do not look to forgive me, old man, because it is you who brought us here. Was it worth it? That is a coward's question, Lorath. It suits you. Elias of Aronok. Oh, spare me. Of your own free will, you swore an oath to the Tree of Whispers. This is not the life I deserve. <laughs> The tree does not forget oaths, and it does not forgive debts. It is time to let go. Shocked at the events, we return to Thaisa asking, What happens now Elias just lost his head? Ah, I hear laughter on the wind. Elias' head hangs from the Tree of Whispers, and your soul stone is attuned. This is where I leave you. Leaving? We go to face Lilith. I had hoped you would join us. I know the weight of your reasons, but Lilith remains your concern. Mine lies elsewhere. This is farewell, then. And uh, thank you for the tea. Take care of yourself, Donan. She called me by my name. Lorath won't believe. Where is he? I've not seen him since... since Elias spent his last words calling him a coward. And to prove his courage, he what? Rode to face Lilith alone? Elias never told us where to find her. But his head is on the Tree of Whispers. So the tree knows where Lilith is going. Lorath could ask, but he'll have to pay the price. What price? The same Elias paid. Eternity on the tree. Brother, no. Get to the tree now! Stop him! Chasing down the foolish Lorath, we indeed find him at the treacherous tree and exile. Lorath. What have you done? Lilith has been two steps ahead of us for far too long. The tree knew where to find her. I asked. Its answer was worth the price. Worth the price? You owe the tree your head. The day you die, you'll be taken to hang here with the others. And what? Did I need your permission? It's done. Put it aside. While we stand here in the mud, Lilith is on her way to absorb Mephisto's power. She has found a gateway to hell, and she approaches with the key. Where is the gate, brother? Under Chaldean. Surely there will be some resistance. None. The fools welcomed her in. It is up to us to stop her and imprison her in the Soul Stone. This is all that matters. And if Lilith has already passed through the gate? We follow her into hell. I will do everything in my power to get us there. The four of us alone? This is lunacy. Not lunacy, child. Duty. We will meet in Tarsarak to prepare. Pray we are not too late. <laughs> 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 the 
strange thing, knowing where you'll go when you die. One less damn mystery to worry about, at least. Did I make the right choice? I did what I had to. We needed answers and we got them. Lilith was poised to storm the very gates of hell. Astaroth and the deal, Rathra and the key, it had all been leading to this. But what we didn't know was that while we were lost in the swamp, Inarius and the cathedral were launching a campaign to strike at Lilith. Their battle would leave the world a wasteland. And whoever won would show no mercy to what was left. Our only hope was to reach Lilith before Inaris. But we couldn't have predicted what happened next. This is the story of Diablo 4, Act 6, Dance of the Makers. After Lorith questionably bargained away his head to the Tree of Whispers in exchange for Lilith's location in the desert city of Chaldeum, the group reportedly followed the tree's instructions and traveled west to the town of Tarsarak, where they met at the Parched Wanderer Inn, and we follow close behind. Teleporting to the previously sparsely populated town, we see not our companions, but the Knight's Penitent occupied the outpost. Your silence only damns you further. Puzzled, we inquire of the nearby Inquisitor. Who are you looking for? A cultist shelters here. One of those that set demons upon Chaldeum. The city lies in shambles after what the heretics have done! Realizing the war for sanctuary soul is underway, we see in the center of town a knight penitent commands. I want eyes on the road waste, sentries at the walls. The sinners will come running. Let none through! Glimpsing the nearby crucified cultists for all to see, we then ask, what's going on here? Nothing to do with you. Stay off the road west to Chaldeum. Approaching the bodies, we see a young man of Tarsarak, convicted by the knights and hung for all to see. To the east, we witness the knights purge in real time. Where are your demon-loving friends hiding? You'll burn! Lilith will lift up the worthy, and your ilk will burn! <laughs> Seems not all are innocent as the captured cultist laments when we ask. You worship Lilith? Why? Look at me. To Anarius, I am Gattatres. But Lilith promised strength, freedom. Who would you choose? Silence, scum! Attempting to locate our companions, we find inside the Parched Wanderer Inn, the youngest of the Order alone, and ask, Nairel, where are the others? Lorath and Donan have gone to Chaldeum. The knights march on the city. They felt it best to follow. But I wanted to wait for you. Can I ask you something? Something personal? You know you can. Do you ever feel like nothing you do matters? More than I'd like to admit. They call me hero. But underneath, I'm still the same person I always was. Powerful, sure. But flawed, too. I try. Yet my best isn't enough. Not for Yorin, nor your mother. Does it get any easier? It can. With a good ally. <sighs> Thank you for being honest. It helps knowing I'm not alone. We should go. I'll find the others in Chaldeum. You said the knights march on the city already? It was only a matter of time. After Prava combed the mines, Inarius likely pieced together that Lilith had found the Hell Key. You should hear the knights chant. They're as eager for Hell as she is. Is the Soulstone safe? Donan has it. But their plan still strikes me as... misguided. Mephisto is reforming as we speak. If we use the stone on Lilith, we've nothing to fight her father. There must be a better way. I don't want to think what happens if we fail. Are you ready for Chaldeum? 
As ready as I can be. But I'm afraid of what we'll find. The Cathedral's out for blood. They're not here to save anyone. It makes you wonder if there's some grain of truth to... Never mind. Truth to what? You can tell me. To what Lilith said. It's not about her. She's making things worse, too. It's just the idea that if the world doesn't change, we'll always be stuck between greater forces that don't care about us and... I don't know. I guess I'm just having doubts. Left between a rock and a hard place, we know a choice will soon face us. The evil of Lilith or Mephisto to be confined in a single soul stone, no less. Commandeering a knight's horse for safe passage, we exit the town and find the locals balking at a strung-up cultist. This one of them? The demon dealers from Galdirm. <laughs> Serves him right. Heading south, we're warned. Don't go! Uh, not that way. You don't look like the sort the knights would take pity on. Seems the knights are slaughtering anyone they deem a threat wholesale to boot. To the west, near Chaldeum's entrance, we locate a group of villagers executed, and one of the knights at least, unsure of their role in the genocide. I heard her praying, just like us. A hollow grab for redemption at the end of a blade. A sinner's prayer never reaches the light. To work, recruit. As we enter the city's gates, we see blood rain from the sky in comment. A rain of blood. Intriguing. Another piece of the prophecy? A nearby priest prays as he performs a field amputation on a knight. Father, guide my blade. Next to the camp, we stumble across the Herodric duo as Donan cautions. Slow down. You die now, you're stuck on the tree with Elias for eternity. Nobody wants that. I was fine on my own. We then query of Donan. What is this rain? The prophecy? Tears of blood rained on a desert jewel. So speaks the prophecy. We are witnessing cosmic history being made. Turning to Lorith, we wonder. Hmm, I wonder. Is Anarius here already? I don't know, but he should be here. It's his army on crusade. Next to the men, we see a dead demon brute bearing wounds from Lorith's polearm, putting us at ease at how formidable the Horodrum truly are, even in their advanced years and informed Donan. I'm ready. At last. The knights are sacking the place. Is Lilith here? Yes. Just as the tree said, the rain, the hellspawn, all spew from the hell gates underneath the city palace. She's opened the way. If she consumes her father's essence, sanctuary is lost. We can't let that happen. With the morbid thought of Lilith consuming her father's essence, we begin our search for the Daughter of Hatred, as Nairel remarks. These corpses, displayed so proudly, there's nothing of the light in this. The display is the point. They mean to make an example. With tensions high, we can see the logic in both parties' arguments. To the west of the palace, we come across some fallen knights and sense a familiar presence. Inarius. He's here, in the city. Damn it. He's still the best shot as an ally we have. It's in the residential district. We overhear an unholy sermon in response. This rain of blood. This sign we've waited for. As the Lord of Hatred said, our time is now. Fools! You've doomed us all! No. Only the undeserving. Damn you! Call the witch! As we put down the cultists and their poor sacrifices alike, we cannot help but be unnerved by the mention of Mephisto. You hear that? They mention the Lord of Hatred. Mephisto. What? That can't be. Elias owned this cult, and Lilith owned him. Hmm. 
With no time to mull over Mephisto's meddling, we silently cursed the Lord of Hatred, as we had always known he was playing multiple sides in his surreptitious war against Lilith, but cannot help but bemoan the fact of how far in his machinations we may have found ourselves. To the west, up some stairs, we then find a gate sealed, and are allowed in our tentative allies' quarters, as Anarius begins his stirring sermon of war to the knights. The time of prophecy has come, knights. Lilith flees to the gate to hell. I will slay her in that cesspit she calls home, and open the way to the heavens. All is as fate decreed. A spear of light, piercing hatred's heart. You die in battle today. Die heaven bound. Rally the troops at the palace. We march on hell. And after that, your plan? Ah, the Horadrim. Always chasing after the battles of your betters. But the angels don't need you. The stone, darling. We don't need the bloody angels either. fragment of what this once was, the world stone, debased in the hands of fools. Lilith dies by my blade. Prophecy has foretold it. With Anarius in possession of the Soul Stone, our sole weapon against Lilith, we turn to Lorith, imploring, what do we do now? Same as before. This changes nothing. <sighs> and then what? Lilith reforms? This plan is getting worse and worse all the time. How can you say this changes nothing? Our one potential ally just ran off with our one weapon. What's your plan now? To stop Lilith, and damn the cost. Inarius is mad with pride. We can't rely on him. Stone or no, there is someone who might stand a chance against Lilith. Me. You bested Astaroth and Andariel both. If we can find that stone, you might be our next best weapon. Searching for the gates to hell, we catch up with a small patrol of the Knight's Penitent led by Mother Prava. Hoping the Reverend Mother will see sense, we beseech her for aid. Donin, you've come back to us, and not alone. Blessed be the light. The Father will deliver us, together. He seized our soul stone. His is the will of the light. You still believe that? How can you doubt us? After everything we've done for you and Yorin. At least, he doesn't have to see you like this. <laughs> Stand down, brethren. <laughs> Sin reaps consequence. I have faith the Father acted righteously. We want to stop Lilith. Same as you. Unbelievable. Inarius awaits us at the mouth to hell. We then inform, we are allies. We seek the Hellgate too. Unnecessary. The Father will handle Lilith. But your army, your people, they need help. What? 
As do we. We'll move faster together. Loreth, the voice of reason. Rare pleasure. Very well. You may accompany us to the gate. Hark, knights! The day of prophecy is upon us! The Father will slay Lilith in hell and lift his faithful up to heaven! To the palace! Feel that? The ground shook. Keeping a tight formation with the knights, we inevitably fall into an ambush at the demon's hands. Ambush! From the rooftops! Go! We'll handle things here. Breaking off from the group, we contend with the demons above, led by the dangerous Uznu the Annihilator. Commander of the demons of Chaldeum, this behemoth wields a two-handed sword and spews deadly fire, scorching the rooftop of the city. Until the wretched creature is destroyed by our hand. Catching up with the group as they press forward, we find the foundation of the very city crumble neath our feet, and Lorith comments. Must be something on the ground. Reverend Mother, the gate is barred against us! Hold our position. Lorith. A word, please. We can't trust her. Yes, but they've an army. And we share a goal. For now. Above the gate, looks like a winch. I'll handle it. Whatever you did, it worked! Another quick. Run! The chain's gone slack. It must have snapped. I need to find another way to the palace. Opening the gate's drawbridge, our allies proceed. Now cut off from the group. Ahead, we locate corpses in a state of advanced decay, commenting. Fresh kills, but already maggoty. Something speeds the decay. As maggots burst forth from their pulsating cocoons, we wonder what is the source of this prolific brood's infestation? Descending the stairs to the foul cistern, we're swarmed by the bloated beasts, remarking. I don't like this. <clears throat> the air here is thick. Disoriented, we press forward in an attempt to locate another way into the Imperial Palace, only to feel another seismic shift beneath the earth questioning. What was that? What in the hells are you? The lesser evil, Juriel, the Lord of Pain, erupts from beneath the earth, slashing at us with its jagged scythe-like forearms. Overwhelmed, we try and outrun the demon and find his eggs lay encircling the room and blocking our escape. With no vantage point, we're forced to slog it out with a lesser evil, whose realm is physical torment. He then spews corrosive streams of acid-like poison and dives deep within the earth, bursting forth to commence his attack anew. Attempting to match the evil blow for blow, we experience a new measure of pain as the maw of its torso spews forth venom and it slams down its pincers, catching us on a third strike and dragging us into its belly to be chewed alive. Save for the spikes on our armor, 
causing the beast to spit us out as if it wants us to have time to be digested before continuing its sumptuous meal, realizing we have no way to keep up with this war of attrition. Knee deep in blood and sticky birthing fluid, we cast our mind back momentarily to our early days of necromancy, summoning a wall of bone that holds the confused Juriel in place and gives us time to fling shards of blood summoned from his spawning pit at the great beast. Thorath spoke of lesser evils beyond Andariel. Could that thing have been one? The Herodrum should be at the palace. If they made it. Scooping up the bounty bequeathed by the demon, we catch up to Nehrel, who leads us to the other Herodrum. Thank heavens you're here. I convinced them not to go without you. You should have kept your temper with Prava. I know. But you shouldn't have thrown away the stone, either. For going, burdening the others with our encounter, we simply declare, I'm ready. We have a heading. Mephisto shelters in the Cathedral of Hatred. Across the Sea of Fire, Astaroth's domain. I'd wager that's why Lilith freed him in Skosglan. That's where we'll find her. And what then? We don't have the stone. Enough, Donan! Then it's up to me to stop her, right? Without a soul stone and seemingly without a hope, the two men continue to bicker. You've been hounding me about this and that non-stop. Can you drop it for once? It's not about me hounding you, it's... Enough! You're both so smart usually. Usually? Not today. Yes, the stone is gone. Instead of arguing, let's do something about it. If Inarius has it, let's take it back. It is the only way to guarantee Lilith's defeat. No, not Lilith. You're all wrong about that. The stone should be saved for Mephisto, her maker. The prime evil. You know his powers of manipulation. His hatred has already poisoned us. Even Lilith fears him. Why don't you? Are you done? <sighs> I am now. Think on what I've said, all right? Descending the stairs of Chaldeum with renewed intent to reclaim the Soul Stone, knights or no, we find the halls seemingly empty and step over the remaining fresh kills to pause and marvel at the gruesome gate to hell, glaringly open to any who dare step inside at hell's entrance. Lilith's blood petals beneath our feet showcase her victorious return to hell. I can sense your fear, Father. did you see? Lilith. She hungers for her father's power, and will stop at nothing to get it. Whether we use you or the stone, we have to stop her. We follow her into hatred itself. It will sour our hearts even more, turn us against each other. Let's remember why we're here. Together. As our companions wade their way into the foreboding, blood orange mist ahead, we pause, seeing the door lined with the visage of angels and demons alike, entangled in their eternal conflict on opposing sides and wonder if they've been waiting for us this whole time.
Stepping inside the gates of hell, we're immediately hit with a wave of unbearable heat, intermingling with a soul-crushing malady that can only be described as hopelessness thanks to the overbearing sense of hate. Then see the inhabitants of the halls of hate, grafted to the very architecture, made to suffer. Somewhat tellingly, they hold mock pieces of soul stone making us question if Mephisto's own fears of being bound have been physically embodied in his prisoner's torment. Crossing the threshold, we find our allies nearby as Norel complains. Oh, everything feels wrong here. The air, the ground at my feet. Mortals were not meant to tread this realm. The sooner we can find Lilith and get out, the better. Heeding their words, we head down the abyssal descent, finding a night penitent's corpse skewered in the landscape. It's not long before the demons seek to quell our intrusion. Amidst, amidst the carnage, Donan discerns. Looks like the rear guard was ambushed. The others must have forged ahead. Good. Let the bastards clear a path for us. This is where the proper battle was fought. They didn't stand a chance. Fodder for a broken angel's ambitions. Keep moving. Stepping over the littered corpses of the knights and demonic hordes alike, we step past a great hulking demon and turn heel seeing the distinct glow of the soul stone as Nairel gasps. It's Prava. Even she didn't survive this. There's something underneath her. I know that glow. It's the soul stone. No, the battle is not over. Their father is hunting lilies. As she recovers, we barely contain ourselves demanding, Where is Anarius? In the spire. Across this infernal wasteland. Salvation is coming. Not for these knights you led to hell. Not for you either. Brother. You're just a tool of someone who doesn't give a damn about any of us. And a thief. You had the stone the whole time we were helping you in Chaldeum, didn't you? Inarius entrusted it to me and... Wait. Wait. You took it? Insolent heretic! Servants of darkness! You will all be damned! Leave her. She's poisoned with hatred. Is she the only one? Remember why we're here. What we're fighting against. <sighs> what do you propose? I have a tonic. A little something to numb the pain and get her moving. Drink up, Prava. If you're wise, you'll get back to Chaldeum while you still have a chance. As Prava limps away, we check on our allies, starting with Nairel asking, how are you holding up? I... I keep seeing myself standing over Lilith, stabbing her. I can't seem to push the thought away. The hatred here is trying to worm its way into my mind. And seeing Lorith visibly shaken with his encounter with Prava, we inquire. Are you okay? Are you in control of yourself now? Anger got the better of me there. My head's clear now, though. 
Is there any hope Narius can actually find Lilith? He was imprisoned here for millennia. He knows the terrain better than any of us. As Donan casts his eyes forward, we check. Everything okay? Shall we press on? Yes, but keep your guard up. The cathedral is in shambles. We're on our own now. Stick together and find that spire Priva spoke of. Heading north, we become heavily bombarded from above. We then find our allies ahead are taking refuge under a shield of warding, looking to defeat our ambushes. We climb the nearby bone-laden wall like a ladder, finding on top a myriad of demons led by a succubus, Ninsa, blight of hatred who promises. The balance of power in hell will be overturned. Attacking the demoness, she attempts to flee and threatens. This is not over yet! I will draw out your suffering! Meeting the Herodrum by another wall of flame, they bicker. I'm surprised you still remember the words to the Bulwark. I'm the one who taught you that spell. I'll clear the way. Tani sub thy However, we are soon interrupted. Heed my call, Karun. Strike down the enemies of Lilith. The succubus minion, Karun, the Hound of Hatred, is much like the Balrog demon who oversaw the sacking of Chaldeum and is thankfully no match for our combined might. The demon that destroyed the bridge. She's the one who's been hunting us. Lilith still has some allies in hell. Not for long. Let's find another route. Finding another path. We hop over certain death gingerly as we scale the twisted pathway. It's only to the west do we see a large outdoor searing expanse and sense a trap, as it is sprung by none other than Ninsa, blight of hatred who taunts. All hail Lilith, queen of hatred. Get inside the barrier. So blonde. Nisemon. However, Donan keeps us safe from the intermittent bombardment as Ninsa swoops into the battlefield as the demoness dies screaming. Lorith stops to compliment as we rest. You know, you're not half bad at taking charge, Don. I can see why you were that big man in Skosglan. Was that a compliment? Someone, write this down. Memorialize the moment. It's not like I haven't given you one before. There was... No, that other time. Oh, yes. I... Ah. Oh. Uh, the ground is shifting. Prepare yourselves. We then see the most colossal demon we have ever laid eyes on. Ashava the pestilent who bounds over us. Cursing that we need time to summon our powers, Ashava smashes the ground we stand on, sending us sprawling. I need time to do that. Donan then commands. Strike as one, now! And we comply, striking as one. As the battle wears on, the demon becomes more vicious with his attacks, spewing pestilent bile on the battlefield leaving us little room to stand and spinning around in rage and sweeping with its claws in a desperate need to end our minuscule existence. In which we attack its underbelly until it succumbs to its wounds, falling in a great heap. After the fight is over, to the east, we catch up with Lorath, who gasps. Bloody hell. Lorath, are you... 
I'm just catching my breath. I see the spire up ahead. Come on. Racing up the narrow path, the atmosphere emanates menace to outsiders. And we come to a great sealed gate as Donan conjures. Not far! Inside the spire, Donan questions. Any sign of Lilith? Or Inarius? Lilith was here. I see the blood petals. However, all we find from their battle is an echo left by the Daughter of Hatred. What 
are you truly after? My rightful place is in the heavens. Is that why you seek to destroy all that we created? Sanctuary is an abomination! And our son. I made it right. To satisfy the heavens. Tell me, did they rejoice? No. They do not want you. She tore off Inarius's wings. It was like she was toying with him. She wanted the angel to suffer before she ended him. Then the prophecy was wrong. A spear of light piercing hatred's heart. Maybe not. Lilith is wounded too. If she's hurt, it will be easier to trap her in the Soul Stone. We cannot stop. As we trudge after Lorith, we realize we are once again without a clear heading. And Nairel clearly feels the same. She's already gone. What's now? I have an idea. I will prepare the sightless eye. The eye? What do you mean? We must find Lilith. The only way to do that is to use the eye. Are you serious? I know what happened the last time the eye was used. I know it didn't end well. Do you have a better idea? Any of you? 
That's what I thought. down the malformed pillars and wretched, disfigured corpses that spew forth. Cut those damn things down. Our only thought is for Donan's safety. When the battle is done, we find him still sprawled out on the ground and looking worse for wear. Donan, you're bleeding. I'm... I'm fine. But, uh, Lorith is right. The eye is... The only advantage we have, the only way to find Lilith. There is no time to waste. With little recourse, we're forced to use the accursed eye once more. Knowing every second we peer in its abyss, Lilith may peer back at us. you made to me. Of course, daughter of hatred. With my gift, you will face your father. We all return home in the end. Where am I? A prisoner in your own mind. I could keep you here forever. But I will offer you a different fate. You could be Sanctuary's greatest protector. But only if you choose to. Inside, a nightmare escape. The disembodied voice of Lilith begins to allure. I will show you why the world has need of you. Probing for an exit, we soon realize she is having us revisit old memories and play her game for now. Ever since you drank my blood, I have been a part of you. I always will be. I carry your hopes and fears in my heart. I gifted humans with free will, but they are lost without a shepherd to guide them. They flock to these theatres disguised as temples. Where false saviors tell them fairy tales of good and evil. Shameful. Our Father has granted you a path to salvation. <laughs> and yet, you stray from it! At every opportunity. And people submit to the spectacle. Desperate to believe life can be so simple. The world through a child's eyes. But you know, it is all an illusion. The Horadrim know the truth. 
Yes. But they are only keepers of knowledge. They cannot do what you do. I am no one's savior. A true shepherd never thinks so. But look at your life. People see hope in you. Hatred, destruction, and terror are forever. We will always need to fight them. But we can turn the tide of the eternal conflict. In our favor. It starts here with Mephisto's destruction, and you will lead the battles to come. Simply take my hand. Fight the sanctuary. I will stay in the shadows. I will never take your hand. Then this is the future that awaits you. I will keep you shackled here. Forever. Breaking free of the shackles, we hear a familiar voice call out. Hello, friend. Need help? Take the gateway. 
This is your only escape. cave in the mountains. This is where Mephisto found me. Do not cower. I've come to free you from this trap. Why do you keep helping me? Look where we stand. I saved you in this dismal little cave. Because I sensed you could end Lilith. And that is all I want. I won't lie. There will come a time when we are enemies. But, like it or not, right now we need each other to defeat her. Look me in the eye. The path ahead is steep. My blessing will guide you. Without fear. Back in Lilith's hellscape, the Daughter of Hatred keenly senses Mephisto's meddling. I thought I sensed that old wolf skulking around. You would follow Mephisto, but not me. Are you that foolish? I don't serve either of you. What did my father offer you? Huh? I do all deny the mother's gift. We're then forced to face a rogues gallery of fallen enemies, including Genba, Bro. You are not as strong as I thought. Even her beloved Elias. The mother has already won. Your defiance is meaningless. Lilith's honeyed words, however, soon turn sour at our defiance. You've thrown your life away for nothing. Mephisto's fate is already sealed. Nothing is sealed yet. That's why you're still talking. You ungrateful world. I will bury you in this nightmare until you pick the death. As she summons a shade of Astaroth to taunt. Oh, you fall for be Yet shades are all they are. We have already defeated the real thing. The sightless eye is the source of this nightmare. Take it and set yourself free. Obediently, tearing the artifact from its resting place, we're ripped from the nightmare and back to Mephisto's hellscape. Outside the eye, we find Snarell sobbing. <laughs> <laughs> D 
Don't even think of burying me here, you bastard. <laughs> I'm too damn old to hold your body out of hell. So move your hand. Let me see. I haven't taken orders from you in years, Lorit. I see no reason to start now. You should have come to me instead of the cathedral. I would have shown up for you. Shared your burden. I know. And perhaps things would have gone differently with Scott's claim. And with your... Was it enough? Will he think it was enough? a great sea of fire. Beyond it lay her father's domain. We are too late. We can't give up now. We have the stone. What should we do? I, I, I don't know. I, I, I always thought if I didn't survive, You'd be the one to finish this. You've always had the steady hand, not me. Trust your gut. It's the reason we've made it this far. Leaving Lorath to tend to his old ally, we sullenly descend down the slope to the Sea of Flames. Looking out over the lake, Nairel rightfully despairs. He gave everything. His home. His son. What was it for? You've made it back. Good. What does he mean? This fiend helped me escape from Lilith. Wait, I've read of such a wolf. No, Mephisto. You trusted a prime evil? Trust had no part in it. Your friend saw reason instead, as should you. If Lilith takes my essence, Sanctuary is lost. What do you propose? No proposals. I offer only my aid. This leads to the Cathedral of Hatred. But you must hurry. Lilith is almost there. With little recourse, we use his fiery portal. Once again, putting our faith in Mephisto, only now understanding that every time we had done so in the past, he discards another layer of our resistance to his will. You've arrived before Lilith, but she is close. What now? We can set an ambush. I distract her, you trap her in the soul stone. Yes, a wise ploy. 
And you can leave the stone with me. I will ensure that Lilith never troubles your world again. You return home. I remain in hell. All as it should be. Approaching the gates of the Cathedral of Hate, Nairel questions. Something isn't right. Mephisto led you to this moment. We're in his realm. Should we really be doing what he wants? Between him and Lilith, he is the greater evil. You want to use the stone on him? Think carefully. That path would lead to failure for all of us. Knowing Lilith's tainted blood is killing us, we have a monumental decision to make as we draw nearer to Mephisto's throne. Finding the macabre scene of Mephisto's skull in a state of almost hibernation. No, gestation. And Nairel divines. He's afraid. It could work. We imprison Mephisto in the stone, and get back to Lorath. Then we seal the gates of hell behind us, and leave Lilith here. She'll catch you before you escape. And if I'm trapped in the stone when she does, she will take my power. Don't let your hate for me blind you to common sense. Narel. I can't trust my thoughts about Mephisto, but I trust yours. Do what you think is right. Your lives and those of all humanity depend on what you do next. Choose wisely. for you at the chapel. This better not be the last time I see you. Understand? Daughter of Hatred then opens her assault, scorching the very ground we step on, appearing out of thin air to deliver twin strikes with a razor sharp talons, and sending a barrage of spikes from the earth that pierce our armor, nearly downing us in one devastating blow. Realizing Lilith can sense our intent due to our blood connection as she presses her assault, we cast our mind back again to our days at the necropolis, remembering 
the dangerous art of crafting a blood golem. Usually using your enemy's vital fluids, we instead introspectively call upon Lilith's taint, casting it out and creating a hulking automaton born of its mother's depraved icor and free ourselves of this bond. Confused and disoriented at being unable to read us, Lilith contends with the abomination born of her blood, calling upon her own minions in retaliation. Dreadful champions of chaos swing two-handed maces in efforts to dispatch the golem in vain. However, this intrusion gives us enough time and unexpected ammunition as we send shrapnel of a fallen companion's bones and blood that pepper the wicked wench back into the abyss. As her physical matter retreats back into her father's plane, we breathe a sigh of relief. Only to... No. No. Lilith shows her true form as the daughter of hatred. Discarded are her airs and graces, and a final bloody battle begins as she summons bloody pustules and begins to spread a blight across the Triune Arena. Angered at our refusal to perish, the baleful broad breaks off chunks of the battlefield piece by piece, closing the gap between us. Worse yet, she destroys a chunk of the ground our golem stood on, leaving us once again alone to be the focus of her ire. Desperate, Lilla savagely whips her bony tail at us like a spear of hatred, and the arena begins to be bombarded with blood spewing from the pustules that surround us. We're only saved from certain death by a protective bubble afforded to us thanks to Vigo's necklace, his noble sacrifice, again saving our life. And as Lilith swoops down across the arena, sucking us into a vortex, we scream, releasing a final torrent of blood that rends her remaining flesh into blood petals of her broken bones.
with Lilith dead. We remember Narelle, Lorith, and, of course, the remains of Donan crossing through the fiery portal and returning to the infernal sea of flames for a final time. Upon the spire of torment, we find the Elder Herodrum kneeling over Donan and report. It is done. Lilith is no more. Is she trapped in the stone? No. Mephisto is. He helped us reach the Cathedral of Hatred before <sighs> Lilith Of course. Did. He had a hand in all of this from the beginning, didn't he? We had to take the risk. No. I understand. Where is the stone? Nerel. She didn't come back no. to you. She must have already gone ahead to the desert chapel. We'll go after her. Quickly. I... I need to bring Donan and seal the gates of hell behind us. I will... will only slow you down. You can't do this on your own, my friend. We came together. We leave together, too. Now... we are truly alone. The creators of Sanctuary, Angel and Demon, Father and Mother, are dead. They made us in their image. Their conflict is a part of us. It always will be. But is there any truth to Lilith's vision? This mad idea that we can escape the eternal conflict? Or will we walk the same path of all children who rebel against their parents? So often we simply become them. These are not questions befitting an old man. I don't have much time left. This struggle is not mine anymore. All I can do is help the Wanderer and Nerel avoid the fate of Rathma. And everyone else who tried and failed to overcome our flawed nature. Once we are back with Nerel, we will find a way. We have to. Back at the Desert Chapel, Lorith comforts his nerve-addled horse. Rest, girl, while you can. We'll be on the move again soon. And expecting to see Nairel, we find the chapel instead. Empty. With the dead deer's remains nearby. She's gone. Why didn't you wait for us? Our mind jumps to Mephisto's pernicious effects on us and question, is Mephisto already influencing her? No. It will take time for the corruption to spread from the stone. She must have left for a reason. Maybe... maybe she's gone to the vault for answers. Yes. Yes, that must be right. Yorin. Donan. We've lost so many to hatred. We can't lose Nerel too. Come on. As we exit the chapel, heading to the cart holding Donan's wrapped remains, we're intercepted by Yosef and Knight's Penitent. Lorath Nar! Will this never end? With an query of our one time savior. Yosef, what do you want? <sighs> Step aside. I'm here for the Haradrim. Can it wait? I'm off to bury a friend. We'll dig his grave for you. Well, that's kind. But who will dig yours? <gasps> the irony isn't lost on us that Vigo's bubble of protection shields us from his former brethren's assault, nor the fact they bought another lackey to be stuffed inside that god-awful armor they stuck him in. Not that it saved them. On their remains is a parchment, holding Prava's decree. The Haradrim have used their dark magics to bear a great evil into our world. Commit their wicked souls to the Father, and retrieve the Soul Stone. Yosef. He saved my life in Nevesk. They were not our enemies. Oh, they were fools. I don't have the time for it. I am 
going to Scott's clan. Donan deserves to be buried with his son. I thought the dead deserve nothing, while the living are in danger. <laughs> Wise words. But I... I have a promise to keep. That's why you must ride north, ahead of me. If the cathedral doesn't have her yet, Nayrell might head for the vault. <clears throat> Find her. Once you're together, meet me at Dolan's estate. Turning to Yelesna, near where our journey began, we dress incognito in hopes of not drawing attention, and as we ride towards the vault, we reflect on our meeting with the plucky young Horodrum to be. I know what I saw. She had horns like a beast, strode right past where you stand. A path of scales. This is what I saw in the reflections. We're close. I can save you from this, Mother. I promise. I can learn how to... You're going to leave me, aren't you? You'll find a place where I can be taken care of. Not what I expected, but let's not give up hope. I thought you'd know me better by now. I am my mother's daughter. Where there's a lead, there's a way. And I'll follow it to the end. No sign of her. But that letter wasn't here before. She must have left it. Collecting the ruined letter, we teleport to Firebreak Manor to meet Lorith. We find the older Herodrum kneeling over three graves, commenting. Why do I only hear one set of footsteps? From right to left, the gravestones read, Here lies Yorin, son of Braga and Donan, protector of Sko's clan. He was the true light. And here lies Braga, brilliant scholar, loving mother and wife. I am with you as always, in every sp in every branch and stone. Born from this land I was, and so to it I return. And finally, here lies Donan, friend, father, husband and Herodrum of the First Circle, who walked into hell for all of us. It was more than enough, brother. Kind words, written by Lorath, who we melancholically hand the letter to. Before the final cinematic, I want to say thank you so much for watching this very, very long video. And a massive thank you in particular to the patrons of the channel that make these months long videos possible. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, Wanderer. I spent a lot of time learning this code, so I hope you remember how to read it, Lorath. Because you are the last Horatrim now. My mother would have wanted me to stay with you. She believed the Horatrim had all the answers. I don't know if she'd recognize this person I'm becoming.
that's what I hold on to. Because there is so much further to go. Your imperfection gave me hope. And we will need it to face what comes next. To face him and his brothers. I don't know how much time I have, but there has to be a better answer. And I have to find it. Alone. I know he'll want to go with me. But people have already died because I was not careful enough. I can't risk you too. If I've misjudged, the world is going to need you to survive and clean up the mistakes I leave behind. I know you don't want to hear this, but you don't get to quit. Not again. As if everything works out as I am hoping, we will never see each other again.